who's ready for a little bit of Italian? Oh, we're gonna make a pizza and we're gonna make a ca cannoli. Oh, yeah, mamma mia. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Good morning, you clowns. How's, is, is everyone being good today? Is everyone being responsible? <laughs> What's up, Ron Ronkers, Ronkers Donk? Ronkers to Donk? Nutcracker IRL, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. How's, how are you enjoying your nutcracking job? What what goes into what goes into full time nut cracking? <clears throat> I'm still working on my text editor, so not even slightly responsible. <sighs> Above Siegel, you can't you can't just rewrite things that you don't like. Sometimes you gotta use existing libraries and tools. That's what I do. I'm Cabbage, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime as well. <laughs> you can't stop me. Nah, a buff seagull's definitely not writing it in Rust. A buff seagull's favorite language is, is Java. He's writing his editor in Java, and he's using Swing to make the GUI. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a Swing based uh GUI text editor, um, and it's gonna be the default Swing UI. <laughs> Here's my battle station. Risky click of the day. Ooh. Ooh, is that some RuneScape, brother man? Brother man, it's time. It's time. It's time to dust off that 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 that. Honestly, the everything. <laughs> it's time to break out that duster. Um, I actually recently, I used like a carpet thing on my mouse pad. Um. I used like a carpet cleaner and then an extractor from my mouse pad, and it actually made it look fucking new. Like, my mouse pad was disgusting, and now this is, this is a, this is like a 10 year old mouse pad now. It actually cleaned up so well. <laughs> yeah. I, I cleaned all my mouse pads, actually. Um. <laughs> Typing Kate, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime as well. Damn, we got a hype train going. A hypu train. I have the same mine as nine years old. Oh my god. Uh, are you doing uh hardcore on season of mastery? Not until I see how hardcore works. Un unfortunately, I think hardcore plays really well solo. I think hardcore is the sort of thing that's like a little bit more fun when you can play solo and you can change your own pacing and you can go slower or faster depending on how you feel. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I've got plans to like really. I I want to be number one world in uh, in healing for uh, for <laughs> for a uh, SOM season of mastery. So due to that, probably. Probably not going to be playing hardcore. Maybe I will on an alt. I would definitely play hardcore if I make like an RP character. Um, but we'll see. I have to start writing a paper for a class that's due tomorrow. Help me? What? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for the 13 months. And second of all, chat, when are papers supposed to be written? Because... I feel like smooth hackers just describing papers. Like I, I don't, I don't see how that's a predicament. Yeah, twelve hours before it's due. Yeah, the day they're due or just before the day of. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I smooth hacker. I just don't think that's a problem. Uh, Lumi, thank you so much for the three months <laughs> just in time paper writing. We had the whole semester to write it. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a whole semester to not write it too. Wait, are you saying a semester is done already? Oh my god, is it the time of the I I I thought kids just barely went back to school. <laughs> Jit paper, that's great. <laughs> a little bit of stress is okay. You'll produce some great shit. Yeah. 
Any update on the Freedom Phone? Well, it hasn't been delivered yet, and their shipping updates are really spotty, but theoretically, theoretically, it's supposed to come this month. X. Largely, my school is out December 8th. How long is your winter break? That sounds fantastic. I think in the U.S. it's most common that people's winter breaks start like a week before uh, a week before Christmas. Usually run until like mid mid January. That's what I at least remember from like my brother and stuff. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. The Guar, thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. How was your day going? Uh, my college had a very short fall semester. Finals were usually early December. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Get out on the 16th. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, uh, whoa. Wait, six, 16th of November? Question mark? Or 16th of December? Have to go back January 5th. Damn. Uh, everything gets delayed due to semiconductor shortage. Exactly. Have you tried using that excuse for your paper? Sorry, my paper isn't ready yet. The, the semiconductor so shortage is really a, a, a problem there. Are the educational VODs on YouTube? I think the VODs from last week are all up. Yes. The VODs from last week are up. The VODs from this week will be up when I have time to upload them, which is probably tonight. Um, now, once I get my 2 gig full duplex, then uploading things won't feel so bad because it won't take an hour and a half to upload every video because it's, it's going to take me like five or six hours of uploading, which then means I won't be able to get Axe out, which means my internet is basically unusable for like... <laughs> For a, for a solid, like, five or six hours. So I try and do it overnight. Um, let's see. Uwu, how are you doing? Uwu, construct. The paper isn't for a technical class. It's for my foreign policy class. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have to print it and stuff, and printing requires silicon. Um, two gigabit full duplex. Yeah, I'm so excited. And it's true full duplex. It's true full duplex. It is, it, it is, I will be able to download two gigs a second while uploading two gigs a second. It's not the, it's not the, I can do one or the other. I can, I can do both. I mean, that's what full duplex means, but people definitely don't use full duplex in that, in that way in, in this day and age. Um, I'm really curious if I'll get faster than two gigabit. Okay, so chat, do you want do you want a little insight into my brain, my brain waves? Here's what I was thinking. I was thinking I would get one gigabit because one gigabit is just the standard. And then I decided that one gigabit is dangerous because if I do one gigabit, if I do one gigabit, that means that the entire stack is one gigabit. I'll have a one gigabit NIC, I'll have a one gigabit transceiver, and then on the other side, it will be a one, like my ISP will have a one gigabit transceiver that's going to me. And that means there is zero potential for getting more than what you asked for, right? That's just kind of an ultimate problem with gigabit, is if you, if, if everything's gigabit in the stack, then you're not going to possibly get 1.2 gigabit on a good day, right? So, with 2 gigabit, the entire stack is actually 10 gigabit. It's a 10 gigabit transceiver, 10 gigabit on the, on the ISP side. So, here's to hoping, here's to hoping that maybe we get a little bit more than 2 gigabit. Now... At the end of the day, I would rather have 2 gigabit on a 10 gigabit than 1 gigabit on a 1 gigabit cuz 1 gigabit on a 1 gigabit you're you're literally you are you have razor thin margins. You have no buffer room for like anything extra than nicks in that path. When you're when you're talking 1 gigabit, they're going to have smaller queues, which means you have a higher risk of dropping packets if there's a little bit of a little bit of congestion, those sorts of things. Like the ultimately the 
the 10 gigabit NICs are just going to be better. They're, they might be RDMA, so your latency might be better. They're probably going to have better latency in general. They're probably a little bit newer NICs. They probably have bigger buffers. They probably have more features supported, like more offloading stuff, so stuff gets handled in the NIC better. All those sorts of things. I still don't get why paying two, uh, 2K a month for it. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it's worth it. We'll see if it's worth. I, I think it's going to be worth, but maybe maybe it won't be. Maybe we'll suck. Um, but it should be it should be significantly better than um it sh should theoretically be significantly better than um normal 2 gigabit service cuz it's going to be dedicated. I won't have a router. I will have a switch. Um <laughs> One, two, three, four, twenty. Well, oh, I forgot. I okay. I forgot I had that. Um. Yeah. Let's edit that command. Uh. Edit command. Uh. Project. Uh. Today we're fuzzing Windows NT 4.0 on MIPS. Uh. Bang NT MIPS. I think. Uh, NT MIPS. It's MIPS NT. Son of a bitch. Mips NT. Hey! Woo! Okay. I'm paying 30 USD for one gigabit. Yeah, that, that sounds about reasonable. This is this is slightly different because this is dedicated. Uh this internet will survive when I get power outages, and I get power outages pretty much for eight to sixteen hours a week in the winter. So it would be really nice to have internet during those times. Um and then also, uh, 2 gigabit full duplex doesn't mean up to 2 gigabit full duplex. It means always 2 gigabit full duplex. So if I'm not getting 2 gigabit full duplex, it is technically an outage, and I start immediately getting refunded for, for uh, the money. I'm definitely okay with my shitty consumer. Uh, 440 doxes. Mmm. Mmm, doxes. Uh, how come power outages in this day and age? Cause I, cause I live in the, I live in the middle of the mountains. So, living in the mountains, it gets very windy here. Basically, if it's like, if there's like forty mile an hour winds in Seattle, we're probably getting like seventy and eighty here. Uh, due to the mountains and the terrain and the, uh, the basically the thinness of the soil, like the the depth of the rock. Uh, most of the cabling here is is not buried like it's buried in my neighborhood but to the roads and stuff it's not buried and there's trees everywhere because we're in the mountains so think about it you've got you've got like a valley you've got a road going through that valley and you got a power line along that road but on both sides are steep mountains with trees everywhere <laughs> trees literally just on top of the power lines um it's Literally, if, if wind is strong enough that it knocks over one tree out of the, like, 10,000 trees that are right next to the power line, power's out. <laughs> um, got the generator fixed? No, I'm, I'm going to order a generator, but I haven't decided, uh, well, I haven't gotten a quote for it yet. I'm kind of waiting for that because it's going to be, it's going to be a bit spendy. Two strands of fiber in the ground are pretty windproof. Yeah. Tesla Powerwall, that would not last nearly as long here. Powerwalls are great if you're if you're looking at like four to eight hour outages, maybe even like two to four, depending on your power usage. But uh, that's not going to fly here because we're running probably like 10 kilowatts of, of hardware. Um, and I think that would exhaust a power wall in like an hour or two. And our power outages here normally last for 20 to 25 hours. <laughs> um have you measured your supermicro server's noise level nah i don't really care i mean i get i get two use and four use i don't really get one use i have a couple one use for uh like fanless routers and stuff um but yeah i don't it, it's really not a huge a huge issue just get a full-size wind turbine i if I ever get a lot more land, like if I ever have like a hundred acres, I want it to be self-sustaining with with like both wind and solar. I think that would be really fun. 
<laughs> Need a small nuclear reactor? Yeah, I could I could be like the uh what was it? The smoke detector kid. <laughs> What's your opinion on everyone creating their own C2? Uh I'm guessing you're talking about um uh like like C2 for for exploits. Um I think everyone's C2 sucks. I was talking about this the other day with a friend, and I was basically saying it's kind of ridiculous that people are getting their C2 servers popped. Like, how the fuck are you doing that? How how are your CT C, how are your C2 servers so fucking loose that they're getting popped? Like, why why don't you have those a little bit more restricted? Um, I don't know. I I think I mean you can't really use someone else's C2. You kind of have to write your own because you probably wrote the wrote the exploit. See the six screens behind him? Think about all the hardware he has under his desk alone. But the back door in the back door is hell, yeah. Oh, there's Polar. Streamlabs bot was slow. C2 is command and control. Um, C2 typically refers to, like, the way, like, let's say you use an exploit and you get control of someone's machine. C2 is typically how you would describe the, the, the system of communications and usually the, like, server-side component that allows you to communicate with them, maybe get a shell into them, rip files off of them, those sorts of things. Um, when we stop calling it CNC, command and control, um, I've pretty much always heard C2. I've pretty much always heard C2 in the context of exploitation. And that goes back to like early 2010s. All right. Uh, is everyone behaving today? Is everyone ready for content? Or are people not going to behave? Because if people aren't going to behave, then you have to get disciplined. And we're going to, we'll send you to the, the discipline chat. Oh, the fuzzing master, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, I think. Discipline me daddy. <laughs> <sighs> the internet. The 2020s. The the year of the daddy. No behavior as content. Let's switch on the five head and get cracking. Uh what do you mean cracking? Are we gonna are we gonna have to crack the MIPS copy of that 3D renderer so we can get more bananas? Why are people not writing peer-to-peer -peer CNC more? Um not that hard. Okay, uh Desu, here's here's why it's really hard. So here's what you here's what here's what you got. You got you got people at private companies making three hundred thousand dollars a year. You have people at government contractors making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and then you have people writing the C twos for the government who are working on the GS soldier pay scale, and they're making like fifty k a year. Um, yeah, it turns out you don't get the best C developers for fifty k. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of get what you get. Um, <laughs> tried catching up on the last stream, but got distracted by this one. What did I miss in a nutshell? How's Felf doing? Well, Felf's doing fantastic. She's, she's being quite cute. Uh, but, uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll get you caught up, um, when, when we start the stream. When, when people s stop getting me to rant. Uh, agreed, mostly talking about everyone creating their own C2 since Meterpreter just never gets caught by AV and EDR. Or just gets caught by, yeah. So, um, you do pretty much have to always write your own C2 so you don't get caught. But second of all, you don't want your C2 to be something that is open source or publicly known, uh, because that makes it much easier to fingerprint, even if it's not getting caught by AVs, um, for like, um, you know, theoretically, if there were governments who had access to basically all of the ISP's data moving inside and outside of countries, uh, you know, like, if if there are potentially multiple countries that are doing that, um, you probably don't want your C2 to match any existing signature. Because even if your threat model is, is like, even if you're worried about, well, I guess, you're probably not worried about AVs, right? At the end of the a day, AVs are kind of a joke. But um, people are looking for this traffic, right? People are looking pretty hard for, for this traffic to see what's going on and Who's popping who? And there's intelligence and intelligence. And it, yeah, it's pretty crazy. 
Last time I saw you offline, you quit your Microsoft job. How's the situation? Uh, working on all the projects you envisioned? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been doing some contracting, working on projects, doing these streams. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a much healthier lifestyle to just like focus on these things now. Now you know if if people used if people used enough of their Twitch Prime sub, uh, subs uh, uh, that are free when you have an Amazon account, uh, maybe we could just do uh, Twitch full time. Um, no. <laughs> First time here, just read the stream description. You're pretty much what I want to be when I grow up. Uh, looking forward to learn a bit today. Hell yeah. Oreo Bite, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Smooth Hacker wants a plushie. Ooh. Smooth Hacker, you're going to get a plushie that nobody else has gotten recently. Oh. What a chonker. Cute. You shameless sub be your shameless sub begging work. Yes, I can now pay my rent. I saw that one on stream and bought it. The the cinnamon one. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. Kawaii! How, how are you doing, Nikaretnikov? Uh all right. All right, who's ready to do some uh, code cleanup and then fuzzing? <laughs> Woo, I was going to do the code cleanup last night, and then I guess I actually went out to dinner last night. No cowboy hat today. Not today, because it's, it's over there, and I don't... Oh, we got another plushie. Jalapeno Master. Jalapeno Master is getting the classic, the classic cheeseburger. There we go. That's a that's a jalapeno if I've ever seen one. <laughs> uh we got another we got another uh plushy claim. All right. Can we fuzz Twitch chat? Mm, I don't know. I don't think Twitch chat has any bugs. All right, we got a plushie coming out here for Grimanja. Grimanja, you're going to be a sushi roll. Look at that. Look at that. You even got a little shrimp tail. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's probably going to fall off. <laughs> All right. Uh, sounds great. Uh, now's as good as time as any, uh, you're all around awesome, love your work, and you're sharing it with us. Hell yeah. Oh, we got some uh, requests for some broken Spanish. Okay. Uh, 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 oi, uh, 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 yo escribo un poco de rust y, y, uh, I fuzar, uh, yo, yo fuzo, y cuando fuzo, uh, necesito, uh, buscar para los, los bugs, buggos, fuzar. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right. All right. Broken Spanish sounds a lot like Portuguese. Uh, BR question mark. Um, so you're 27 years old, but messing around in C for 15 years. That means you got started at 12. Can you talk a little bit about how you got interested and how you learned about C and software engineering at such a young age? So I learned, uh, I learned, um, Visual Basic in Excel when I was like eight or nine or something. My brother like showed me some some like form program that I think they wrote in school, 
And then I got into 3D modeling, so I did 3D modeling for like a couple of years. 3DS Max, that was like 3DS Max 6 or 7, I can't remember. Um, and then when I was like 11 or 12, I joined a forum and I was like, yo, um, how do I VB? I'm trying to VB, uh, I, I, blah, 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 VB. And then everyone made fun of me and called me dumb and an idiot uh, and told me to learn a real language like C++. Uh, so I did, and then I found out C++ sucks ass when I was 12, because I, because I had a brain large enough to realize that C++ is garbage when I was 12, um, and then I switched to C, and then I wrote, I, I wrote C, uh, for, uh, basically until, like, five or six years ago is when I switched over to Rust. C is greater than C++. Visual, visual basic greater than C++ confirmed. Ha. Ah, emotional trauma at a young age. Ah, bullied into knowledge. Yeah, exactly. All you need to do is you just need to have a bully. If you have a bully, that's how you'll learn how to, how to code. All right. Uh, chat, what are we going to listen to today? Um. Uh... Honestly, I could do some Nightwish. Lana Del Rey? Lana Del Rey's pretty good. Wait. Helba, did you actually say that before I said it? Cause that's that's what I just that's what I just picked. I just picked Nightwish. <laughs> I'm already twelve seconds into it. Uh what did you think worked best for your learning? Uh being uh Maybe a little obsessive <laughs> in some way. Um, <laughs> maybe uh, maybe a lack of self control. Uh, and then being very lucky that my lack of self control happens to focus towards a skill that happens to be very valuable. If you dig uh, park punk and hardcore, I've been listening to the Sao Paulo band. Uh, called Sura uh, a lot lately. Oh, interesting. Century Child, great song. This is the album. It's not the song. We're going through the we're going through the whole album. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now that's the Phantom of the Opera rendition by Nightwish. Mm. Mwah. Mwah. Fantastic. All right. So. Hello everyone, welcome to stream. Today we're going to be doing some coding. Um, and the coding that we're gonna be doing, what music player, this is NC Spot. Um, all right, so. Yesterday, uh, we did some large improvements to our shell code. Uh, wow. Wow, this is nice. We did a good job yesterday. Um, we changed our, um, we changed our syscalls to naked functions, which is just more correct because now they have defined behavior instead of undefined behavior in the shapes. Then, uh, we started writing some syscalls for mmap and munmap, and once we added mmap and munmap, then we were able to make a memory manager. So now we're able to allocate things in Rust. So we can make vectors, we can make strings, we can make B-tree maps and B-tree sets and all those sorts of things. And then some fucking clown in chat, I don't know who it was, was like, are you, are you gonna get are you gonna get threads to work? Are you gonna have threading in there? And I was like, no, I guess. So then we added threading support. Um so now that we have threading support. And we actually have Rust style threading support where we can create we can create things with closures. We can pass in variables because it's a closure, right? You, you can capture variables in the closure. And then further, we can join on the threads, wait until they complete, and then get the return value. So here's our example right now. Um let's see. Uh did I delete a semi here? Okay, so there you go. You can see that we're able to run a thread, pass in a local variable by move, 
create a ref cell, and then return that ref cell from the syscall, and we get that uh, value once the thread has completely exited. So we have the ref cell one, two, three, four. And that, that is pretty damn fancy for an architecture or for an OS that is 20 years older than Rust is. <laughs> Got you playing on my 2K 49 inch ultra wide. Oh, hell yeah. Benanki, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Yeah, don't, for don't forget you have your Twitch Primes. Don't forget Twitch Twitch Prime check in chat. Twitch, Twitch Prime check. Uh, <laughs> bullied into adding threading support. Yeah, I've already used my damn it. For a FF14 streamer, fine. Next stream's gonna be a Final Fantasy stream then. It'd be fun to add Windows MIP support to standard. Yeah, I don't know how hard it is to add standard support for something. I don't know like what you actually have to do for that. Um. <laughs> Oh my god, help of the AI given given 10 gifted subarenos. Holy shit. Def Holy shit. Thank you so much, Elva. Oh my god. We got a we got a pog in chat. Oh man. We got a derp da der derp da der coming in with a tier one for three months in advance. Thank you so much for that. Oh wait a minute. Helpa, you gifted a sub to someone called I Need Java. <laughs> Dan, I need Java. <laughs> oh, that's disturbing. Is that hairy I'm seeing on the head? Yeah, I haven't shaved my head in a while. I've been lazy. I haven't I haven't done anything in like a, a long time. I'm just oh, I'm just I'm just so busy streaming full time three days a week. Oh, oh, what will I do? Oh, it's so much work. I prefer cold fusion. Ugh. All right. So we have a uh, we have a leak. Uh, we've got a leak of a handle. If we drop this, uh, if we do not join this, so if we drop this, um. If we drop this thread, we'll leak a handle. And I'll demonstrate this by going four, zero, and I don't know, one, one, 100. We'll do a, a, we'll drop thing. Or actually, we don't even have to do that. We're just not going to join on that. Check this out. Uh, oh, and then we'll loop at the end here. Okay, what's going on there? There we go. So we get some ass diffs. Um, oh, oh, oh boy. Uh, okay. So you can see that we have, uh, 122 handles. This client's old. Um, okay. There's a client running somehow that I don't know how it's running. Uh, but you can see the, the client that's ticking up in time. That is 122 handles. Um, and that's a problem. Uh, the reason that has 122 handles is because we don't close the handle that we get from when we create a thread. So we gotta, we gotta go fix that. Ah, fuck. Uh. Um, beep. Beep. Fuzz Dr. Watson. Okay. So now what we're gonna go do, we have to fix this, this leak of the handle. And the way that we're gonna fix this handle leak is we are going to have our handle, um, we're gonna have our handle actually do the dropping itself. So we're gonna impl drop for handle. And since we're implementing drop for handle, uh, we're gonna want to make this no longer public to, to get that field. So this is gonna be a, a drop handler, mute self. And then we'll do a uh, close. Yeah, close the handle. Okay, sick. Um, okay, we'll do close. 
self dot zero or self close self all right so that's going to cause that handle to get dropped now uh cargo watch um okay so then we can't do a copy with things with destructors okay that's fair um and then expected uh 35 yep we're gonna have to deref that unfortunately and i don't think that's gonna make a copy um okay so a source print dot rs uh this is going to take a hmm how do we want to do this i think we don't want to create a handle then Is close this is call? No, I, I just named the function that. Um, export, export the slides as a PDF in case PowerPoint or whatever doesn't like your format. Yeah, that's pretty fair. How does drop work with derived copy? It doesn't. <laughs> um, okay, so that's going to close a handle. Uh, we definitely don't want default either. That would be bad. Uh, that would be very naughty. Um, okay, so we have clone and debug. Debug's fine. Even clone, we're not gonna have. We're gonna get rid of clone as well. So, no clone, only debug. Um, and then close. Do we want close to be unsafe? No, that should be fine. Uh, close is going to also return, a uh, result. And this result is going to be this. Okay, convert error to rust error. Uh. Hmm. <sighs> Okay, and then we'll do let status is equal to uh, nt status, this, as u32. And then there you go. So now we have a status. So this is uh, close the handle, convert the error to a Rust error. So there we go. So we have a way of getting the error from that. Um, and then expect filled to close handle. Okay, so now we're actually going to check that that succeeds. Um, and then we have a private field on that. Okay. Uh, so we have to go into source entry. I hate dealing with JSON. Yeah, JSON's no fun. Uh, socket, that's going to be a raw, um, a raw handle. And let's see. Tuple structs. Yep, that's a register socket. So we got to go to register socket. This is going to take a U size instead of a handle. And then that's going to store that in the socket. Okay. And then all we need to do, I think the only place where we actually construct this handle is, uh, is up in here. So what we're going to do is, uh, writer. Hmm. Um, load this. Okay, so we're going to directly load that. Make a writer. Um. So this is the writer. And then this is the arguments we're writing, the core format args. Um, okay, so now we need to go to writer, and writer takes a handle. This is just going to take a u size then. Um, and let's see if we have any references to handle. We shouldn't. Okay, then that's going to call write, um, and that's going to be a handle. So I think what we're going to do is, um, I don't, you know what? Hmm. I might do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, chat. Um, Use handle. Uh, use syscall. Create syscall handle. So we actually are going to create a handle. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to take in a handle here. Which is actually fair, because we want to drop this handle if this goes out of scope. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep this in scope. So this is actually going to be correct now. Now, what we're going to do is instead of uh, atomic U size, 
What we're gonna do is we're gonna just do handle in a in a global. Okay. Um so we're gonna do a static mute uh socket handle is equal to a, uh how does this work? Can we do this? Is this fine? I think so. Um, the uh, socket handle. And then we'll do socket is equal to socket. Right. Um, and do I want to write to that? Do I want to write to that? Do I want to do mute socket? Because this will make sure that I don't drop the old one. Right? I don't think writes will allow the old one to drop. Does anyone know? Does anyone know how Rust works? Um, overwrites without reading or dropping the old value. Okay, so this is going to overwrite. Uh, it's going to overwrite the value at socket uh, without dropping it or reading it. So basically, that old handle is going to get discarded, uh, and then we'll write over with this socket, and then that socket will never get dropped. Okay. Dots. So then this will call syscall write with socket, and that's going to be unsafe just because of the, the global usage. Um, and that's going to be, I guess, a ref socket. Um, then writer. This is just going to write to... Uh, Yeah, just a mute writer. So we create a new writer, we give it the format args, and there we go, we have print. Then handle, we can't create that yet. So what I'm gonna do is impl, uh, impl handle uh, creates a handle uh, out of thin air, uh, fn from raw, u size, and then this is unsafe fn um, raw, this, this yields a self, which is a handle, and then we'll just do self raw. Okay, so now we have an unsafe way of creating a handle, which is good. Then we have this. That takes in a handle. That then moves that into register socket. Register socket then moves that into, um, into the global. Um, and then this, uh, we'll also make this const. Uh, const fn. Is it const unsafe? Nope, apparently not. Okay, get rid of this. Um, and then we can go and... Um, this will be handle from raw zero. MIPS has atomics in the ISA? Yeah, it's LLSC. Um, oh, it is unsafe const, isn't it? Um, okay, from raw, and then this is, uh, pub const. Okay, and then, socket. Consider removing the borrow. Yep, we just need to go to, right. Oh, um, yeah, I know, I know you can't really see this stuff. That's okay, because we're, we're going to finish this up, and then it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, that will take a ref handle. That has to now be an unsafe function, which is good. Can we do an unsafe here? I think so. Uh, then close self uh, 42. Okay, so close. Close is going to take a ref handle. And then what we'll do is we'll pass in close. There we go. And now, uh, 192, this will no longer do close. And I think we just did it. Because this, uh, this will get dropped. This handle will get dropped with this join handle. This arc will get dropped. Um, well, this will actually kill the arc right here. Um, we move this into here. This will take this out. I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, okay. Uh, join is never used. 
Um, wow. Okay, did we do it? So this should no longer leak. So if we close this client, okay, uh, we should be able to run this now. Yep, that's a new one. We have a new client here, and that client has 22 handles. Yep, right? If this client had more than 22 handles, we would know that it is leaking, uh, but it has 22 handles, so we know for a fact that that did not leak anything. And then we should also be able to do dot join where we actually wait for it. And this should also not leak. And that's true. That had 22 and then it exited. Uh, so we'll loop just to, just to make sure. And there we go. That ran. We have 22 handles and no leaks. And then further, what we should be able to do is just loop this a shit ton more. Let's do 100,000. So now it's just creating a shit ton of threads. You can see that sometimes there's 23 handles. Um, sometimes there's two threads, sometimes there's one thread. Uh, memory usage is going up. Hmm. Maybe nothing's been... Okay, we might have a memory leak. Are you freeing the thread stack? I don't think I am. I don't think I am. That might be it. Wait. Am I? Uh, stack. Here, yeah, I am definitely leaking that. Okay, so basically, vec, anywhere that I do a vec or a box, so this box, um, I create a box into raw, but then I move that box into the thread. Um, I leak that if the thread fails to spawn. Um, and then arc as well. This arc, I into raw this, and I from raw that. So we'll drop the arc here. We'll also drop an arc when this goes out of scope. Um, so I guess, what do I want to do? How do I, how do I want to free the stack? Thoughts? I have to free it outside. Hmm. Um, have stack and join handle. That's tough because join handle can drop while the thread is running. I can't drop it until I've waited for it to exit. Um, have thread free its own stack? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if I can do that, right? Um, um, how can I do that? <laughs> um... Can you enforce that the join handle outlives the thread? No. I can't. Because that requires a blocking operation. Um, unless Windows frees the stack for me if I tell it about it, but, like, maybe, maybe if I tell it about it in the tab, Windows would know to free it, the initial tab. Um... Um, so, 
Um, one map. That takes an address. Um, so here's what I can do, and this is a little exotic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the uh, we're gonna pass the stack into here. So that's the address of the stack, and here's what we're gonna do. Whoops. Okay, didn't want to do that. Whoopsie doodles. Um. Oops. Oops. Okay, and then now we have a stack passed in, and we need to actually pass in the stack here. Uh, pass and stack. In uh, this is the third argument, so a two. Uh, in a one. Okay, so this is now a two, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the base of the stack. Uh, so stack dot leak. Stack. So this will be uh stack as mute pointer as u side as u sixty four, right? So now we're passing in the stack. So now you have access to the stack, and then here's what we're gonna do. Um, mun map. Mun map. Um. Mun map. We can do this. That's four args. That's pretty easy. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um bup, 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 Okay, uh save the return, and then this is a uh, free our own stack. <laughs> this is gonna be fun as fuck. Um I don't know, maybe we're supposed to tell uh Windows about it in the in the thing. Let me see. Um uh, because, like, if the thread crashes, then what happens? Right? Like, to me, that's... that's... Hmm. Because if the thread crashes, then it just... it just disappears. External, thank you so much for the tier one, Subarino. Hell yeah, hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh... uh... Um, hmm. Freeing the stack before the call to exit thread. Yeah, so, um. Oh, we actually want to do this out of this scope because we're relying on the drop handlers. Um, uh, create a scope so that we drop box and arc. Uh, Box and arc. Okay, we're gonna scope that, and then we exit the thread. Uh, what is a cell? It's interior mutability, so it allows you to write to something that you don't have a mutable reference to. Um, hmm. Yeah, because if this thread crashes, then it leaks. Um. But I think you're actually supposed to make a crash handler. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do unsafe asm. Um, okay, and then we're gonna do uh uh um hmm. JR, I guess, uh, j jump in link. Let me just, uh, J. <laughs> We're gonna jump in link to two forwards. Two forwards. So this is, uh, set the link register. Okay. Um, uh, we're gonna put a knob here. I don't know if we actually need to put a knob there. Uh, we need to figure that out, actually. Break, um, 1337. Hopefully we can do that. Um, expected 10 bit. Nope, and that's just two. Um, expected 10 bit unsigned immediate. Uh, what? 
Okay. Needs the pound for this one. Uh, make object dump. Vim dash. Leet. Fuck. Break. Dot star leet. Uh, what's leet in, in decimal? Uh, leet. Break. Um. There's gonna be a lot of breaks, aren't there? Oh, we can just, we have symbols. I'm fucking dumb. Entry. Spawn entry. Uh. What? Yeah, there's a jump in link, and then it does put a knop afterwards. Okay, so it does seem like it is handling the delay slot for us. Okay. Um, and since that's handling the delay slot for us, uh, we're just good. So we can do a jump in link to here. Now, this allows us to do a syscall. So what we're going to do is a syscall to... Um, uh, we're going to syscall to NT free virtual memory. Okay, so this is going to be um, load immediates into v0, which is the argument. And the argument that we're going to load there is uh, free virtual uh, 3a. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to load immediate into a0. Um, or this is just going to be... Uh, a0 is already going to be set for this assembly. Then we're going to, what else do we need? Uh, let's split this. Mon map. Okay. Um, load immediate, A1. Eh, that we can also do as a constant. Base address, region size. The size is going to be uh, zero, but it's a uh, reference to memory zero. Hmm. It's kind of tough. Uh, so we can do that as well. I wonder, what if we blue screen it by M unmapping where it's writing to? Ah, now we have to try that. Uh, it's this call. Pretty sure we can just syscall here, because we'll pass on all these things ourselves. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> Options, no return. Okay. Um. Is the pointer uh, guaranteed to be the first byte of the allocation? Yes. Yes. Uh, stack. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to in into A0. Uh, we'll do the stack. Oh, yeah. Um, I think... I don't know if we can do these registers, can we? Oh, A0 is 4, right? Okay. Uh, so this is a load uh, immediate, right? And then that's a V0 like this. There we go. Okay. Okay, do you not want that? Okay, so load immediate into v0. Uh, we're going to put this... Uh, this is going to be not zero u size. Um, then we're going to have a in to five. And this is going to be the address. Then we're going to have an in to uh, six. And this is going to be the region size. Um, adder of mute, R size. Where's my syntax highlighting? Am I crazy? Okay, and then we're going to have... So these are basically the, the arguments that we're passing in. Then we have an in seven. Um, and this is going to be mem release, all right? Okay, so, uh, let me, r size is equal to ou size. So this is the, uh, region size. Um, unfortunately, we're going to be freeing that. 
So it'll be very interesting what happens when we're freeing the memory that we're storing that in. Uh, that could be that could be exciting. I uh, cannot find value mem release in this scope. Um, we can always put this in a global, a mutable global, and just not care about it, and then mem release. Okay. Okay, so now this should free the memory and then return back to here. And now you want to uh, exit thread. And then we'll jail to, to uh, 3F and break, right? Um, okay, this is NT exit uh, terminate thread. And then this we can load immediate of uh, a zero of negative uh, two, load immediate into a one of the exit code, and then this is load immediate into v zero of the syscall, and the syscall for this is um oh yeah, and this can be a uh, free virtual. Uh, we f free. Yeah, we'll just say free, and this will be a uh, terminate. Okay, and then we'll do um uh terminate is equal to const uh syscall something like this. I I forget the syntax. Uh, Rust asm. Are you expecting to find bugs that are specific to Windows MIPS? Oh, yeah, for sure. Free virtual memory can return an error code? Don't care. There's nothing we can do about it at this point. Um, Basic usage, blah, 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 blah. Const, 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 const. Oh, come on. Uh, why is it searching that? Okay, um, uh, as some inputs and outputs, const, oh, yeah, wow, I, I just have it, uh, syscall terminate is equal to syscall, uh, terminate thread, uh, as u size, and then we also have a, uh, free, which is a uh, free virtual memory. Const operands for inline assembly are unstable. Really? What? Really? Okay. We'll just, uh, We'll just do this. Isn't this normally handled by calling DLL main with DLL thread detach? The assembly feature was split. Oh, interesting. Okay, whatever. Uh, terminate thread. So that's gonna be terminate and then free it's free thread. Okay, this is uh this is uh get current thread. Uh, exit code. Um, yeah, kernel 32 does it for you, yeah. So. Okay. Um, so theoretically, this is going to jump and link to here, which is going to free, and then that's going to jump back here. And this is going to jump and link to here, and that's going to terminate the thread. And then this is, uh, this is just, this is just end. Okay? I predict it's going to fail. Why? Because of this? Because of this region size here? Because of this? Return will crash when writing to freed memory? What do you mean? You're saying this? Uh, this free virtual memory is going to crash because it's writing to this region size? I mean, I can just make this static mute. Well, let, let's see. Let's see what happens. 
Oops. Is this call missing here? Yeah. There we go. Okay, it looks like it's leaking. We still don't know if that's if the stack is what's leaking, but uh, I'm guessing I'm guessing the stack is what's leaking. Okay, so then what we can do is uh, we'll just do static mute region size adder of mute stack. No, that's um. Oh yeah, I think you're right. Aren't you? Yeah, because it's a pointer to the pointer. Ah. Uh, okay, so let's say this is mute. Okay. Hey, it's not leaking. It's not leaking. Yeah, take that, Desu. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Desu. See, here's the here's the thing, Desu. The OS, as long as it's freeing the memory, I don't care if it's writing to it. The only the like it might then try to write the updated size after it freed the memory, and then it fails, but it still freed it. It's not gonna un undo the free, right? It's not gonna unwind the free. So in the kernel. You know, unless the kernel literally derefed it and crashed and blue screened the system, it's probably doing a safe poke to that thing. That poke's failing. That probably returns an error. That causes free to return an error, but it still actually freed the memory at the end of the day. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so now we have no leaks. Yeah, 1356, 1352. So all the threads crash with an error? Uh, I don't think they're crashing. I mean, no, they're not. They're not crashing. If if these if these threads were crashing, remember, it's not crashing. It's returning an error through free virtual memory. Windows doesn't throw an exception if you if you uh, crash in the kernel, right? If you if you give the kernel an invalid thing, it will give you an invalid parameter. It's not going to crash. And I can demonstrate this because join I don't think works unless we terminate the thread. So we're going to go here. And we're going to do a uh, load word v0. We're going to load from 0 of v0. And then we'll load immediate v0, 0. So we're going to do a null deref, right? So we're actually going to crash um, here. And I don't think we'll get any join.unwraps because I don't think the thread will ever complete execution. And yeah, the thread never terminates, right? The thread never terminates because uh, I think what actually happens is the like, Enter thread kernel 32 DLL thunk. I think it actually registers an exception handler. So basically, um, this is probably like a zombie thread if it crashes or or something like that. Like I, I think it actually registers a, an exception handler to to do this sort of thing. So I think that pretty concretely demonstrates that uh, we are definitely returning from this, and then we're also actually terminating the thread. Right, which means that we're terminating with the zero, which is which is what we want. But yeah, this is definitely not leaking, right? Definitely not leaking. Um, yeah, thirteen fifty two. So we have no handle leaks, we have no thread leaks, we have no uh, VM size leaks, and we have no memory leaks. Uh, and we're definitely getting CPU usage. This is super weird. Yeah, I know. Do you like handles and stack if the thread crashes, though? Yes. Um, but I'd have to register an exception handler to, to get around that. I don't leak handles. The handle never gets leaked, right? The handle uh, is given to me, and I put that in my join handle. I can drop that before the thread exits. This is, this is just my token to talk to the thread again if I want to. Um, but if I don't want to talk to the thread again, then I just drop this handle. So this handle will not get leaked, right? Uh, the only thing that can get leaked is basically the, um, these boxes can get leaked, 
the box, the return type can get leaked, and so can the um so can the stack. But do I really care? No, because if the program is crashing, then I'm probably fixing that. <laughs> I think I'm more concerned about a crash than a leak. If if I'm getting a leak when a thread crashes, I think I'll uh, figure that one out. Seems like there should be a way to tell the kernel to free the stack on its own once the thread is freed. I don't think the thread gets freed if it crashes. I think if the I think if the thread crashes, I don't think it's freed. I think for you to actually free a thread, I think you have to manually um I think you have to manually do it. So let's see. Let's see if I Oh, no. I'm actually not leaking threads. Um Oh, I don't know that actually. Uh let's do this. Um I don't know if I'm leaking threads because I'm joining on these. So we're just going to create 100 threads, and they're all going to crash, right? So we're going to crash 100 threads here. And what we'll probably see is that we have 101 threads in our program. Um, uh, oh, client exits. So we need to also loop at the end here, right? So create all the threads, and then don't exit the process. And let's see... Where is it? Where's client? Right here. So you can see, yep, there's 101 threads, right? Because that thread crashing, the OS does not kill a thread when it gets when it crashes. That thread exists there. So the only way that we actually can kill that thread is if we uh, manually kill it by sending it a kill command, or if in the thread we register a, a crash handler. So basically, the OS just doesn't do that for us, right? So even there, um, if the thread crashes, it's just keeping the thread around anyways because the thread's not actually exiting, so the leak is technically correct. <laughs> okay, um, does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, then, uh, then blame it on NT design because that's the way it's designed. All right, and then here we go. So this should be able to create a bunch of threads. We should be back to the leaking state. Um, and everything's good. Yeah, no leaks. Uh, fantastic. Okay. So now what we need to do is cat make file. And we want to do a cargo build release. Target x86 64 PC uh, or unknown none. This is not going to fail to build. And that's a problem. So we're going to fix that. Um, and that's really anywhere that we use assembly or those register contexts. Um, so I think what we're actually going to do is we're going to have spawn a thread. Uh, this is the only place where we're using context. We're just going to move this into a uh, context. Uh, we're just going to move this into the MIP specific, uh, this is called spawn a thread. Um, and we'll say uh, MIPS specific due to some inline assembly as well as MIPS specific context uh, structure creation, right? So we're just going to move that into MIPS. And now uh, we should be able to have that build um, MIPS. Uh, MIPS, MIPS. And yeah, that should be good. Okay. So, um, basically, uh, this is going to fail to build now because of these syscalls. And that's because we literally haven't implemented these syscalls for x 664 But it's no longer failing because it's like, literally, we're using instructions that don't exist, right? Unknown registers. So, these syscalls, we don't have the syscall table. Um, blah, blah, blah. Address of... Uh, adder of, I guess we're not using here. And then box, we're also not using here. Probably not unsafe cell either. No, I think we use uh, that with a, with our join handle. Um, so now we can do a make. And we can see basically what's actually failing here. I see it handling in a rust that's next. Uh, no, pro uh, maybe. We actually might want to do that, to be honest. Um, 
join handle. So the join handle actually is agnostic. So we will do that. So this will be um, join handle. Uh, so this will be use super join handle. Okay. Now uh, we have a handle. Uh, use super handle as well. Yeah, and I guess we're creating a handle out of thin air, and that's okay. Um, what do we got now? Result. Uh, use super result as well. Okay, and NT status. And then use uh, alloc sync arc. Okay, and we're getting there, and then just probably maybe uninit. And then I think we also will need um, the unsafe cell. And I think that's all we need. And now hopefully this will build. Oh, and we need box. Uh, use alloc boxed box. Okay, and then mem release. Uh, address of mute. Okay, and those as well. Uh, use core pointer. Adder of adder of mute. All right, there we go. Uh, exit thread, never used, 236. Um, that's fine. Um, yeah. Allow, uh, yeah, we'll just leave that there. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to have this, so I guess I need allow unused. Dead code. Unused or dead code? What, what's what's more correct there? Okay, uh, now we have no warnings or error. Make Clippy. Oh no. Um, okay. Um, 271. Missing documentation for function. Yep, that makes sense. So that's uh, 271. And this is the uh, external thread entry points. Um, okay. All right, now what do we have? 341, casting that, cast it to a U size. All right, we'll just as U size as U32. Okay, there you go, got fucked. Um, and then we have missing documentation on join. Okay, we can add that. Uh, 186, uh, wait a block until the thread exits. Uh, and return the return value from the thread. Okay. So now everything should be freed. So what this is going to do is uh, try to unwrap the arc. Um, this is only possible if the thread uh, has exited. Thus, there is only one reference to the uh, arc. Um... This atomically double checks that not only has the thread exited because the weight above, the weight above uh, succeeded, but also the, um, the arc was dropped inside the thread. Okay. Um, now that we have exclusive access to the thread, we can, or to the return value, we can um, get the inner part of the unsafe cell, uh, unsafe cell, and assume it is initialized because, uh, initialized. Um, it is impossible for the thread to have been, for the arc in the thread to have then dropped without initializing the value. Thus, this is safe. Okay, zoom in it. Bam, okay, so now we have threads. Uh, we have no memory leaks, we have no clippies. Uh, get commit am, fixed handle leak, and uh, stack leak, get push. Okay, so this should no longer have any issues. All right. 
So now this is uh, MIPS NT, right? Yeah, MIPS NT. So if you want to play along, um, this now, now we have like full threading support. Everything is pretty damn good here now. Um, print, entry, syscall, blah, blah, blah. We should be able to spawn a hundred threads and wait for them to exit. Here we go. Let, let's see, let's see if this works. This should work. Uh, felf serve. Okay, and then we'll just write this. Serving bytes. Okay, that immediately exits. How fast can I create 10,000 threads? Okay, creating threads, creating threads, creating threads. No leaks, no handle leaks, no thread leaks, no memory leaks. 1348 keeps going back. That's fantastic. That's what I like to see. And it exited. Okay, so everything's looking great there. I'm gonna do a reboot just because we have one zombied uh, client process, and then that will be uh, then we'll be good here. But yeah, look at that! Look at that! Okay, any other recommendations to the code? I think we're correctly doing everything now. We're actually spawning the threads. We, we we're passing up any errors, any warnings, any issues. We have a way of creating threads. We can move things into them. Uh, I don't think we have any race conditions there because we're correctly using an arc and we're guaranteeing that the arc is filled in before we assume a knit. And we're, we also know that we don't unwrap that until it's exclusive on the other side. So I think everything here should be fine, right? Okay. Now reproduce the blue screen, but properly this time. Um, yeah, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, okay, so that should be running. Um, oops. All right, so uh, what we can do is uh, we can make some threads. Uh, let me workers, the secret Levesque new. Uh, use alloc vec vec. Okay, so this is uh, thread handlers for workers, and then spawn worker threads. We'll do eight. We'll do eight worker threads, and then we're gonna write the shittiest fuzzer in the world. Um, we're gonna write a really shitty fuzzer. Uh, this is just gonna call. We're just gonna call worker. Um, dot expect failed to spawn thread. Okay, and then we'll do workers dot push. Okay, so we're gonna push that and then we're gonna say, uh, wait for all threads to exit. And then we'll do for thread in threads, thread dot join dot expect failed to join thread. Okay. Bam. Uh, I guess I said workers. Okay, and then we'll do fn worker. Print worker. Print ln. Um. Oh, let's. Uh. There we go. Okay, we have our workers, and then uh, I I. We'll even pass in I I. And now we have to say move. Okay, and then this is uh, ID. This is uh, use size. And now we can say worker uh, ID. So now we'll have worker IDs. There we go. So there's all seven of our worker threads. Um, there we go. And if we if we loop, uh, we should see that these are, are printing. Um, yeah, these threads are definitely running uh, as threads. So that's fantastic. Okay. So now what we can do is uh, let's modify our syscall stuff a smidgen. Let's just smidgen it. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go into syscall mips. Search syscall mips. OK. 
Okay, these are all unsafe. That's good. Uh, spawn. Yep, that gets us a thread. Uh, and then here, let's document this. Let's say, um, free the stack and then exit the thread. We do this in one uh, assembly block to ensure we don't touch any stack memory during this stage as we are freeing the stack. Okay, um, that looks good. And then what else do we want to do here? Um, then let's go and uh, let's change syscall. It's not going to be rep reuse size. This is going to be... Um... Hmm... Um, okay, so how am I going to pass in an arbitrary number to syscall? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um. And we can do this, uh, a raw syscall number. We can do this, but now this is going to fail to build, right? Because it's going to be like, you can't do that. Um, which then means that I'm going to have to, uh, implement like, uh, impl this. And then I'll have like an as u size. Uh, you size and self match self. Okay, and this is uh, get the uh, syscall ID for the syscall. Um, okay, okay, pink. Go to things that don't contain an equal and, uh, go to things that don't contain an equal and delete them. Okay. And then, uh, go to things with four spaces and change it to a sys call, a self. Um, and then go to things with an equal and change them to this. Have you ever wanted to do something malicious to someone? No. Um, other X, X, uh, this, 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 this. Does cheating in Maple Story count as malicious? Fuck. Um. Okay, and then we replace equals dot star commas with commas. No. Replace space equals with commas. All right, now we're really close. Um. Nice. As you size. As you size. Calls and constants. <sighs> oh, um, yeah, we should, uh, we should be fine. Const fn. There we go. Uh, that's not FFI safe. Uh, rep or see that shit then. Um. Oh, yeah, that's not gonna be fine. Shit. No, we can't do this. We can't do this. Son of a bitch.
Well, just delete all that code. Feels fucking bad, man. Uh, um... Why does it need to be a FFI save? Because we use it from assembly. Um, um. Can't use the as you size? No, not in these because I can't. I can't reference arguments. I can't, I can't use arguments here, um, or parameters, or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I might just change these to uh, syscall, uh, sick, um, This is gonna give me a lot of issues, okay? Pretty much anywhere I do a syscall now. Uh, as you size. You could always write, always inline wrappers. Yeah, I kinda don't like that. Yeah, and I can't do into, otherwise I would do into use size here, and then I'd have this automatically happen for you, but this is fine. Okay, so this should just work. There's no reason this shouldn't work. Felf serve this, serve it up. Okay, there we have our workers running. Great. Um... Okay, cool. And that client exited. Good, 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 good. Bam. Okay, there's all our workers. Um, so now what I can do is I can just do arbitrary syscalls. Um, so the way that I'm gonna do this is I need a a seed. Um, that's okay. I, I that's pretty easy. Uh, Python import random. Uh, hex random dot rand int zero to two to sixty-four. Okay, and then we'll do, uh, mm, rand dot rs, uh, zor shift sixty-four, uh, fn rand, or struct rng, u64, uh, zor shift sixty-four implementation. Uh, pub struct this, impl rng, fn new, pub fn, pub const fn, uh, seed, u64, yields a self, give me a self seed, uh, create a seeded rng, okay, get the next rng value, uh, pub fn, next, mute self, yields a u64, and then we'll do, uh, we'll do, um, self dot, honestly, pretty much always like to do this, it's just better, sell new, uh, use core, um, Cell, cell. Okay, so this will be let mute seed is self dot get seed sort equals seed thirteen seventeen forty three, and then we'll do uh, seed and then self dot set seed. Okay. Um. So that's going to get the seed, update the seed, update the seed, return that the new seed value. Okay. So that's pretty good. That's building just fine. Uh, I guess that makes sense because we haven't pulled this in. Um, mod rand. Looks good. Uh, seed self dot zero dot get and self dot zero dot set. Okay. Uh, and then we'll do a make 
Clippy, once we copy this. Worker, okay, uh, worker thread uh, for fuzzing. Using cell, the interface doesn't require mute self, exactly. Uh, okay. Thirteen seven seventeen is for uh. There's multiple different Zor shifts. This is the this is the best one. Um. Okay. Then, that actually sounds like that is the um thirty two bit one. Um. Okay. So then we'll do uh let RNG is RNG new. Then we'll do this plus ID. There you go. There's our nice seed. Create an RNG. All right. Make Clippy. Oh, yep. Uh, use create rand RNG. Yay! Okay. Uh, as you sixty four. Woo! We did it. Okay. So now we can just loop and we'll just do uh, if match, hmm, match rng dot next mod um, as u32. Okay, that's gonna make this mod a lot cheaper. Then we're gonna mod this by 10. Uh, okay. Um, syscall, syscall zero, uh, and then this is the syscall number, next as you size, right? Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, see where this is going, yeah? 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 Okay, um... And then all these are unhandled. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Th this shouldn't. This shouldn't do anything. This shouldn't. This shouldn't be able to find a blue screen. Um, okay. What if I just do one worker? What if I don't have a thread? <laughs> yep, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh. Oh, that makes sense. Interesting. I think there's going to be bugs, chat. I think there's going to be bugs. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, I see. Uh, mm. uh, mm. Okay, uh, mm. Okay, let's just do this. <sighs> this is going to be hard, isn't it, chat? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Um. Ha. Uh, um. Uh. Mm. Uh, hmm. Um, um, hmm. Uh, hmm. Call E S P is looking dicey. That that looks like a kernel stack. That looks fine. There's my that that's my address. Um, mm, yeah. Um, mm. Um, hmm. So, yeah. Uh, at call to bug check BC, 806E288. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Eight of sixty O two A eight. Wait, did this get relocated? Where is this based at? Um Wow, really? Shit. I don't know if you can rebase, can you? You probably can with like with like Python, but that's that's really hard. I I want I want a nice GUI rebasing because I'm you know because because this is, this is just this is just gonna be too hard. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Eight zero six four seven. File. Is there a file rebase? No. Shut up, chat. Um, okay. Uh uh. Eight zero six four seven one two three. Um, okay. And it's hard to say if this is actually gonna rebase it to the correct location. Um eight oh six four seven. Like that's definitely the right DLL base, but I don't know if it's supposed to be the DLL base of the code segment. Uh, but we'll see if this looks like 806E02A8. Mm -hmm. um. Um. How do we get proof? PSR. Is this the call stack? 806E288. Return address is there. Hmm. Thoughts on Binja is pretty good. Um. Uh, um. Okay. So, uh. Hmm. It's hard to hard to say. Uh two A eight. Eight oh six E O two A eight. Like it it could literally be this that's failing. I mean if that's failing, that's uh that's gonna be a bit of a problem. Um if you find a bug, will you send a bug report to Microsoft? Nope. Um, shit. It's hard to say if I'm at the right base. I'm, like, kind of scared. Uh, minus 2C0. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of makes more sense, I think. Um, all right. Uh, so what do I want to do here? I think we want to make a buffer. Let mute a buff is a uh, vec. So we want to we want to get some a's in here. Can we get some a's in chat? Uh, 
And then what we're going to do is a buff. Uh. Uh. Mm, is you size. Let's let's just see what happens if we just do this. Um a buff dot as pointer as you size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So we really we really want to get some A's in here. Um uh, S as pointer with as mute pointer. Okay, so right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to just get some A's in there and some memory, and we're just gonna see if if we can get A's. Um, I wouldn't imagine this would possibly work and get A's anywhere. Um, yeah, I don't really see any A's, right? I'm kind of I'm kind of hoping that I get some A's. Uh, we crashed in a different location. Um. And where did we crash here? Uh, 806 F3888. Is it this? Is it this that crashed? KI system service handler? Um, 807 OBD90. 807 BD8C. Is that does that not exist? Oh, that is BD8C. Um, yeah, that's the return address for that. Um, x eight oh six EO two A eight. I just don't know if this is where it's actually crashing. Hmm. What do you think what do you think crash debug does? Set the recovery options in that or the crash debug? Let, let's let's see if we can set crash debug. It's gonna be in boot any. I'm lost right now? Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't uh, I haven't figured that out. Are there full memory dumps for the blue screen? I don't I have no idea. Um Let's go find the boot any. If there is a boot any. Um, where would that be? Is it auto exec actually? You think it's in here? Hmm, is that empty? Okay, weird. Um, hmm. Hmm, whoops. Memory.txt. Oh, whoa, whoa. Is that a memory.dump? Uh, okay, so there's like control panel or something. Uh, crash debug or something like that. Um, oh, pf the performance boost of the foreground. Hardware profiles, properties, okay, uh, write debugging information, okay, is that, is that crash debug? Well, I'll be damned. Are we going to get mini dumps? I don't think that's actually a mini dump. I think this is going to be some weird dump format. All right, here we go. Boop, boop, boop. So now I'm curious if uh, this has enabled crash debug or not. Um. All right, here we go. Here we go. Bam. Does not did it not crash. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, beginning dump of physical memory. Physical memory dump complete. Contact your sysadmin. Okay. Uh, chat, you're gonna be my sysadmin today. Um, what's the verdict? <laughs> what's, uh, what's the verdict, chat? Um... <laughs> it's buggy. Okay, I'm not qualified for this role. <laughs> Alright, um... NT 4.0 is not written in Rust. Alright. So, are we going to be able to open up this dumperino? Winnant. Oh my god. That is a memory dump. Okay. That's pretty... Okay. We got... We theoretically have a memory dump. Okay, so let's do debug cdbz. Um, d colon slash winnant memory dot dump. Fuck. How do I open it? Help. 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 Oh, that was the help. Oh, maybe. No. Uh, so CDB. Help. 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 Help me. Right, here's furry dog.bmp for you. Uh, that's that's for you, chat. We'll set this as the desktop background. Tiled. There we go. Okay. Um Really? Really? No. No. Mm. No. Um, you shouldn't have to give it an image anyways. Uh... Hmm... I don't think it's the Z-Switch. That's the... That's the... That's the main problem. Um, and how, like... Like, is there just no documentation on fucking... Using this? Ooh, dump exam. Memory.txt is empty. <gasps> now it's not empty. Did that seriously write memory.txt? Yeah. Dump exam. Oh. Woo. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, virtual memory usage. Faulted address there. A Ku five. Seven one eight. Oh, that is the extension that is trying to... Ex okay, that's the memory dumping tool crashed. Wow, process zero, zero. Oh, that's so cool. That works. Oh, my God. Process zero, seven. Oh, my gosh. This is so nice. This is literally the same as it is in modern shit. Uh, thread. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Register dump for processor zero. Owning process that. Start address is this. Yup. 
Um. Um. That's really cool. System service handler. Execute, dispatch, dispatch, exception, exit. Um, okay. Okay. So, am I, am I hitting that? Right miss exception? Uh, right miss. Uh... Wait, why don't I have symbols for that? Have I not applied symbols to the uh the kernel? Hmm. Um uh... Um, um, uh, uh, um, hmm. What does this mean? Uh, let's just keep running our fuzzer until we get a, a cooler crash, maybe. I don't know if we'll get a cooler crash. Um, hmm. Let's just, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna run it again. You know? We'll just run it again. There we go. And blue screened? Yep, blue screened. Okay, mm, there we go. Uh, there we go. That looks like maybe a different call stack. That looks pretty good. Alright, look at that. Progress. Progress is being made. Save memory.txt? Meh. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. CMD. There we go. CD debug explorer dot. Uh. Dump exam. What's dump check? D colon slash winnant memory dot dump. Okay. Dump. Exam. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Good to know that that just is a thing. Uh, boop. Boop. Dump exam. There we go. Properties. Now we're scripting. Uh. Okay. Dump exam. D colon slash winnant memory dot dump. All right. All right. This is going to be a good program now. Ah, uh, that's a masterpiece. That's a masterpiece. Um, okay. So then we'll add a, oh, let's just make some, uh, let's make some, make some shortcuts, make another shortcut. Okay. Those look great. We'll just paste those onto the desktop and then we'll arrange these auto arrange them. Oh yeah. There's memory dot dump. All right, so what do we got going on now? What kind of what kind of juicy stuff do we have here today? Ooh! Ooh! Um, so we can see user space. Um Okay. So um this would appear this would appear that
NT user find existing cursor icon? System service exit? Huh. Huh. Leet was a wise choice. Damn right it was. Are you questioning my decisions? Okay, here's KI system service exit. Um... Yeah, and I think that's calling NT, uh, NT user find. Is that a thing? Um, find existing cursor icon. Okay. Uh, cursor. Okay, I think we don't have symbols for some reason. Um, hmm. They're an otherwise choice. Received a uh, screenshot of Syscall 9 crashing the kernel. Had to watch the screen then. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, did we not apply symbols to this? To Entos? No, that's Entos kernel. Uh, NT user find. Well, okay, so this is just not in here. Son of a bitch. What? Mom? Um. <sighs> Isn't it in another module? Oh, it could be. It could be. It could be. Um, it'd be really nice if I could analyze this dump. That would be really cool. Um, ooh, it might be MIPS KD that I need to use. Uh, CD debug MIPS KD Z D colon slash winnant memory dot dump, please. Uh, okay, um, okay, uh, symbols, uh, how do I create one? How do I, how do I make one? How do I make a variable? Mom? Mom? Um, set, uh, what is it? Sl slash, uh, okay. Do I have less? Do I have more? Do I have, okay, I have more. Um, Uh Oh, it's a there's a different set thing. Um uh something set, whatever it is. What is it? Uh per, uh persist and set x. Oh, shit. Hmm. Using the lower two edit controls? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I think you're lying to me, chat. Um. I can delete. Do, do you think I just, do you think I just change things? And it will just, this isn't going to replace it? Uh. Uh. NT symbol. <laughs> Path, uh, D colon slash winnant symbols. Oops, 
I clicked on something. Um, NT symbol path decon slash winnant symbols. Bam. Uh, okay. That, okay. I don't have to reboot after doing that? Wow. Uh, echo NT symbol path. Dir winnant symbols. Let's just make sure that that's good. That is. Uh, okay. So now I can do uh, MIPS KD Z decon slash winnant memory dot dump. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Ooh, woo. Can we get some oo-woos in chat? It's been a while since we've had some oo-woos. Um. Um. Wait, can I use loose the console? I'll be damned. Uh, save. Ah, yar, 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 we got, we got it. We got it. Okay, do you think I can X star dot star? Uh, examine NT star? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we can, uh, do you think we have an analyze? No. <laughs> uh, what are you looking for in here? I'm looking for symbols. Um, but also, yeah, okay, 132k, holy fuck. Um, okay, so what do I want to do? Um, uh, open log moose. Hmm. Uh, log moose. Fuck. Will the stream, uh, will the stream be on YouTube later? Yeah, it will. Um, can you pipe this into Linux? Uh, theoretically, yes. Uh, log open. Yeah, you're right. Okay, um... Do you think it goes faster if I minimize it? Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> Woo! That is fucking hacking right there. That's hacking if I've ever fucking seen it. What a masterpiece of hacking and exploitation. Wow! I'm so fucking smart. <laughs> ah, con host. Okay, so I should have a moose. Where's moose? Oh, I call that astiff. Um, let's open this in uh, notepad. Uh, notepad. Yeah, open. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh my god. Oh, we've got full symbols now. Oh! 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 Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh. Oh. All right, do you think I can open an executable? Um, system... And toss kernel? Is that a, a path? Uh, when in system 32 and toss kernel? Ah, fuck. Okay, you can't do that. Oops. Shit. Fuck. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, 
There we go. Um, bash I. Ah, shit. Okay. Um. Oops. Okay. LM. Okay. Uh, UNCR 53C9X. Uh, LM. Uh, X NCR 53C9X star. Okay. Okay. All symbols are loaded. Yeah. I don't know what the square root means. Um. Um. Okay. X star star? Hmm. Is this going to be everything? X star? Come on. Let me minimize it. Minimize. Okay, and then then is probably done. Nope, that's just NT. Um, uh, how will I do this? How will I do this? Um, does Windows D work? No. Or uh, Windows D to minimize? No. Windows D's nuts. <laughs> Um, hmm. It says something about uh, symbol checksums not matching. Oh, okay. Probably doesn't matter. Doesn't sound important. Um, how do I get fucking help? How do I get help? Hmm. No. Command. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Help. Um, so, X star star star, X, and, uh, uh, hmm, um, hmm, hmm. Um, help is here. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay. B causes it to stop. Okay. C is a resync. Symbol load as soon as the module is loaded. Oh, can I do that? No. 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 Uh, okay. Um. All right. Uh, LM. Okay, and then we can X star star. What did I do that? touched all of these. There's something I did that caused them, like, all to load. What the fuck did I do? I did something, didn't I? Uh, what did I do? Oh, fuck. Now I... Oh, boy. How am I gonna maximize this window now? Um... Oh, I know. I can use the menu key. How many people have used the menu key on your keyboard? Oh no, does it not work? Do I not have a menu key? Fuck. Uh, reload doesn't exist. Um, alt space? Oh, fuck yeah. Brilliant. Uh, restore. Okay. Okay, uh... Then maximize. All right. 
Okay, um, uh, yeah, what the fuck did I do? I did something that caused this to refresh. Um, I really wish I had help for this. Star star. You star star. Hmm. X star star. It wasn't that. I had something that worked. Something did something here. Fuck, what was it? Hmm. 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 Colon thinking. Um. What, what am I going to do here? How am I going to parse this? I really just wish I had fucking help for KD. Like, uh... That kind of sucks that I don't. Uh, books. Hmm. Hardware compatibility list. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Wonder if those links are still valid. Uh, I don't think Microsoft links from a week ago are valid. Um, this is just how to install. There's no way that they have debugging information in here. Um, no. Katie's shell question question. Well, question question evaluates a, a an expression. A question does right. Um. I guess we never tried help on, uh... Uh... Let me exit. Fuck. What? How do you exit? NT debug? Ooh, this is nice. This is some old... You found some old docs? Um... Crash debug. Send debug info only on that. Yep. Um... Okay. Okay, so I should have like process zero zero. That's good. Uh reload. Uh reload F. Oh fuck yeah. Oh help. Hey! Hey! Let's get some claps in chat. They're bangs. They're bang help. Uh okay. Um, okay, how do I scroll? How do I scroll? <laughs> Fuck. Can I not scroll? Oh, um, shit. Um, like process zero zero will give me a list of all the processes. Help. Help. Uh, I can't read it that fast. Reload F. Uh, reload star. Re reload. Uh, 
Um. Oh, there is just a question. Um, help. L log it. Log open moose. Help. Help. Help, chat. I'm lost and I can't find my way. Uh, oh, we moosed this one. Uh, reload, sympath. Load, extensions, bug dump, call data, db, db link, drivers, modify memory, airlog, file cache, keep, erp find, mem usage, process, um, Dumps the timer tray, token fields. Okay. Um. I hope I need someone. Press Alt and Space together, then E, then L. That's pretty advanced. Um. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Display this list. Mm. Built-in commands, bang reload. Bang load, bug dump. Um. What do I want to do here? Yeah, someone should look back how you did it. Yeah, I actually have no fucking idea how I did it. Um, b -b -b process fields. I'm just seeing like what I have here. Really, nothing's too crazy. Um, uh, reload star sim sim. Reload. Reload H. Reload star. Reload V star. Reload V. Okay. Um, reload H. Frame one. Yeah, I don't know why that works, but it does. Uh, I think... <laughs> Sick. Okay. Frame one. There we go. That's the, that's the trick. That's the trick. X star star. Um... Uh... Star? Uh... No. Okay, and then we'll go this. All right, that's just NT. Um. Ah, how do I dump all these? Ah. Um. Uh, I'd really like to. Alt. Alt space E and L. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That's some, that's some good shit right there. Um, all right. Then, uh... I'm really just putting off this because I know this is gonna suck, but I wanna dump all these simbi boys. Um, um, hmm. Hmm. So I can do like moop, but I can't do a star on that? 
help X. X. HX. Help X. Dump all the module names to the text file. Make a text file with KD commands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You ready, chat? Raise your hand if you're ready. Raise your hand if you're ready. Uh, okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. E, uh, K. And we're going to do some of this bad boy. Um, notepad. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Replace. Uh, mm. I'll get your plushie in a second. LM stat. Okay, how do I how do I do that? <sighs> Unless I can do scripting. Let me see if I can do scripting. Um, four. No. If. Yeah. Uh. Then five else zero. I'm guessing I can't do scripting. Um. Yeah. Select including zero, replace zero. Uh, let me see if X and T. Okay, so I need to also add something at the end. <laughs> All right, we got this, chat. We got this. Uh, edit, mark, this. All right, I'm gonna select a zero. And I'm going to select uh, that. Okay. And then we're going to go to untitled. We're going to uh, select all. Delete, paste. Okay. That looks good. Uh, we're just going to fix these up. Okay. Okay. And then uh, write a batch file to emit KD commands. Do I look like the kind of person who knows batch? Zero, replace with uh, X. Replace all. Oh, oh, oh fuck yeah. Uh, then we're going to replace um, this with a bang star. Okay, and then we're going to replace uh, X space 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 with an X dash. Okay, and then we're going to replace uh, a space with nothing. Uh, okay, and then we're going to replace an X dash with uh, with an X space. <laughs> You like what you see, chat? You like what you see? Uh. Okay, uh, then I want to save the file. F, save as, uh, kdcommands.txt. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Ah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, edit. Scroll to the end. Um, okay. Uh, YK. 
can't why can't I type into this window? Uh why can't I type? Uh okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not I'm not in scroll mode is the problem. Um So I can, I can go into scroll mode and then I'm fine and then and then I can't do that and then mark I'm not in mark mode either, right? Um I think that just fucked off. Okay. So uh that's fine. That's pretty standard for that to just fuck off like that. Um Okay, and then we'll just uh we'll just open a new command prompt and we'll do debug uh mips kd of winnt memory.dump and we'll put a z in here. Okay, and then can I do a command file? Um Let's see if I can do commands. Oh, it is Q to quit. Um C Apple. Hmm. Okay, let me see if I can do some uh some holla holla get dollar. Uh test. Test. Hmm. Okay, so um uh you really think yeah really think piping's gonna work uh type dir where is untitled dir winnant is that in here system thirty two What did I name it? KD something? Hmm. What was nuts.txt? Uh, don't worry about it. Oh, it's right there. I'm fucking blind. Type KD commands.txt. Uh, you really think I'm gonna be able to pipe this in? Uh, uh, debug mips kd z winnant winnant. I don't need to load modules. This will this will dump modules for everything. Uh, this will this will load the modules because I'm requesting it. Uh, winnant uh memory dot dump. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Oh, oh, oh! Woo! Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, I'm so smart. Oh, I'm so fucking smart! Oh, fuck yeah. Oh. Okay, now this is dead. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Notepad. Mm, moose dot bat. Can I open a bat file, or is that gonna save it as bat dot text? Hey, it actually saves that as a batch file. Okay, so we're gonna do um, type kd commands dot text. We're gonna pipe these into uh d colon slash debug mips kd z d colon slash me winnant memory dot dump okay so then we have a moose bat okay and then we're gonna notepad kd commands and we're gonna start with a log open uh kd log dot text then at the end, we're gonna do a log close, and then we're gonna do a Q. Okay, and then Alt F4, save, dir. Okay, and now we should be able to do moose.bat. Okay, and then we should... Oh. 
Why you gotta be like that? Uh, CMD. Uh, notepad. KD commands dot text. D colon slash. Log close. Moose.bat. What? Mom? I typoed the file name? <sighs> Chat, why did you let me typo the file name? That's your fault. It's literally your fault. Uh. Yeah, chat, you fucked that up pretty bad. Um, okay. Okay, and then we minimize it. We wait a second or two. And then we uh and then we go back to it and it should be closed. Oh, no, it's still gone. Uh okay. Okay, uh, apparently there's just a lot of stuff here. Okay. Mhm. Mm oh, there it is. It's done. And log close and quit. So that was a clean quit. Fuck yeah. Okay, um, uh, okay, uh, notepad kd commands dot text. And I'm gonna do an lm, because I want to, I want to know where all the modules are based. Alright. Okay, so now that we know where all the modules are based, um, what else do we want to get? Is there anything else that we really care about? for loading these things in uh, Binja? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so then we can minimize this. And then all we're doing is we're waiting for that to no longer be, uh, we're waiting for that to no longer be um, executing moose. Once that's no longer executing moose, we know that it's, uh, there it is. So we know it's done. Okay. So, uh, notepad kdlog.txt, okay, so there we have the module, so we know where everything is loaded, and then we have all of the symbols, all of the symbols. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, wow, that's art, oh yeah. Okay, that should literally be every symbol. Um, does this include non-functions? Does this include variables? Yeah, null import descriptor. Browser initialize that. Uh, so we have imports. Serial ISR. Uh, I don't know if this has globals. Hmm. I don't know if this has globals. Can't wait to binge a Python. NT4 has cool ASCII characters and symbol names. Nice, yeah. Uh, flush buffer. And I'm curious if I can dump uh, symbols of things that I don't have. So we're going to do a uh, mark. Um, can I not paste? There it is. So I'm curious if I can do x kernel 32 star. No. Um. What I really want to do is force like a module load. So here's all the threads and stuff on the system, which is really cool. Um. Uh. 
Isn't it 132k? It is, but but I I want like I want symbols for everything on the system. I really would like to dump the symbols for everything. Um, you fucked up the 042 port. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, you're telling me I made a mistake. You're telling me I made a mistake? Was that the only thing with a zero in it? Nothing else had a zero? I guess it would have become an X. Okay. NCR2? Um, is that 9x? That might actually be 9x. It is 9x. Okay, so the only thing with the zero in here is uh, the port. Just port. Port's the only thing with the zero. Okay. We fixed it. We fixed it. Um, okay. Yeah, you better be sorry, Nikito. Uh, moose. <laughs> I love the minimize. <laughs> Just put it away. Hide it for a minute. All right. Um. See, unless we want to write a parser for the, the symbol files, because I feel like there's information that's missing here. I feel like information is missing here. Raise your hand if you think there's information missing here. Me too. I totally agree with you. Um, so, what was the symbol we didn't have? NT user find. Okay. So, we didn't have an NT user find. So, we should hopefully have an NT user find in this. Uh, notepad kdlog.txt. Um, uh, NT user find. Okay. Oh, um, that's because it's in a different thing. Maybe we do have full symbols. I don't know. Uh... Okay, so let's go to... What were we using to dump symbols? Um... What was the tool? We used, like, some random fucking tool. Uh, uh, dump exam and uh, debug inspect. Oh, was that in VC? Uh, program files. Where's Visual Studio? Uh, MS Dev. It was in debug? Okay. Let's also see what we have in here. Uh, plist, middle, rc... Are you sure it wasn't in here? Um... I have dump bin. I don't know if we looked at, like, what we had in here. Um. No, I think we did dump in symbols. I think that's literally what we did. Um. NTLS, uh, system32, NTLS kernel.exe. Uh. Mm hmm. Hmm. Ah. Okay. Um. 
symbols exe entos kernel dot exe uh dot debug okay i think this is what we did yeah i think this is dumping all the info i'm not sure let's see uh win 32k dot dump uh this is dll or sys god damn it Uh, is it DLL? Mom! Is it dot drive? No, it's right there. Oh, I did dump. God damn it. Uh... <laughs> Okay, uh, findster, what was the magical thing we were looking for? NT user find. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think dump bin is probably correct then. Okay, um, um, shit. Yeah, I think that's truly dumping all the symbol info. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Batch, batch, batch for each file. All right, we're going to write some batch. So we wasted our time. You wasted our time, Denny. Uh, notepad. Uh, notepad dump sim dot bat. Um, four. What's this? Can I do this? Is this a thing? In star dot text, do echo v. Mm hmm. 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 Camera out of sync. What the fuck? OBS. Ah. <sighs> There we go. Now it's in sync. Yay. Just import PowerShell. Uh, four. Hmm. I don't, I don't think I've ever done anything complex in batch. Uh, four. Help four. More. Uh, walk it, walk the thing rooted there. Executing the for statement for each directory in the tree. Oh, that's for each directory. Um, for f. f is a file name set. Each of the file is opened, read, and processed before going on to... Okay. Um, hmm. What have you missed? Uh, not much yet. Uh, walks the directory tree. Executing the for statement in each directory of the tree. Ah, I see. So the command runs in the tree. I see. Okay. Okay. Oh, fuck you, Desu. Oh, you piece of shit. Ah. 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 Fuck! <laughs> oh my god. What do we have to do? We have to make... Uh... <sighs> we have to do like... NT... Oh my fucking god. Uh... Oh, fuck my butthole. Um... <laughs> uh <laughs> uh 
Okay. Okay, F and Fuzz. Okay, okay, all right, a print. Hello, world. Okay. <laughs> Tessie, you motherfucker. Ah! <laughs> oh, fuck! How do we list a directory? Oh, we gotta, we're gonna learn so much about writing, writing shellcode, but honestly, uh, this isn't, this is not, we are not losing progress by doing this because we're learning a little bit more about syscalls. We're learning a little bit about how things work. Um, and that's going to be really important for us to actually like, uh, to do things, to do things right. So we're going to, now we have to go to Entos kernel. We can't, we cannot load symbols, uh, because we have to do this in Rust now. Um, now there's a couple options. There's a couple options. One. We can write a parser in Rust on our host system that will parse those debug files, the, the symbols. Um, so let's go take a look at those files. Let's see if we can figure out what those are. Um, oh, here we go. Entos kernel debug. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, what do I see? I think I see a string table. Um, <laughs> Rust me, daddy. File. Uh, let's see if we can find information on this. Because if we can write our own parser, then that's just better. Um, and then, uh, otherwise, we'll write something in Rust that will go through all the directories and stuff. Um, I don't know if Desu gets a choice of which path we go. Um, uh, Windows DI debug uh, file formats. Um... Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck is this? Rust directory cr crawler sounds more fun and more NT-like. <sighs> uh, okay. So we got DI. MIPS, Entos, Kernel. Debug files use the same PE file format as executables? Is this a PE? Is this PE? Oh my god, it is. It's a PE without an MZ header. Is there code in here? I don't think there's code in here. Yeah, there's... Mm. I think the only non-MS impl for debug is an IDA. Replace with MZ and execute. Okay. Uh, so... Um, text data. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So you're, you're telling me if I take this, this thing, if I take this and I say, this is a PE and then I save it. Uh, okay. Well that, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Uh, and toss, uh, D. Okay, um, doesn't recognize. Uh, I also might have broken that by doing that, to be honest. Um, di. Okay. Uh, we'll remove entos kernel debug, and then we're gonna load up pinball debug. There we go. That's a good one. Xxd uh, vim dash. You can edit hex with vim. Yeah, but it sucks ass. Um. I don't think this allows you to, to actually save it, right? Pretty, I'm pretty sure you can't save it when you do this. Right, yeah, because it, it, yeah, you can do XXDR, yeah. 
But, um, anyways, uh, so, um, we've got DI, um, let's see, hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, debug PE file. It is possible to strip debug information from a PE file and store it in a debug. Uh, debug extension. Is it this? Separate in a debug extension. Okay. It contains the debug information, but the debug directories live in our data. Okay, not a good sign that we don't have our data. Uh, they reference debug information in the debug section. The debug directory structure is this, as follows. Size of data, okay, and then cough, I'm guessing. And then... Uh, uh, let's see. Look for this, debug format figures. What's this? Um. Ooh, okay. Microsoft Systems Journal, under the hood. Scoop on debug files. Code view information, FPO, debug directory section table, that, okay. Uh, it's a condensed thing of that. Um, if you translate that, you get DI, debug information. Okay, so that matches what we see. Um, then we have, uh, here's the, specifically the figures. Okay, we can load that. Oh, nice. Um, okay. DI, separate debug header. Okay. So it's this. DI flags, machine characteristics. Um, section alignment. Okay, let's see if that lines up. So DI, uh, I don't know if this is flags. Uh, I think that's machine. I think 166 is actually MIPS characteristics. Uh, time date stamp is probably that. Oh, yeah, check some. Okay, cool. Um, check if the struct saved it. Uh, check if the struct is saved itself in the ntos kernel dot, uh, exe. Um, probably is. Um, okay, debug type. See, winnant. All right, here's what we want. Um, public symbol 32. Record length, record type, symbol offset, type index, length prefix name. Uh, code view info. Uh, code view, I have quite, uh, okay. Symbol names, user defined types, and source line to address mappings. Ooh, is this code view then? <laughs> Holy shit, are we gonna write a parser for this that's gonna get us more information than we had from dump bin? Are we gonna get structure info? <sighs> All right, chat. So I know today is a fuzzing educational day, but um, this is a large part of fuzzing is uh, getting debug information and being able to look at stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, cargo new bin debugger. Uh, this is a cargo new bin debug parse. Okay. And then we can probably give this to uh, Binary Ninja or write a plugin for this, and then they're gonna be like, thanks, this is fucking useless. Um, can't wait, that's gonna be really cool. 
Um. <laughs> All right, let's get some music going. And we're going to start blasting. You ready? You ready, chat? Here we fucking go. Let's fucking go. Let's type. Let's type. We're going to type code so fast. All right. Uh, cargo run. Okay. Okay. All right. 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 Okay. 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 Uh, MS Dev. Uh, not that. Okay. All right. Now we can relax. Symbols. Let's look at uh Kimu. No. ISO. NTDLL dot DLL. Here. Okay? No. Dot debug. Okay, I don't have it. Uh, free support debug MIPS symbols DLL NTDLL uh, this is a file. Okay, so we'll do a uh, cab extract. Okay, all right. Oh, 1996. All right, that's definitely a debug info file. Uh... Okay, so that's a read only now, so we don't have to worry about breaking it on accident. All right. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, 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 use standard FS uh, file, use standard IO read buff reader. Let me screenshot the MD5. That was smart making it read only. Yeah, I do that a lot because I don't trust myself. Uh, let me FD is file open. Uh, NTDLL.debug. Okay. Um, all right. And then we did it. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, brrr, enum error. Drive debug. Uh, error types, uh, type result T is equal to standard results result T, uh, error, uh, wrapper type for, uh, result. Okay, uh, open standard IO error, okay, path buff. Uh, failed to open input file, struct, uh, debug file, uh, okay, impl debug file, um, fn load, uh, path, impl as ref path, this returns result, self, okay, debug file, uh, this is pub, this is pub, uh, windows, nt, uh, debug file parser, okay, use standard path, path, path buff, okay, and then we'll do a map error here, uh-huh, and then the, this is a path dot as ref, okay, Ah, yeah, as ref. Then we'll do a map error, and then we have an X, and that's going to become a new error, and that's going to be a error open path as ref dot uh, as path buff, and then X. Okay, and then debug file load. Uh, antidla.debug. This returns a result. 
And we have an okay. Uh-huh. Let debug is equal to this. Oh, fuck! Two path buff. Fuck! Damn, I thought I was gonna have that work out of the box. Embarrassing. Yikes! Not even close. Not even fucking close. <sighs> what crap code. Yeah. Yeah, it's Desi's fault. Open the file. Uh, parse uh, debug file at uh, path. Okay. Avoid Desu at all costs. All right. Uh, wrap it in a buffered reader. Let mute. Uh, reader is buff reader. New FD. Woo! Okay. Well, time to get a consume macro written. Um, where was the last place we wrote a consume macro? Uh, elf loader. How's everyone doing tonight? We're all doing fantastic. Okay, consume, uh, static stir, X is what? Standard IO error, uh, failed to consume a field from the file. Okay. Uh, consume reader u8 a header. Hey, nice. Use a uh, standard mem size of. Fuck yeah. Let header is equal to consume to header. Um,. If this is not equal to B uh, DI, return error, error, not debug info. Make sure it's a debug info file. Uh, uh, File was not a debug info file. Eh, I don't need a path buff for that. Hey! Okay, and then if I said PI, this should give an error. This should return an error. Yeah, not debug info. Fuck yeah. Okay, uh, next. Next. We got some flags. This is an image separate debug header. Um, it's happening. It is happening. We already did all the fuzzing we had to do. Now we actually have to be able to debug this. Huh? Debugging information. Stripped. Here's the header. Signature. Okay. Flags. Uh, flags. Machine. 
We did all the fuzzing we had to do. We found a bug. We just ran our fuzzer and it just found bugs. So now we have to debug them. Why is characteristic such a long fucking word? Thing left. I'm so sick of waiting. I don't. Uh, time, date, stamp. Uh, check some. Uh, image base. Uh, size of image. Okay, uh, number of sections. I'm glad I missed all the blue screens, yeah. Exported name size. Uh... Exported name size. Okay. Um, debug directory size. Uh, debug dir size. Section alignment. Okay, and then finally, uh, we have reserved. That's eight bytes. Rip. First try. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, we should be able to do some of uh, this bad boy. Okay, let's just print the, uh, let's print the, hmm, image base. Yep, that looks like an image base. Yeah, that 100% looks like an image base. Flags mask, uh... Okay. Um, all right, so then, um, let's print some of these out. Okay, so there are exported names. Um, <sighs> um, when you go on Twitch to learn more stuff than university classes, uh, this is gonna be tough. Um, Debug directory fields. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the format is yet. I really hope these are code view. Uh signature, blah blah blah. Following the separate debug header is an exact copy of the executable section table. This is just an array of image section header structures. Um, yeah, so number of sections. Five. Uh, so we want image section header with one structure for each code and data section, blah, 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 between information. Okay, let's do this. All right. So for blah in zero dot dot num sections. 
Read each image section header. And image he section headers are pretty easy. Uh, let name is equal to consume reader. Uh, this is a image size of short name. I think that's 16. Give me a lie. It's eight. Fuck! Uh, section name. Let uh, physical address or virtual size. It's going to be a virtual size. Uh, virtual size. Let, so basically right now I'm just going through this list. That's all I'm doing. Uh, this, let's make a structure. Uh, section header. Just so we can print this out better. Um, name. Uh, virtual size. Virtual address. Size, uh, raw data size. Uh... Raw data pointer. Uh, relocation pointer. Line num pointer. Um, num relux. Num. Uh, line num num line num. And we're going to say that these pointers are actually going to be pointer under. Okay. Okay. Uh, character. Characteristics. Fuck that word. Uh, let sh is section header. Name, consume, reader. Huh, we can do this. S, uh, u with, uh, dot star. Eh, colon, one or more spaces. Uh, capture that. We're going to replace that, uh, and then a dot star, and then we're going to capture that, and we'll replace it with a consume reader, uh, U8, quote this, comma. Fuck yeah. Um... Name, V size, vatter, raw data size. I honestly could have whacked this in here too, but whatever. Pointer raw data. Let's just do this. It's faster with the mouse. This is a mouse action for sure. Okay, 30. Uh, this is uh, 8. U32. 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 16, 16, 16. Uh, X, SH. Fuck. Uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, self. Nice! Okay, it's off. It's off. It's off. It's not nice. It's bad. It's really bad. Uh, there's probably padding here. Yeah, there's probably padding. Oh, characteristics is a U32. Um, which means that's going to throw this off. So there should be two words. Oh, actually, that keeps it aligned. That realigns it. Nice. Okay. Uh, that looks good. That's a dot. 
That's a dot. That's a dot. Fuck yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, Prince. Uh, standard string from UTF-8. SH dot name. All right. There we go. So relocations. All right, let's see what we have. Text. No relocations. We have a lot of line nums. We have a pointer to line nums. We have a raw data size, pointer to raw data. Um, it doesn't actually have the text section in here, does it? Why is section header strict defined in a for loop? Because it doesn't need to be defined outside of it yet. Data. Raw data size. Huh. Is the text section in here? Number of line numbers. That makes sense. There's line numbers for text, but not for data. None for this. Resources. Virtual size, virtual size, raw data size. Pointer line num. Okay. An array of those. Between the information in the debug section table and the image header, most debuggers have everything they, need, uh, they require without having to locate and read. Oh, between the header and the section table, that's everything you need to locate and read the executable file. Following the debug file header and section table is the debug directory. This consists of an array of image debug directory structures, which is the same layout used to describe the debug information in executable files. Some of the fields are meaningful, while some don't seem to be used. Okay. Um, so we have this. Okay. All right. Um Where are you reading this off screen? <laughs> I think image debug directory is actually defined. I think we'll be able to get this info. Yeah, this is defined. Okay. So then we have read each um, how do we know when this ends? Debug directory size. I see. Okay. Uh, debug dir size. Okay, so this is the size of the debug directory, 84. And we should be able to divide this by the size of a directory header. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 D words. Um, and let's, as F64, let's make sure this isn't float. Yeah, okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Anomaly Codex, for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Read each uh, debug uh, image debug directory. Okay, so then we'll do a struct uh, derive debug and uh, repr C. We can repr C this as well. Um, okay, uh, this is going to be image debug directory. 
I will just say debug directory. And then we have uh, characteristics. U32. Uh, time date stamp. Ma uh, major version. Minor version. Um, type. Size of data. Uh, adder raw data. Pointer raw data. Okay. Uh, four blah in zero to debug directory size divided by size of debug directory. Fuck yeah. Okay, um, all right, so then we have that, and now what we want to do is time and date when it was created, major and minor version, the type. Ooh! Ooh! File pointer to the debugging info, address to the debug info. So this is the only thing we care about, is this and this. This is the size, and this is the, the pointer to the raw data. That's, that's all we really give a shit about. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, now chatties. Yeah! What's cooler than finding bugs? Debugging! I said, what's cooler than finding bugs? Debugging! Okay, uh, mm-hmm. Taste of blood remains. Uh, one or more of those. Empty mattresses and fallen scar. Let's see if we can do this one shot. Fuck! Happiness and touch of me while I. Uh, how did I do that wrong? Oh, wait, I have to do one, two, one. Ho-ho! Is that a Pierce the Veil song? Uh, Pierce the Veil song, yeah. I'm low on the gas and need a jacket. No more eyes to see the sun, see the sun. Such a fucking good song. Uh, DD. Uh, that looks bad. That looks bad. Fuck. Um, following the debug file header and section table is the debug directory. That's ASCII! Mom! Maybe you forgot to consume some stuff? You forgot to consume some stuff! <laughs> table. Mama spot some bitch at the club. Kicked out of your hotel and lost your shoes. Well, fuck, what am I supposed to be impressed? Okay, uh, table, table, table. I think this is part of that entry. The 4-2. I think that's the characteristics. And then, it, and then we just got these. It's just like... <laughs> names. Names. Num sections. Exported name size. I bet exported name size. I bet that comes before. Let 
I will soon forget the color of your eyes and you'll forget mine. Uh, exported names is Vec O U eight for this. Fuck! I hate when I paste like that. Million ways to die. Um, reader dot read exact mute exported names. Uh, map error x. Uh. Error, consume, uh, exported names, X, question mark. Uh, read the exported names. This time for sure. N that was Pierce the Veil, I knew it, yeah. It's fucking good. Pierce the Veil is fantastic. Oh, that looks right. That fucking looks right. Woo! Woo! Forget. Um. I'm in blue eyes. Boys were saying. Why can't we just be friends? Same and throw the best punch. Oh, it's so fucking easy. It's padded out. Uh, it's padded out in the end. That makes sense. Um, if chunk dot len is equal to zero, continue. Um, some padding at the end can yield uh, empty strings. I've got so much to learn. Fuck yeah! Let's fucking go! Uh, let me names, uh, exported names. Raw. 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 Vec new. Exported names dot push. Uh, exported, uh, chunk. Standard stir from UTF-8. Chunk. Map error, uh, Error. Error. Exported name UTF-8. Uh, X. Uh, accumulate uh, UTF-8. Exported names. Okay. Uh, split exported. Uh, null terminated exported names. Uh, into UTF-8 Rust strings. Okay, uh, this is an exported name UTF-8 and I-32. It's not an I-32, but then this is going to tell me what it is. Uh, standard stir UTF-8 error. Uh, exported name was not valid UTF-8. Woo! <laughs> F 
fucking beautiful. All right. Does when NT4 even know about UTF-8? Fuck it. ASCII is UTF-8. Uh, debug. Uh, this is a... Sleepless nights and I might be holding on to time. Oh, that's a typo in MSDN documents. Nice. That I'm? That's in MSDN docs. Okay, how do I stop recording a macro? I accidentally hit the macro button. How do I stop doing that? Vim experts. Vim experts, please save me. Save me. Q. Okay. Woo! That was really scary. There's a beast in my heart and he won't let me. And you still love me. Die. All right. Uh Okay Even there. Dear. Oh, chat. This is some good code. Desu, Desu made us do this. If you don't like the content, Desu made us do this. Now, NudeTuber97 likes the content. Thank you so much for the Twitch Primarino. Or maybe he just likes the singing. I don't know. It's really hard to say. There's so many things that it could be. Avoid Desu at all costs. Try from U32. Uh... For debug type. Fn try from val u32 yields uh, results self uh, type error. I think I need to type error. I can't remember. Results debug. Uh, okay. Uh, debug type unknown. Yep. Type error is equal to result. Uh, error? Imagine Thanks, Desu. Yeah, exactly. Destroy the world. Desperate cries. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nine. Nice. It's so goddamn good. Now it God gonna change the world. I... Uh... 
Uh, turn. Error, error, invalid debug type. Um, uh, a debug type specified in a, uh, debug directory, uh, was invalid. Maybe I have ten right now, but I swear to God I'm gonna change the world. What's going on here? Enum! Hey! Cough, misc, and exception data! Called it? What did you call? What did you call? I don't think you need braces and map error. I think you need braces because your face. <laughs> what is he hugging? This is a sushi roll. <laughs> That struct should be enum? Well, I think you should be an enum. Why are you so rude, streamer? Okay, chat. All right, so now we have cough. <coughs> okay, uh, what's cough data? Search for me. What's cough data? Cough symbols header? Ah? Ah? Ooh? -woo? <laughs> Tonight. Dude, why do I fucking love writing code so much? <laughs> oh my god. Uh... Ooh -woo? I like how Moose Mounted Mage hangs out here even though he doesn't even program. Ten. Uh you do you see that? Is is it me or does that say a UTF eight null padded string? Yeah, that's what I thought, Desu bitch. My brain could be beautiful once again. I'm a loser. You're not a loser, Jangles. We love you. We love you, Moose Mounted Mage. Until we streamed over the sound. Every hour. Fuck! I missed one. That's some documentation right there, baby! More documentation than Desu's ever written in his life. <sighs> oh, come on, Clippy! Come on! Fuck you! 
After all we've done together? Oh, oh, you want is empty. Oh, oh, if it's empty. Okay. Oh, wah, I'm clippy. Jeez. Fucking clippy, dude. <laughs> Comes out of control. Clippy, fuck you. <laughs> Streamer angry me cry. <laughs> All right, chat. Holy fuck. How is this already a 300 line of code project? Uh, chat, can we get everyone here to blame Desu for this? Desu made us do it. Desu made us do it. Okay. Um. If... If matches dd dot uh twenty five lines of code two hundred and seventy five lines of documentation you mean thank are you thanking des des who is good Ban Desu? Yeah. Yeah. Avoid Desu at all costs. Desu is kind of the worst. Uh, if matches DD type with uh, b -b 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 deb uh, debug type cough? Okay. Yeah, we don't care about misc. Did I not save it? Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we need cough data. Uh, image cough symbols header. Okay. Uh, save current file location. Uh, this is going to be reader dot file position something like that god how do i not know that <sighs> is it file position typed out it probably is no no it's stream position Uh, stream position dot map error, uh, error seek, uh, seek cough. Okay. And then we'll do reader dot seek, seek from start, um, b -b 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 dd dot pointer raw data as u64, um, dot map error error seek cough seek to the cough data header okay seek cough standard io error uh failed to seek to the cough section uh, reader dot seek seek from start uh, start dot map error error seek cough uh, seek back to where we were ah shit Okay, so we should have all the debug directories still. Nice. And then we have the cough one. Nice. So now we're... Brrr, that's what we're doing to the file. We're going... Brrr, 
Wonder what Misk is? I have no idea. It'll be interesting to maybe uh, give that a give that a little peek and a prod and a poke. Holy shit. We have a lot of subs now. God damn. God damn. All right. Seek and you shall find. All right. So we have to parse out the uh, cough symbols header. I can't get over the fact that Gamoza doesn't use the dot character as the end of sentences and comments. Yeah, they're not sentences. They're statements. I actually got mad at someone once when I was, like, really tilted, and I got mad at someone for for putting dots and comments, and then and then they got... And then, and then they were like, you're fucking being ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, they're definitely right. I was being a piece of shit. Um... Okay. Oh. Fuck my ass. Um. Still number one gifter? Hell yeah, Helba. Got the champ here. Who ends their comments with a dot? Exactly. Communists. Communists do. Who comments their code? That's a very buff seagull thing to say. Um, okay. Uh, are your comments commented? <sighs> okay. All right, whoever was complaining about these not or being in scope, are you happy now? Are you happy now? Good. P can also start cough, but it's deprecated. Yeah, yeah, this is the stripped cough. Cardio Clippy deny missing comments. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Missing comment comment. All right, who made the name Cargo Clippy? Like, what What the... Uh, when was this created? August 31st? You're just... Come on, man. That's just rude. Cargo Clippy, what do you do? You run around to Rust streams and you troll them? <sighs> okay, um... No disrespecting Cargo Clippy. Fuck Cargo Clippy. Cargo Clippy tells me when I could be doing things better, and I don't like that. Uh, num symbols. LVA first symbol. Num line nums. Uh, LVA first line rva first code rva last code rva first data rva last data Wow? Did you just wow me? Number of line entries. Number... The virtual address of the first line number entry. The relative virtual address of the first byte of code. The... That. Okay. Okay. The RVA of the first byte of data. And the RVA of the last byte of data. Okay. Okay, um, let cough header is equal to cough header. I don't know, something like that. Cough symbol header. What did we name it? Whatever we named it, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, what are we doing today? We're writing a, a cough parser right now. Uh, good lines not containing a consume and delete them. Oops. Fuck! 
Go to lines not containing consume and delete them. Oh no, is that exceeding the line? Rip. Okay. Um. Uh, ch. Fuck. Cough symbols header? Uh, yep, and these are all U32s. Mm. Yeah! Num symbols? First symbol? Let's put these as hex. Yeah! LVA of the first line? LVA of the first code? LVA of the last code? RV of the first data, RV of the last day. That doesn't seem right. Last byte of data. Is that relative to this? Maybe relative to this? Hmm, no. Yeah, hmm. Okay. So then we have one of those. Um, cough. Off. Hmm. 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 How does this, how does this work? So I have num symbols, and then do I have a, a like a cough symbol? Uh, cough symbols header. Hmm. Hmm. Is this right? Symbol entry? The symbol table is probably the most complex parts of the cough object, because there's so many symbol types. Has entries for all symbols and meta symbols, including public, static, external, section, and debugging symbols. Okay. Flag to tell you if it's inlined. So you can optionally have an inline thing. I don't even know if this is the right thing, to be honest. Uh, cough symbol, table, 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 table. Oh, cough. Um. Uh-oh, 2038. 2038 problem. Let's see what OS Dev says, says about cough. Section header, yeah. Line number entries. Physical address, symbol index. Um, unusual to find it in anything other than text. Uh, they're for debugging to relate symbols and physical instruction addresses to source file line numbers. Because I want to get the source file line numbers and also add those as comments. Symbol table. Um, contains information on each symbol defined in this file. There will be symbols in the table for each function name, for each global, for each static, blah, blah, blah. And it's one of these bad boys. That. Um, if it's eight characters or few, otherwise it contains a pointer to the string table. Entry on the string table below. Okay. All right. Um, let's, uh... Yeah, the line number stuff is interesting to get out of the text section because having, like, line line information would be kind of cool as well. Number of line nums. First line. Okay. Um, so then I'm guessing that now that I have the header for sim in 0.ch dot dot, uh, num symbols, I'm guessing I'm just consuming these, right? Um, struct... Uh, derive debug struct 
symbol, um, name, u8 for 8, uh, value, u32, number, the section number, uh, the type, uh, that's a short, and then we have a class, and an aux, okay. Uh, yeah, and that is 32, so that should be aligned, so we should be good. Um, okay, so let symbol is equal to symbol P S this, uh, 32, 32, 16, 8, 8. Then this is a consume, uh, reader, uh, 8 name. Okay, and then we should be able to print this out. Uh, symbol. Uh, hex. Yeah, these look... Mm, I don't know. I don't know if these are right. Uh, 8, 32, 32. Yeah, these don't look right. Value, num. No, this isn't right. RVA first code. First line, first byte of code, for last byte of code, first byte of data, last byte of data. First line number entry, number of line number entries, number of symbols. I'm very confused now. Symbol table. String table. Names for any sections or symbols. RV is the relative virtual address? Yeah. Um... Symbol table and string table. Magic, number of sections. Machine. Um. Hmm. Do you have to look in the debug section? There is no debug section. How big is this debug directory? Um, this is tragic. Because I think this section is large, right? Let's Let's see how large this section is. Yeah, this section is massive, right? This is the cough one. It's big. It's very big. So it should have all of this information. Um, maybe it's some weird alignment thing. Name. Value. Oh, this is a short. Um. Okay, eight bytes. U thirty two. Short. Short. Character. Character. Okay, do I have to align this now? All right, let's see. Ooh, these look fine. I mean, there's a there's definitely a pattern here. Value, value, 
value, right? 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 Okay. Symbol name is stored there, otherwise it contains a pointer to the symbol table. Hmm. Well, there's definitely some pattern here, but I don't know if this is right. Type 4? Type 4 is, uh... Type 4. Type 4. Uh, this is an integer. Wow, so we have typing information. Num. This is the section number, so that's not right. This is probably the section number. Uh, actually, it looks like it's typically negative, actually. Um, so we're kind of looking for, like, negative 1, negative 2. And I'm not seeing that anywhere. I'm not really seeing an FF. So I don't know if this is right, then. Cough symbols header. Uh, oh, it can be greater than zero. Auxiliary. I'm gonna add some padding here. Uh, so... 32, 32, and then we need another 16, and that is now going to align us, right? Um, no, no, this honestly looks worse, yeah, because it's, Hmm. Whatever the structure is, it's definitely this size. Because we're seeing repetitions of this size. Alignment look better. Yeah, this alignment definitely is correct. Clearly, there's something repeating on this boundary. Um. Hmm. What's LVA for symbol? It's the address of the... Some shit. Virtual address of the first symbol. Cough header. Um... Are we fuzzing yet? We already fuzzed. Yep. Uh, U32, short, short, character, character. Okay, let's just do a head and 100. Let's see what the first one is. Yeah, it looks like there's kind of immediately data, which is... Hmm. Some values in cough symbols header seemed off. Um, I don't know. It looks fine to me. Right. Number of symbols. Uh, RVA of last symbol. The only one that really was off was last data, this one. But, like, yeah, I mean, let's see if they change. I can't imagine they changed that, but we can look at the, um... We can look at these headers, because it should be in here. Cough symbols. What is it? Cough image, image, uh, tag, image, cough, symbols header. Here we go. 
Okay, so this is the one that's literally on this system. Um, oh, there's actually more things in here, too. Uh, number of symbols. So all of these should be words. U32. Symbols, first symbol, number of line nums, first line, first byte, last byte, first byte, last byte. Right? Looks fine to me. Um... Separate debug header. Yep, this is the separate debug header that we parsed out at the very start. This is a separate debug header, right? Right, flags, machine characteristics, all of these. Um, should be stripped, blah, blah, blah. This is followed by zero or more image section headers, followed by zero or more debug directory structures. Right, and that's exactly what we're doing. Well, they don't they don't talk about the fact that there's a name structure there, but there's definitely a name structure there. Um because we're definitely finding the debug directory just fine. The latter structure in the image file contain the file offsets. Wait. Contain the latter structures and those in the image file contain the file offsets relative to the beginning of the debug file. Okay. Um so obviously this is debug directory and we're parsing that and that's coming through just fine, right? Um, so if this is a cough symbols header, um, I would expect that symbols are afterwards. Um, pointer to the cough symbol table, okay. So, yeah, this should start a symbol table. Oh, are these just symbol... Are these RVAs of symbols? Are these just symbols? Are these RVAs? I don't know. ASDF? I don't know what this is. These are definitely just U32s. They're all the same. Ah, maybe not. Two two EC. Hmm. So that looks like a, maybe it's just always a pointer. Are these pointer to strings? I have no idea. This also looks like a pointer. Each symbol in the symbol table can be followed by zero or more auxiliary entries, which provide further information. Num aux. Yeah, but like even this doesn't line up though, right? Like. I'm kind of wondering if the name is always a U32, if they did this. Um, and then that would be... Uh, like, here's what I'm seeing. 
I'm seeing a U16, then a U32. Right? We're just ballparking this based on what feels. Right? We're getting a feeling. Right? That looks like that. That looks like that. That looks like that. Uh, 22F4. Yeah, I could see this being another U32 now, to be honest. Not quite. Um, oh, that's another U16. Something else. Foo. Foop. Hmm, is it just that, 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 that? Is it just this, that, this, that? Yeah, I think it is. Is it just this? In which case... Yeah. Then it's just this. Okay, um, and then this... Is this the entry in the string table, maybe? Because these look pretty sequential. Is this the symbol, and this is the name? Because are there big gaps between these? No, not really. These are all... These are all spaced by four, right? I wouldn't really expect them to be spaced by four. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Could this be line numbers? Num line nums. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's what it is. It's address and line number. Uh, yeah, this is definitely line numbers. Ah, sick. Ah, line. Okay, um, this is adder. And line. All right, we got some big brains in chat today. Line. Line. Okay, so we have all the line numbers. And now we have number of symbols. And that should be this. Please, baby Jesus. Please, baby G. Is this going to be it, chat? Is this going to make sense? We don't handle aux yet, but uh, we don't really care yet. Uh, let's just assert aux is zero, maybe. Should probably print these before we assert that. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 X uh, symbol. That's definitely a symbol. And then aux. Aux is number of auxiliary entries. These each of these entries is the same length as the symbol table entry. Okay. For blah in zero dot dot uh symbol dot aux. Does this have to be recursive? This probably this probably has to be recursive, chat. I bet this has to be recursive. Yeah, let's see what, what is in file. Uh, that's a symbol. No, that's a string. Ox. Um. Ox. Each symbol is allowed to have additional data that follows it in the symbol table. This tells how many equivalent sim are used for aux entries. For most symbols, this is zero. 
A value of one allows up to sim e size bytes of auxiliary information for that table. A non exhaustive list of. Okay. Um. Hmm. That, that num is correct. That's negative two. So this is a debug symbol. So this is telling me this is the, um, the value of the symbol. This is the, uh, this is telling me it's a debug symbol. This is telling me that this is, uh, no symbol, uh, like null, I guess. This is telling me the class, 67 hex, uh, Python 67. It's telling me it's 103. This is a file name. Okay, and then auxiliary, number of auxiliary entries. How many equivalent sim ints are used? Equivalent sim ints. For most, this is zero. A value of one allows up to sim e size bytes of auxiliary information for that symbol. Non exhaustive list. Okay. Hmm. Because this looks pretty ASCII. Oh, auxiliary entries, they vary based on this. If it's a file, uh, then we have a file name. These three specify the file name. Just like the three fields that specify the symbol name. Uh. Okay. Um. Shit. <laughs> C file. A non exhaustive list based on these follows. C file. So we know that this is a file, a C file, and if it's a C file, and there's a file name, a number of zeros, and an offset. Object MIPS PCH header.s, yeah. I hate file formats where you have to know the size of a thing based on the type. Um, what do you think this is? Null terminated? Do you think this is... Do you think it's a null terminated string? Oh, is this telling me... Oh, interesting. No, I think I, I think I know what this is. I think I know what this is. Aux. Let bytes is equal to symbol dot aux. Times. Core. Uh, standard mem. Uh, size of. Symbol. It's literally that many bytes. And then I consume those bytes. This ensures that the alignment stays the same and everything else gets padded out. I'm pretty sure that's what this means. Uh... Let temp is vec OU8 bytes as U size. Uh, bytes as U size. And then we'll reader dot read exact mute temp unwrap. That's the way I interpreted it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we have these. Bam. 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 So now we don't have to care. So now we don't have to care about these sizes. Um, and that's okay. Um, Chinum symbols. Do you think Chinum symbols is the... Hmm. Uh, so do you think that that is uh, the size of it and number of symbol entries? And I need to consume those for these? Um... The number of symbols. Yeah, I'm curious if I have to advance that. Let mute ii is equal to zero. 
while ii is less than uh ch num symbols okay and we'll do ii plus equals one plus uh symbol dot aux as u size okay there we go something like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. That and then that's fucked. Zero or more auxiliary entries. Each of these entries is the same length as the symbol table entry. Oh, do I need to pad this out and also rep or see this? Um. Uh, okay. Do we think there's padding now? Eight. Uh, basically, we would need a 16 here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Hmm. Fuck, dude. Come on. Is this Ripper packed then? Holy fuck, it's Ripper packed. Okay, so we can simply not repper pack that because we're reading it packed. And then this is um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And there we go. And then we did it. We did it, chat. Cargo run. Okay, we have a bunch of zero entries, and that's because we probably need let mute i as zero, while i i is less than... The num symbols. Okay, and then we'll do uh, I I plus equals one plus symbol dot aux as u size. Okay, and then as u size here, and then this is hopefully going to end on a record. Okay, and then let's add one. Let's literally add one to that. Okay, and if we add one, yeah, we get garbage, right? This looks like garbage. This looks like an entry, this looks like an entry, and this looks like garbage, so I think we did that right then, because otherwise we wouldn't see garbage like that. Right now we're parsing debug symbols. All right, so now, um, okay, so I think if it starts with zero, 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 then that is a pointer, or maybe an index into the string table, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, read the aux data, okay, uh, advance to the next symbol. Okay, uh, oops, and then let's do uh, let symbol, uh, let name valid is equal to u32 from uh, if, if reader dot dot four, uh, or sorry, what am I doing? Uh, if symbol dot name dot dot four is equal to b zero 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 zero, um, name is pointer. Uh, check if the uh, if the symbol name is a pointer. Okay. Um. Oh. All right, and then we'll say uh, if name is pointer. Then, I uh, will just say this. 
Yeah, well, I think this is okay. Let pointer is equal to symbol dot name for dot dot try into dot unwrap. We know that succeeds, so we don't have to do anything about it. Uh, U32 from Ellie Bytes. Um, print x pointer. Okay, so these should be, uh, I think these are pointers. Yeah, these don't look like entries. I don't know if these are file pointers or not. I hope these aren't virtual addresses. I really hope these aren't virtual addresses. Please don't be virtual addresses. I don't think they will be. Is this an index in the string table then? Um, is that the same as the export name table? Oh uh, no, we part. No, we parse line nums. Oh, and then there's a string table. I see. So then after this, there should be a string table. Okay. Yep, this is definitely correct. Okay. For, and then what is this? Oh, let me guess. I derived this from the number of remaining bytes. Oh, oh, cool. 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 Oh, nice. And once again, it's a union of an 8-byte name. If it's 8 or fewer, zeros will be non-zero. Um, and name should be interpreted as a character array. Um... It is not null terminated, unless it's fewer than 8. If it is more than 8, the zeros field, the first four bytes, will be 0. In this case, the offset should be used as an offset value into the string table. String table offset. First four bytes of the string table are an integer, indicating the overall size of the string table. Each of the strings is null terminated. The section to... Okay. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, raise your hand if you're ready, chat. Raise your hand if you're ready. Lower your hand if you're not ready. Okay. We're ready? Sweet. Uh, let no, uh, string table size is equal to consume reader uh, u32 string table size. Okay. So this should be a reasonable number. Should be a reasonable number. Yeah, that looks like a reasonable number. Um, and that also doesn't look hexy, which is good. Right? Because if that looked if that looked ASCII like, then that would be a problem. Okay. So now we go uh, uh let I I uh let oh fuck yeah. Mm, fuck yeah. Uh mm-hmm. Beep. Okay, read the uh, string table. And this is going to be string table size. Uh, that. Uh, S exported names raw. String table raw. Okay, and then we have string table. Uh, string table. Okay, and then we have the string table. Uh, string uh, names. Strings. We'll just say strings. Uh, strings. Strings. String name. Uh, exported, uh, symbol table name. Uh, string table. Symbol table string name. Okay, um...
Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, chat. Let's go. Um. Let mute. Symbols is equal to vec new. Uh, storage for symbols. Okay, and then we'll do uh, symbols dot push. Uh, name is point uh, symbol. And then the uh, temp or aux. Uh, save the symbol aux. This is aux. Aux data here. Okay, string table, read the string table, split it. Uh, for symbol in symbols, this is for symbol aux. This is pro Python? Yeah, this is Python here. Doing some Python development. Uh, okay, mm hmm. Uh, parse the symbol. Okay, um. Parse all uh, symbol entries. Uh, parse line number. Table. Uh, parse uh, cough symbol header. Okay, then we got the line number table. Then we got storage for symbols. We accumulate all of the symbols here. We have a, we parse the string table. Then we accumulate all this shit, and then we're done. So. Dunzo, uh, symbol dot ox. Woo! Okay, so then we can do this. Uh, let name is equal to this, else symbol, uh, uh, names, strings, uh, pointer as you size. Uh, otherwise it is equal to symbol dot name. Uh, dot split n two null uh, split uh, where x is zero dot next dot unwrap um, uh, stir from standard stir from utf eight this bam bam print Name. Okay. Um, strings is already ref. Um. Okay. Uh, and then this is also an unwrap. What's going on here? This out of bounds. Offset. Offset into the string table. Oh, fuck. Um, fuck. Fuck. Is offset string table raw? Yeah. String table. Uh, string table dot pointer as use size dot dot split. Unwrap that shit. Unwrap that shit. Let's fucking go. Uh, we're, are we off by one? N the code? N code page? N C code page? O default char? 
a fault char. The fuck are we off by one? You're off by four? Oh, is it an offset including the sim string table size? Do you think that's included? Okay, read the string table. Um, add four to leave room for the uh, four byte uh, st uh, string table size. Seems to be factored in. Okay, yeah, these all look real. CSR, yeah, these look real. Woo! Okay, what do you think we have now? What do you think we want? Uh, um, um, okay, so if symbol dot, do we have a class? Yeah, if the class is equal to two, this is an external symbol. Okay, so this is an external symbol, and then that means that I think, uh, let's see what the symbol type is. Symbol dot type zero and zero is no symbol. Okay. Um, and then let's see E value. This is probably the address. I bet this is the address right here. Yeah, that looks like the address. Okay. Um, so, um, if it's, so external, and then we, here we have statics. Here's a, here's static symbols. Okay. So we have some static symbols. Honestly, not many. Um, um, That's cool. I think these are like labels for assembly. These are like assembly labels for a lot of these. Um, yeah, like these are assembly labels, which is really cool. Um, okay, uh, that's interesting. Um, what else? Uh, we also have register variables. Okay, none. So these are register variables. These are external definitions. Here are labels. Here's undefined labels. Here's members of structures. Yeah, I don't think we have structures. This is an automatic variable, none. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Print uh, symbol.class. Comment this out. Okay, so we're gonna get to see what we have. Uh, sort you. All right, so we have twos, which are external symbols. We have threes, which are private symbols. We have 103s, which are file names, and 105s, which are aliases. Okay, so if we look at 105, these are probably going to just be alternative, alternative names for things. Yeah, okay. 
Um, and then 103s. And let's go through and let's assert, if it's not equal to 103, let's assert that the symbol.aux is zero. I think 103 is the only thing that has aux, and fuck, that's not true. Really? 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 Cargo run. Uh, oops. Because I already print the class. A three. A static private symbol can have aux. Um. Oh, I think I care about the type. So let's print the symbol type. Okay, so this is saying this is a null type, and null types, um, this is a section symbol. And this will have the section length, the number of relocation entries, and the number of line numbers. Interesting. So that's a section symbol. Yeah, I think if there was type information, I think we would care about this aux data, but I don't think we do care about the aux data, right? And if we don't care about the aux data, then I think we're pretty much done here, right? Um, yeah, I think literally we can just say, like, if it's equal to, uh, if matches this, uh, two or five or, uh, two or three or, what was it? What were all the, all the things we had? Let's print this out again. Um... Okay, so we have a 2 of a 0 and a 32. A 32 is um long double, apparently. Okay, so 103 is a file name. 105 is an alias. So we want... Um, if matches... If the symbol class is a 2... Or a 3 or a 105. Um, if the class is a public symbol, private symbol, or an alias um, duplicate tag, then this. Okay. Public symbol, private symbol, or an alias. Okay. And then the only things we're missing are line numbers. And then line numbers, let's see how we if we can do these. Else if matches symbol class 103. And we're gonna refactor this code in a second. But this should be print. Oh, is this the address? I think this is the address. Yeah. Um, we didn't have line numbers before, so this could be pretty cool if we get these. If it's a 103. Um, honestly, these don't look like addresses. Um. They have string and aux. I see. F name, N zeros. Um, okay, let's just look at the aux for this. Shit. Oh, that's, yeah, that's got the whole string. That's a whole string. Null terminated. Uh, N zeros. Yeah, this just like looks like the strings are just straight in there. Um, so where's the fucking offset? Is it 10b6? Are these the offsets? Hmm. Hmm. 
Uh, let file name is equal to this. File name. Okay. Um... Looks like an index or offset. Is that an index into the line number table? Yes, because that's adder line. That's probably an index into this. Uh, is it a byte index? Mm, I don't think that's a byte index. Uh, it might be. Fuck. Uh, mm, 77 wouldn't make sense for this. Let's just try it. Uh, so adder line. Um, symbol dot value, and then this is gonna be uh, let mute mute line uh adders is vec new adder uh line adders dot push line. Okay. Uh, parse line information. Line adders. Come on. Come on. Um, as you say. Easiest shit in my life, dude. So fucking easy. Um... Ah, <sighs> line.num. Fuck. Fuck yeah. Uh, we don't want that to be debug. That's why you have quotes in there. All right. Okay. Let's see if this is LL div in NTDLL. Let's go to NTDLL. Let's go. Let's go find a base. Uh, OX seven seven F three one two three four plus hex this is this F div? Ah, uh, no, that doesn't look like F div. Uh, is it offset from text? Uh, that would be three one. Oh, that potentially could be. It could be. Let's go find. Let's go find a better one. Um. Let's find, hmm, what's heap? This should be heap related, I would guess. 153F8. 77F3, plus hex this. Um, so, you know what I think it is? I think we have to add... Uh, I think we have to add the LVA of the first line number entry. Thoughts? Virtual address of the first symbol. Virtual address of the first line number entry. 
Let's see if any of these are really fucking low. Honestly, not really. Okay, let's just, um... Uh... Let's just figure out what that is. What structure is that? CH? LVA first line, CH. Uh, CH, LVA first line. Okay, we're just gonna print it separately just so we can see what it is temporarily and then we'll add them if it looks sane. 20. Ooh. Ah, it doesn't really make sense. Ah, it doesn't really make sense. Hmm. I mean, we could add 20 to these. Let's go try and find... Actually, we have this information in, uh, NT symbols, NT deal all that text. Let's just, let's just now compare these. Um. PCH header source. Um. Obviously all of those. No type statics, file names. Uh, hmm. Uh, LDR in it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have lines, right? We definitely have lines. Um, here's LZ. Uh, actually, hmm. Registry, random. Error. Error.c. So there's three of these, three file refs. Um, oh, there are some plushy redemptions. Sorry about that. Party, uh, uh, party dip, you are going to be an apple pie. Sorry about that. Um, and then... Then we have a ice cream. This is gonna be for a godling. Hell yeah, little ice cream cone. Uh, looks like there's a base virtual address in the section header. Really? Where? How? What? How though? Um, what could we find here? It's a heap full of plushies. Adam, get buff. Hmm. Get buff. Here we go. Get buff. Um. Five five four. I don't see what would be a five five four here. Hmm. 
Like, this 554 should be in here. some Somewhere in this ballpark. So let's do a subtraction of these. Let's see if this is an even-ish number. Minus OX. Okay, so we got like this. Okay, uh... So, 77F7. Seven, seven. Uh, it's just like, that doesn't make sense. 77F7, <laughs> seven, 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 it's not even close to a section boundary. Like, right, it's just in the middle of nowhere. So what is that fucking number? Is that another lookup? Um... And let's print, let's print the rest of the aux, just in case. Okay, just in case something really stands out to us. Get buff. Yeah, that's just a string, and then, yeah, that's dot C, and then that's zero. So there's nothing else in the aux. Um, we already used the symbol value to look up the line number, or we're doing that wrong. Um, nah, I don't think so, because that line address, um, hmm. Uh, F7. <sighs> what the fuck is this? Ooh, <sighs> How do we do this? These three specify the file name, blah, blah, blah. Um, those IEMs, yeah, they're in your monitors. Um, dude, what the fuck, man? Um... Line number entries. Oh, this could be a symbol index. Will contain an en line number of zero. Uh, wait. The line number table will contain an entry with a line number of zero in which the L sim index will indicate the function name of the symbol in the symbol table. This will be followed by additional entries with incrementing line numbers that increments through the L pattern field. The byte, uh, what? So are there line number zeros? No. No. Um, hmm. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um. L patter. Um Hmm. 
That's not a physical address, is it? That's not a physical address. Um... I really hope that isn't a physical address, because this would really, 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 really suck. Um... XXD... NTDLL.debug... Vim dash, uh, seven five five four. Eight three oh oh thirty twenty three. Um, Eight three seven five five four. Eight three oh oh thirty twenty three. So we're looking for a twenty three. Uh no twenty threes. Okay, so maybe we're off by twenty. Uh I guess we would want to add an additional. Um I don't see a 23. Um, 83 would be the least significant. Uh, eight three. Hmm. This is a little spoopy. AC80. Is there an AC80? Eight eighty in Binja? What? What? Eight eighty and Benja. Eight three. Oh yeah. Uh, but that's not the right one. Um. Let's go. Uh, let's add twenty. Well, if you subtract twenty, we have a sixty. And there's no six C's. And if we add 20, uh, 44. Hmm. Hmm. Um, 75, 74. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, these are instructions. And that's a little spooped. Although, these zeros, I don't think these zeros are anywhere near here. That's a fuck ton of zeros, and I don't see a fuck ton of zeros anywhere. Um. Um. What could it be? Three. Um. We also have the other line number section, which is kind of interesting. We also have line. Um. Hmm. What was it? Um. So we also have num line num in section headers. I don't really know how that works. Um,
Unless I'm supposed to use the section header here, but that... Like, the raw data off this... Let's take a look at the section headers. We'll find something that works, I think. Uh, so, num line numbers. Uh, a lot. None. And none. And none. And none. Okay. So, let's say hypothetically, this is the raw address that we want to use. And then what if I add to that the raw address of the other thing? Um which is 7554. This gives me an address of 5DF54. Okay, so 5DF50. Uh, EC27. Um, there's a 27. Uh, Hmm. And maybe it's add 20. Ah, that's still a 27. And there's no 27s here. Um. I just don't get it, man. I mean, that would be that's that should be the same as if we take took that and we added it to the to the virtual address which is 1000 all right so that's 8554 um base of image plus the base plus the value Um, what? Plus base? This is a symbol. This isn't a, this isn't a line number. Um, base of image plus sector headers, section number minus one plus sim value. I don't think that's right. Um, should give you the address of the symbol, but the value is is indexed in the line addresses. Like, this is not a symbol. This is a, this is a, um, um, hmm. although, yeah, I don't think these line numbers are right either. Um, fuck. Um, okay, so if we were to just say, if we were to just say the value then. It's a little bit strange. Um, yeah, these just don't make sense, right? Th these are definitely not addresses. These are not offsets. I mean, I guess they... No. Yeah, I just really don't think these are offsets. Yeah, these are definitely not offsets. Um, I think those are indices into the uh, line address table, right? Um... So, what the fuck? Line table, okay, the cough header plus the LVA is actually, okay, so this LVA is the offset to the, to the line table. 
Um, okay. And that's actually really interesting because they, s I think that's 20 hex. Um, okay. Section header. I wonder if our line table is fucked. What are our first lines? Um, Oh, is this 20? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, that is 20. Okay, never mind. Makes sense. Um, hmm. Um, if that... Okay. Aux is equal to that. If files, current file index, line table offset is not equal to negative one. Source get. Hmm. Um. Line table offset. Storage class. So the class that we have is, um, what is the class here? We have a class file. Okay. So then that does cough add file. Uh, cough files. Cough add file. Um, file set, okay. Oh, um, shit. I think the symbol table, whoa. Um, I think the symbol table has files in it. And then I have to match on the files to then get the offset. Cause there's like uh there's like dot file things. Um hmm. Off files. Symbol table, string table. Huh. Um. So there's pointer line num. Dude, I have no fucking idea. Um, this is not not very fun. Um, image section header. Pointer to line numbers. File pointer to the beginning of the line number entries for the section. If there are no cough line numbers, this file is zero, or this value is zero. Okay. Um. Hmm. Um. The line number table correlates to the source file line numbers to the Correlate source file line numbers to the addresses of the code generated for a given line. In the call format, the line number information is stored separately from the symbolic name and type information, usually in the code section such as text, have line numbers. Um, so I think 
file based offset to the line number table. A line number table correlates source file line numbers to the addresses of the code generated for a given line. Okay. Okay, the fuck is that? What is the what is the table? What's the format of the table? Um Hmm. Okay. Um, fuck. Let's find what that is then, I guess. Um, hex pointer line num is 29865. Uh, oh, that's the number. Um, 479776. 75 to 20. Okay. So let's go to 75 to 20. Colon. Four seven nine seven seven six is seventy five to twenty. Um, um What the fuck? A file based offset. Um, Seventy-five two twenty. Nope. Arguably, that is the DLL name, but um. <sighs> what the fuck, dude? This is fucking stupid. I love how this file format's been around for like fucking 40 years and you can't find any reasonable documentation for it. That's really nice. Um, hmm. We don't even know if these are valid, to be honest. Let's check out these addresses. Um, okay, that's right. Uh, RTLP global tag keep. Yep, just literally add the very the very base of the file. And add it to seven FF three zero two three four. Right. Oops. Seven seven F three one two three four. Add that. That's our address. Um. It's just line numbers. Uh. Tech. Okay. These line numbers don't correspond to these, do they? One E A O O. One E B one H. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of an order, which is interesting. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Two one B. Two one B one four. Hmm. 
these text things don't correlate with these, do they? Hmm. User stub. So this is assembly. 22158. Hmm. This doesn't make sense. So there are how many of these lines? 318 of those, and then there's definitely not 318 of these. 210. Okay. Um, hmm. So I'm guessing that these are probably semi-sorted, maybe. I wonder if user stubs is supposed to be close to here. NT yield execution. Mm. Uh, I don't know, man. NT MIPS. Um, price actually is there. Okay, let's go. So this is convert C type. Um, this plus five five D three C. I don't get it, man. Let's find uh, let's find L shift if we can. Uh, we're not gonna find that. That's there's not gonna be a symbol for that. Um, well, we know that this is maybe nearby it. I would guess that this is nearby. Yeah, there's L L R shift. Okay, so this is L L R shift. Okay. So this is LL shift. Um, we're right in the ballpark. And okay. Um, okay. Seven E this text that here's LL Mall. Here we go. Let's go to this text address. Unless it's li you're literally supposed to put it at the most recent symbol, which is a little disgusting. A smidge disgusting. Um, yeah, but that wouldn't make sense for here because these should be different addresses. Like, why would those be at the same, the same? <sighs> Fuck. Um... Adders and line. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Why are symbol files always so fucking terrible? I I just don't really know what this could be. Line numbers. Structure size is not a multiple of four for this. Yep, that's fine. Um, okay. 
Each executable section has its own line number table. Each function in that sec section is numbered independently. With the start of the function, the line with the opening brace numbered as line one for that function. Each function in the line number table will have one entry where L N and O is zero. And the symbol table entry uh, for the function is L sim index. Okay. Let's print our fucking lines then. Uh, uh, so we would expect that they start with zero then? Something like that? Yep, they don't. Line colon zero doesn't exist. Okay. Um, to figure out absolute line numbers, you have to look in the single symbol table for the function, find the beginning of function symbol, the CFCN class, which we don't have. That's usually right after the function C extra C stat symbol, where the absolute line number for the function can be found. Um, yeah. So I don't think that's what how that works um hmm hmm <laughs> what the fuck Um, hmm. File header, that optional header. File name len zeros. I think this is slightly custom. I think this is slightly custom because this doesn't line up with anything in in uh, in public documentation. I mean, what are the odds of that? Pretty high. Um, so we have an 08x, and we have a symbol value. Okay, you know, what? fuck it. I'll print the whole symbol. Um, okay. Uh, Section header, all the lines. Uh, LL, SLL, LLs, LL, uh, where was it? Uh, LL.S, 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 dot S, hmm, LL.star S, this, hmm, dot star dot, uh, S or S. What the fuck was it? LLR shift. Okay. LL shift. Okay. Um. There's no aux information. Aux is just the null terminated string. The symbol is T E X T. Is that text? Um, the value is two two C six. The num is this is the section number. Fuck. Um do I want to add RVA first code? Uh, 
symbols header. Okay. Let's print this out too. Uh, ch. First code is 1,000. That's not it. What about 57,000? What about 56A? And that. LVA for symbol. Um. Yeah, that's uh, the table index, okay. Um, okay, so FA54 just doesn't make any sense. Uh, that makes no fucking sense. LL shift. C A C eight D D L L div That might be mole one B C Unless I'm off on the symbol table by twenty hex? No, that just sense what's this hex of this is 222 EC Uh. Hmm. There's just so many line infos here. Um, um, Three. Doesn't have line info for every basic block? Yeah, I would imagine so. This is three. KX mips. Um... Value is three. Which I interpret as 70, uh, this. 222F8. Why do we care about line info? Because it's, it's useful for, uh, for marking as comments. It's like still useful information. Um, I already have address to sim. Um, address to sim was easy. Uh, I had that like two hours ago. Um, this is fucking dumb, dude. I, I don't get it. Are they doing some custom shit? Like...
Mm. Hmm. Um. Yes, yeah, so that's dot file. Hmm. Um, string table, storage classes, file, yep. Negative two, reserved. Have the same num. Um, an enum used when line number is zero. Line number is never zero. Standard line number by giving a positive integer and the corresponding address in the object code. Record identifying a function, blah, blah, blah. Symbol table, okay. Let's look at this. Um, so this is a storage class, 103. Used by Microsoft Tools as well as traditional call format for the source file symbol record. The symbol is followed by an auxiliary records that by auxiliary records that name the file. Yep. So we have a name of the file. Um all right. So BF and EF files. It's just the symbol name itself should be dot file. It is. This is dot file. And then it's an ASCII string with the name of the source file padded with nulls, which is what we're observing. Okay. Um, okay, so... Um, uh, okay, so it's a file. The symbol... Uh, okay. So I have the file. Um... Short name, zeros offset. That's the name representation. Uh, value. A typical meaning is a relocatable address. Signed integer with a section. The type. Uh, number, of, okay. 20 is a function. Zero is not a function. Okay. Um, enumerated value representing storage class. Um, and number of aux symbols. Um, enumerated value representing the storage class. Yep, then we know the storage class. Okay, file. Oh, wait, what's this? Zero more auxiliary follow this. However, typically not more than one, uh, except for file records with long file names. Each auxiliary record is the same size as that, but they define that. Okay. Um... Negative two. Uh, this is a section number, and that's what we have. We have F. We have F E, which is negative two. The symbol provides general type or debugging information, but does not correspond to section. Microsoft Tools use this setting along with file records. That also lines up with what we observe. Um, used by Microsoft Tools as well as traditional call formats for the source file symbol record. The symbol is followed by auxiliary records that name the file. Okay, yep, and that makes sense. 
Uh, um, what's this? Function definitions. Uh, I don't think we have function definitions. Oh, it has... Okay. Marks... A symbol table record marks the beginning of a function definition if all of the following are true. It's an external storage class. A type value indicating a function, 20, and a section number greater than 0. A symbol table record that has a section number of 0 does not define function. Okay. In which case... Uh, is this the aux data? Okay. File offset for the first cough line number entry for the function. Or zero if none exists. File offset for the first line number entry. So do I just munch these? For the first line number entry. Um, so that's a function definition. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So we'll say if symbol.class is equal to 2 and symbol. Uh, uh, type is 20 and symbol dot section is greater than zero okay and then let's change section um num i think it's num yeah i think this is the section number i okay um and num is greater than zero then we'll print this okay so this is that I think this line number thing might actually be a backwards association, which is really interesting. I think you actually go from the line number table to this. Um, maybe. I don't know. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so let's see. All right, so these are all functions. We're only printing functions right now. Then uh, these should have uh, these should have a um, an aux data, and we'll print the aux data. So the aux data for these. Um, bup, 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 bup. Okay, here's the aux data, and there is none. Uh, if the class is 2, the type is 20, and the section number is greater than 0, then there should be aux data, and there isn't. Okay, cool, cool. So that's useless information. All right, nice, 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 nice. Okay, so that's just not true. Um... BF and EF symbols. These are uh, begin function and uh, end function. Um, files. It has a file name. Symbol name should be a file. And the auxiliary record uh, gives the name of this. Uh, doesn't tell you anything about what the actual record means in that context. Um, file name, yep, so it defines a file name, this is just object dump output, um, dot file, yep, it 
So I think that just defines the file name, is all, all it does. Um... Okay, um, Microsoft cough format. What's this one? Ah, this is 6.0 as well. Um. So, what the fuck? Um... So we have a file name definition, but maybe the file name definition doesn't uh, correlate with anything? I mean, what does this value possibly mean? What does that mean? Um... Okay. What are these? These aux records, okay, let's just print the whole fucking thing. Uh, print symbol. Okay, so you got a symbol here. This is, uh, this is text. We got a value. This is a uh, number one. And, uh, or sorry, this is a class three. And class three. Three, um, what's class three? This is a static, okay? Um, if the value is zero, then it represents a section name, okay? Class is not zero. So the value field specifies the offset and the symbol within the section. Um, would MIPS object don't work for this? I don't think it would work for cough, but maybe. I mean, somewhere out there, there's a tool. I mean, I can I can dump bin like we've dump binned it with uh, the correct tools for MIPS that come with the OS. Um, but that doesn't do shit. Um. Right, so you have the file definitions, and then you have these like static number of relocations, number of line nums. Right, and then you have a file definition, one AC, and it's like, what the fuck does that mean? Right, like, what does what's one AC? What's one AE? B0, B2, B4, B6. Is that the next one? Is that the address of the next one? That's weird. Um. So we start with this. That is a three, and then this. Why are these chained? See so a file name indices? Okay. 
Hmm. Cough that. There's cough three. And then one AA. I bet one AA is the next file name. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we figured that out. So, um, basically the value for a file is actually the, basically the, the offset for the next, for the next file name. Okay, so that literally doesn't tell me anything. So that means we need a different table to tell us more information. So we have a, a line with address table here, but I don't think that tells us anything. So it's a linked list, yeah. Uh, then we have line information here. So we have the addresses, and I'm pretty sure these addresses are probably correct. Um, but how do I now associate these with line, uh, with file names? So let's go take a look, see if there's anything there. Line. Cough line numbers, page 31. Um, Thirty-three? Where are the page numbers? Cough line numbers. They indicate the relationship between code and line numbers in source files. The cough line, the format for cough line numbers is similar to standard cough, but it's been extended to allow a single section to relate line numbers to multiple source files. It's an array of fixed length records, and it's an address and a line number. Um, the line number record then can either set that to that. Uh, do you see anything about file names here? Um, um, okay. Yeah, how do I get the name? How do I associate the fucking name with it? How? Um, unless this file name needs to be latched. This might be disgusting, but here's what I'm thinking. The file name comes first. You then save that as the current active file name. And then you, like, track the addresses of other symbols? <sighs> right? So, like, all of the addresses between, um... Yeah, you... Yeah, that's what I think it is! <sighs> yeah... What did I miss? Nothing. Sadness, sadness, and sorrow. Um... Okay, all this is, this is literally just going to define a file name. Okay. All right, so here we go. So, we define the source. Um, did we have nothing in between those? Really? Else, panic. And we know that, okay, so, static, yes. Wait, where the fuck are these?
Oh, yeah, there's nothing there. Okay. Uh, source, KX MIPS, and then these. And I think all of these addresses are in this file. And then apparently we just define this string like a billion times. Uh, cause it feels good, I guess. User stubs. Ooh. Ooh. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, another idea. Um, okay. How many file names do we have? Uh, let's just get rid of this. Uh, here's another thing. Shit. Ah, fuck off, dude. Come on. Fourteen ninety four file names. Okay, so that's definitely not the line number info. All right, here's here's another idea I have. Um, um, do I latch these, and then when a function, fucking you know. hell. Are all of these symbols in there? I don't know why it would spam user stubs a billion times. NT prop. And then this goes backwards because it's not sorted. Like, why would these repeat? Oh, um, are these multiple objects? Multiple functions? I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Makes no sense. 67, that's the class. The aux, that's used. The type doesn't matter. And the value, this is referring to the next one. Right? Yep, because this is three. And then this goes to 1AA. So, like... There's nothing in here. There's no more information in the file name. There's no information in here. Um... So 222EC, and that probably lines up with roughly the first line. Um, what is it called? KX MIPS. Okay, uh, 222EC, right? So we have a 222EC here, we have a 222EC here. Um, is this the line information for all the symbols? Are all of these, do all of these exist as a symbol? Maybe. Maybe all of these exist as a symbol. No, that's not true. Um, value represents the offset into the adder line array. That's what we thought, and it's not true. The value, the value is simply the next it is the, th this is the value. It's simply the next one. That's it. That's all it is. It's the next one. So like here where we have a gap, the value is 2389, which is literally 2389. It's just, it's just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's just a list. Okay, so I think what it is is basically, um, I think that I have to, I have to parse them in order. Um, and I think what it is, is this 222EC 
this exists, and then there's a 222F4. I think, basically, I want to go through this list. I want to be tracking the current line, and I want to forward every time I get a new symbol. Right? So here's what I'm gonna do. This is really fucking dumb, but I, I don't see any other way this is possible. Um... So we're gonna parse all the lines. And what we're gonna do is let mute cur line is equal to zero, right? Cur line is zero. And then what we'll do is we'll say we'll latch this file name. Um so this is for each symbol. For all the symbols. So the size of adder plus line is equal to the size of all symbols. Uh uh, uh, what? I mean, this should be like the last symbol. Is like a 463A0? Somewhere in that ballpark? Maybe not. Oh, well, it depends if there's line information for it, to be honest. Uh, let's see if there's anything in like the 59, the 59 range. Uh, space 59. Uh, adder space 59. Okay. So there's, uh, yeah. So there just aren't addresses for this. So the last things that we have like addresses for um, is this 463A0. And this probably exists. Or maybe this four si this one. Here we go. NLG return two. Okay. Um, 63A8. Yep. And we see that there's more shit here. So... This is like NLG return, whatever the fuck this is. Let's look at this. LZNT. Okay? So we have LZNT. Yep, and that's LZNT MIPS. And that will cause us to, like, lock in this file name. And then we'll start churning things out from this location. Right? And then we have 77F780. All of these. So, um, yeah, so I think this is stateful. I think this is stateful. So you have to basically save that off. Really cool. Wonderful format. Yeah, right? 222EC. So 222EC, this is after this. So we should assume that this is in KX MIPS. And this is line 43 of, or 43 hex of KX MIPS. Right? I don't see any documentation that seems to, to match what this actually is supposed to be. So we're going to go through all of our symbols. We're going to have a cur file is equal to none. This is going to be cur file is equal to some file name dot uh, to string. Um... Am I reading that? I actually think I can just do this. Okay, curve follows that. Yeah, I'm actually fine on lifetimes here. So that is uh, latch the file name. Okay, and then we're gonna go through these symbols.values, and then this is where it's really fucking hard. Um, so I should have a curve file. All right, so that's the current file. Um. Okay, never mind. Uh, two string. Ship it. Okay, uh, there we go. So these are all in KX MIPS. And then what we want to do is, I think, uh, we want to keep track of the current index, the current line index, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to forward that. And what we'll do is we'll say, uh, okay, so we have a symbol.value. So we'll say while, while, this is fucking disgusting. Um, while line adders, curline.adder is less than that or equal to the cur, uh, the symbol dot value. Then I think we're gonna do this. Print the cur file. 
and then this and cur line plus equals one. Uh, line adders cur line dot line. Uh, line adders cur line dot adder. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep, I don't like it, you don't like it, nobody likes it. There we go. It's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> right? Um... Mm, and these look fucked. Yep, those look pretty fucked. Um. Mhm. 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 So, stir. Uh, what was the like? There was one that we were following that was kind of interesting. Um, this get buff. Okay, that just doesn't even exist anymore. Um, that's interesting. Oh, it panicked. Well, that makes sense. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay, so... Um... So that's just seeking there forever. <laughs> Don't fucking get it. How do you associate these things? <sighs> this is fucking stupid. Like... I mean, maybe that information was, like, partially stripped out of here? Iterate over, uh, one adder plus line for every, uh, nope, that's definitely not right. Right? Because there's, uh, there's a 22EC at 22EC, and then there's a 22F4, and there's two different lines here, and then there's two different lines here, so that doesn't work, because there's more lines than there are, uh, addresses. So that's not it. So that's not it. Um, yep. 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 Um, yep. Yep. Is the line adder sorted? No, no, it's not. Nope, it goes backwards and forwards. So that's not sorted. <laughs> Woo! Woo! If it's not sorted, then while loop is wrong. Well, problem is there's really nothing that's telling me information about these <laughs> at this point. We know that there's twenty nine thousand eight hundred sixty five lines. Um. Um. Yep. Yep. KX MIPS. We have a bunch of text here. Uh, it looks like we went back. Um. Hmm. Line adder. Hmm. Oh, there's a 2B. Oh, there's a 2B F8. Or 2B 5 8. Do I need to, like, resynchronize them?
Because this is 2B58, and then this is 2B58. And that's some old symbol. And then we can't consume that. Uh, 978. Hmm. Um, while it's not equal to value, well, that's just going to loop forever and dump all of them. So that's not, that's not right. Um, is that working? So print out all the latch the latch the file name and then print out all line numbers until we reach the text. So this will stop once it's equal to uh hmm. This is gonna panic as well, of course. Um It's like interesting-ish. Um, because I think they go in the same order, right? I think, I think the lines go in the same order. Um, um, right. So there's like a, like, if we look for like a weird, let's look for a weird pattern. Because I think these, I think these tables are in the same order, right? And thus, there's there's information there. It'd be nice if there was like a a one to one. Okay, here we go. Let's look at this. Let's look at this transition here. Okay, so there's a transition from two two nine B C to four F seven seven four, and here we go. And and we see the exact same transition in the line numbers. We see 229BC transition to 4F774, right? And that just wouldn't happen if these were in different orders. Now, I don't know why ntpropb.c has, like, fucking everything in it. Um, but that's kind of interesting, right? And that's getting towards the end of the lines. But yeah, if we were to look for something else, if we were to look for this, we'll see that this will print out here. And we have a 2145C. We go through all of these, and then eventually we get to a 21600. Uh, so we hit a 21600, and then this is going to go until it's equal to that. I think we actually want this. Or while lines is not equal to that. Um, while lines is not equal to symbol value, uh, because we want this. Hmm. While it's not equal to that, um, go through each of them, and then once it's equal to this, then we stop. And I think that's okay. Maybe code only makes sense for functions. Yeah. Um, I mean, these aren't functions. This text is not functions. I think this is fine. I think this is correct. Although this prop B thing. I mean, that is a pretty big file. Um... Let's take a look at another one. Let's look at uh let's look at um entos kernel debug. Let's take a look at that one. Uh ca uh cab extract entos uh exe and entos kernel. Okay. Just copy that here, I guess. That's not a cab extract. Um
Okay. PCH header. So that's like a pre-compiled header. Um, okay. So let's take a look. Let's go to line 9F950. Here we go. 9F950, PCH header source. Precompiled header. That's a lot of precompiled header. Um. Hmm. Well, that doesn't make sense. Um. It also could be that some of these things are like stripped out. File should change each time the line count drops. That is an approach. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'll get rid of this. Cur line. So that algo is clearly not working for this. Cur file. Uh, we're just going to print file name. This is fucking terrible. <laughs> um... Oh, I'm printing lines as well. Uh, I don't care about lines. I'll just get rid of this. Okay. Um, all right. So here is the number of source files. There's 4,111 source files. Okay. And then what, what do we, what do we want to know? We want to know the number of decrementing lines. Let mute line is not zero. Okay. And then... If line dot line is less than line, uh, let me line dex is equal to zero. Uh, line dex plus equals one, uh, and then we'll just say line is equal to line dot line. Okay. So if it's less than the current line, which it will be at the very start, line dex is one, and this should, you know, print something or do something. And maybe we should print it. Uh, line dot line. Uh, uh, oh, hmm. Liney. This is just going to be called liney now. That's liney. All right. Um, okay. So then we can print that. It's going to be the very first thing we print. And this is, uh, line dex, this line dex. If this is close to 4,111... Yeah. Well, it's not that. Not even close. It's off by a factor of five. <laughs> so it's not that. Uh, hmm. So there's also the pointer to line number entries for the section. If there are no cough line numbers, this value is zero. So there are cough line. Yeah, I think this is for the section. Um, but that doesn't give us anything. Uh, first line number entry. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm really curious if they, like, partially strip these things out. That's what I'm wondering about, if they, like, strip this info partially. Be right back.
So, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know what this like fucked format is. Um I've been watching the chocolate milk dev videos on YouTube. Have learned a ridiculous amount, along with uh, what to look up to learn more. Just want to say thanks. Hell yeah, glad you're enjoying it. Um, dude, I don't get it. I I I don't get it. I don't get it. I, like nothing, nothing makes sense here. Like what? What else is there? What could there possibly be here that would give us info? Like, uh, um. Like these file names are just kind of stuffed in here and it makes really no sense. Ooh, that's a zero. Does that mean anything? Um... Has most of the stream been parsing this? Yep. Kinda, kinda sucks. Image dir. We also know the lengths of these sections, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> gotta go to sleep. Yeah, see you around. Yeah, this shouldn't be a hard problem. I kind of agree. Kind of agree. Yeah, I just don't really know how these would otherwise be indexed. Um, line nums. Oh, number of line nums two. Wait, what's this? Wait, is this telling me the number of line numbers to consume? Right here. Because these were all like two when we kind of guesstimated it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think we latched the file. Audio delayed? It probably is. Yep, that's just OBS doing OBS things. Pretty classic. Oh, that's nice. Okay, there we go. Uh huh. Mm, there we go. Now it's fixed. Um. Okay, I think that's what it is. You consume this many entries, these line num entries. Um, and these exist only on static, I guess. Um, okay. Um, section, line nums. Next function, E. Lines zero. Okay, so um, I think what I need to do, line numbers one A. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay, I think this kind of makes sense. It's still not great. Um, uh, lines, lines zero. Um, lines. Uh, one. Is that auxiliary? Yes, it is. 
Uh, one through nine. Okay, so we don't see any any lines for those. We're only seeing lines, and that would maybe make sense. They probably stripped lines in C. Like, they didn't include the lines for um, some of these things. I don't know. Um, or it's only these sections, but there's lines, lines... Uh, index that size C lines this next function ED. Um, LDR API line. Hmm. Okay, so let's see what the spec says again. Where was that? Is Did we tuck that somewhere? Did we hide that? It's this. Um, lines. Uh, symbol records to define the extent of a function. Um, okay. Uh, Microsoft loads. Oh, that's for function. We don't have any 101s. Do we? Do we have 101s? Um, what were the types that we had? We had 105s. Okay, so we have weak externals. Um, we have 103s, which are file names. And then we have uh, twos th and threes. So we've got twos and threes. So static. Let's see what uh, static. Um, Code view, wait, what's this? External static function and static? I don't think 103 is static. I think that's a typo. Um, okay. Static, uh, section definitions. Uh, the format follows the symbol table record that defines a section such that uh, record is a symbol name, like text is directive, has a storage class. This, okay. Number of line number entries in this section. All right. And then we also have... So, okay. Line. Did we figure out how there is not... Nope. Nope, we didn't. Um. Okay. Pointer to line number. File offset for the first cough line number entry for the function. Zero if none exists. Okay, um, LF, line number, um, BF and EF symbols, each of these symbols has a storage class function, and are we seeing 101s? No, we have no 101s, okay, so we don't have those, um, pointer to line number, these, Line number, I think it's just weak externals or these section uh, directives. So what we're gonna do is when we have a three, okay? Else if matches symbol.class three, okay? And we're gonna get rid of that here. Now we're gonna print these aux boys. Aux, all right. This time for sure, chat. This time for sure. Okay, this time for not sure. Uh, 434. Uh, lower hex isn't implemented for... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so some of them are empty. Uh, provides information the section referred to. And then the number of line numbers should be in here. So... This is the size of the section. This is the number of relocations. And this is the number of line numbers. So that's 10. Okay. So we have 21772. Okay. So we're going to say if aux.len, if aux is empty, if it's not empty, then we're going to say uh, l nose, let l nose is equal to u16 from le bytes of aux. Uh, I guess that is. Four to or six to eight. Uh, try into 
unwrap. Okay, so that's going to cast those bites. So now we have Elnos. All right, and I should technically be checking the size of the thing, but whatever, Rust will just panic if it fails. Okay, so there we have a bunch of line numbers in sections. So now what we should be able to do is sum those. Uh, let mute L nose is zero. Uh, L nose plus equals this as U64. And then at the very end, we're going to print L nose. And hopefully this fucking matches exactly to the digit. And it doesn't. Sick. Sick. How? How? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't fucking get it. It makes no sense. Like, they just don't add up. 3,000, a name, we got a value, let's uh, hex these, and then we'll be able to see the line nodes for these. Um, all right, so we have value this, 10 line numbers, and this is uh, entos kernel debug. Okay, hopefully I have that here as well. I do. Um file 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 file. Uh section four e data. Okay, line numbers. A. Yep, ten, then fourteen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ten, then fourteen. Yep, that makes sense. Um text. Text, 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 text. Anything useful in here? Not really. I've already looked at this a, a trillion times. Um, number of line nums. Is this the total number of line numbers in this area? Is that what it fucking is? Uh, I mean, I know this section and the length. And maybe what I could do is start at this address for this length and then poop them all out. But then there's like this entos kernel.c and lazy write. I just don't know why there's so many file names being defined. Lazy, lazy write, okay. Section. Um, line nums. Relocations in this area. So these are like... These are like all of the the text sections. This is basically telling me the bounds of text sections of object files, I think. Um uh, I don't know, maybe I search through the line numbers and up uh, and apply them for these regions. So I have a list of all the regions. I don't know, dude. I'm just grasping at straws at this point. Um 
so we know that the length of the section uh, is this. U32 is equal to O dot dot four. So uh, slen, this is the section length. Uh, okay, so now we can print the, uh, we can print boundaries, I guess. Um, so we can print the symbol dot value and the symbol dot value plus slen. Okay, so these gives, this gives us like the start and the, start and the end of certain sections. And I guess I could go and uh, latch in the current file name from here and say like curve file is some file name dot uh, to string and then let mute curve file is none and then here I can print the file uh, curve file okay um uh, print this okay so I have like the range so I print the the current file name and then the range that that maybe is applying to. So let's take a look. Let's see if this is vac b sup. Vac b sup. Uh, this plus. Oh, go to the top of the file. There we go. Eight zero six four seven one two three. This. Yes. And this is initialized vac b's. Okay. Um. Are these also VACBs though at these weird addresses? I feel like no. I feel like that wouldn't make sense. CC get virtual address if mapped. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, mm, it's MIPS. Are these all individual function boundaries? That'd be kind of cool if it is. Um, plus this. KI compute weight internal. Yeah. yeah. I think these are. I bet this ends at like 1C. Yeah, 1C. Hmm. Hmm. So we know the boundaries of functions, which is kind of interesting oh and that's uh and this theoretically is weight dot c yeah that makes sense and if we go to the end here we have these regions kx mips ll div yep so this is probably uh an ll div a long long div yeah it is okay um honestly this might be okay ish uh <laughs> Um, basically, here's what I'm thinking. Um, when I get this range, I'm going to say, for, this is terrible code. Do not do this. This is some bad coding. Uh, for line in, uh, I don't care about line decks anymore. Um, Line adders. For line in line adders. If line dot adder is greater than or equal to symbol dot value and line dot adder is less than symbol dot value plus len. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 08x. Uh, this is terrible. This is very unperf. Um, line.adder. Uh, file, cur file, dot unwrap. That could panic. And line dot line. Okay. So basically, if we have a static section and the line address is between, uh, if it's betwixt the, the base of this section 
the symbol and the end of this section, then print out the fucking line number. Uh, cur file, cur file, doesn't know the type, uh, Azra. Okay, this is going to be some, uh, very slow parsing. So we'll just do a release build now, because we're doing some very inefficient code. All right, here we go. All right, so is this lazy write? Does this look like lazy write? Uh, take this, add this to here. Yeah, lazy write scan. Okay, that looks reasonable. Um, okay, and then we can go to kind of the end of the kernel. Uh, LL div. Yeah, I think I think we did it. I think we did it. Um, here's X to A. All right, is this X to A? Um, yeah, I to A. Yep, X2A. They probably have multiple implementations. So this EB in here, this EB, which is a big jump, this is probably another I2A sort of thing. Um, yeah, and there's X2A. Yep, okay, um, sweet. So this is now giving me the addresses of all these things. Um... Cache sub, copy sup, hive map, uh, cmappy. Yeah, let's go take a look at, uh, let's go to some random thing. KE IPI dispatch interrupt. Let's take this and subtract it off from that. Okay, uh, Python hex that address minus the base, which is this. Uh, that gives me a 9FC. Okay, so we're going to see uh, 9FC009 uh, FC94. Uh, KX MIPS. Yeah, that could maybe be that. That sounds reasonable to me. 94, 98. Um, what about this? Semaphore object. Let's see if this is a semaphore object. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, I think we did it. <laughs> This is probably not the correct way to do this, um, but it does work. Um, okay, so then these also have, okay, these have lengths, and then symbols, those are static. Um, this is a function, and functions have sizes. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if there's situations where uh, well, I guess this is a static, so, um, is this a static? 91440? Yeah, MDL sup? Yep, and that's an MDL function. Okay, um, so I don't know if this is the right way to correlate these things, but I know that, uh, it's kind of working. So, MDL read... Okay, and then we should have, these are just external symbols, um, and external symbols, none of them have any aux data, um, which means the only thing that can have aux data is those, and boom, and good, and done, and we fucking did it. Um, get the section length. Uh, so here are all of the symbols. Um, 08x, so this is a symbol, and... Uh, a symbol, and we'll say this is a symbol, um, symbol value and name, and then this we're going to say is a line, okay, um, and then that's just latching the file name, and 105, what was 105? 105 was a weak external, mm, yeah, I don't think I care, uh, and then this we can say three as well. And then here we can say if aux is not empty, if symbol.class is equal to three and this uh, check if it's a static um, uh, class uh, with an aux. Okay. And then we get the section length. 
and then uh, find lines that uh, match this range. Okay. All right. So here we go. And bink. All right. So now we have S is a symbol. L is a line. So we should see that this should be the start of, uh, well, that's some text thing. There's going to be a lot of those texts. We could honestly ignore those and just not have those. Um, or we could only do those if it's a function or something. But there's some non-zero information there. And how long did that take to process? Do we even optimize this? Um, let's get rid of these prints. Um, I guess without this print, it doesn't do anything, but, uh, uh, dev null. Because I could actually sort the file names. Yeah, that took a really long time. Yeah, and that's all due to this. All that cost is there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad, I don't know. Eh, whatever. Do I care? Do I care? Ah, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it, chat. Um, let's go and do a, uh, line adders dot sort by key, uh, x, x dot zero, uh, adder. Um, sort by address. Okay. So now, uh, this takes 405. So let's say 400 milliseconds is how long it's currently taking. So hopefully we can cut that time down a bit. So now what we're going to do is uh, binary search. Okay, so uh, what we can do is um, let start is equal to uh, symbol.value. Um, get start and end RVA is for this. Uh, let end is equal to symbol dot. Oh, we'll just say start plus len. Um, uh, exclusive. And this is inclusive. Right? Okay. So now what we can do is we can search for all of the things that match that range. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do line adders dot binary search by x and then we'll search for um uh by key actually um so what we want to search for is a uh ba -ba -ba -ba. i want to search for a i want to search for start and i the key that i want to use for that is going to be uh line line.adder uh, search for uh, start in line adders okay and then this should give me something mm -hmm. that's gonna binary search for that line uh, okay and then we should hopefully have a, a couple of hits on there yeah, we do. Okay, okay. So, um, and then this gives okay containing the matching element. Um, and if there are multiple matches, uh, or yeah, yeah, any one can be returned. And then the index is chosen deterministically. Okay. Um, if the value is not found, then errors returned containing the index where a matching element could be inserted while maintaining sorted order. Okay, so index is equal to this, right? Um, index is equal to this, and this will be to the, uh, if it's less, it'll be to the left. If it's greater, it'll be to the right. Okay, so we should be able to do this. Um, I guess we just match this. Mm, match this. Uh, it's kind of gross. We're kind of indented in here pretty intensely right now. I uh, kind of don't like it. Okay, index is uh, index. And error index is an index. Okay, so this gives us the location to maintain sorted order, which will always be to the uh, left, except for the very end. And then we'll say uh, uh, for 
line in line adders dot get index dot dot okay um if the line dot adder is greater than end and break okay or if it's equal um break if we're past our uh, address so we get at this index which could potentially be before but that's okay we don't break out of this loop until the end and then here uh, i think we just do this right does that make sense no off by ones there nothing stupid uh, go through each line um, uh, from start uh, until we are out of bounds of end, right? So this would be sorted order. So if this is zero, then this would be index. This would give me index zero, which would give me maintain sorted order. I do dot get, um, and then we go through all of those. And if we exceed the end, then we don't color them. Okay, so this now is probably a bit faster. Um, uh, line adders dot get. Uh, if let sum line adders is equal to line adders dot get index dot dot, then uh, we do this. Mink. Okay, because that's failable. And line adders, so we slice it to maintain sorted order. And now this is hopefully faster than what we had before. Yeah, this is significantly faster. Okay, so now we're pretty much just bottlenecking on prints. Um, and this should be giving the same thing, cargo run, release, then bash, right? So we should be getting all the lazy writes. Uh, yep, yeah. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So we have everything sorted. We search for our start. This might be to the left of something, so the index might be lower. Uh, we get everything from that point on, and we only display it if the address is below end. So if it's greater than or equal to end, we break out of the loop and we don't actually print the line. Otherwise, we know that the. Otherwise, we know for sure that the. Um, the address is between the start and the end, right? Does that make sense? Um, okay. All right, so uh, now what I can do is I can figure out uh, what things are functions and stuff too, because um, that is relevant information. So we have statics and externals, and then I think these, uh, hex 20, um, uh, da, 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 da. type. Um, okay. Microsoft tools set this to 20 if it's a function. Okay. So what we can do, and this is for, uh, number representing type. They said it's a 20 for a function, z zero otherwise. Okay. So we should have um, uh, if symbol dot type is equal to x twenty, then else this. Okay. So this is going to be uh, function and symbol uh, not not a function. <laughs> uh, symbol uh, global, right? So if it's 20, then we're going to print it out as a function. Otherwise, we're going to print it out as a global. And then here we go. We should be able to tell, OK, these are globals, global, 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 right? Does that make sense? And then we can see that this is a global, this whatever this is, but this is a function. Um, and I think now we have every piece of information from this file. I don't think there's anything else we can extract from this from this file. Um, set file sizes. Yep, these are globals. Um, these are functions. So if we go here, this should be a reasonable address to have a function at. So let's take a look. Uh, purge cache se selection uh, section. Okay, let's see if we can define a function here. Um, 
Uh, make a function. Yeah, P. Okay, let's see if this is a function. Yeah, that's definitely code. 100% that's code. Uh, and then let's go to this one, and we'll check the negative side. We'll see that this, yeah, that's definitely not a function. All right. Isn't that fucking cool? So now we have all the functions, we have all the globals, and that makes sense because these are, this is like data. So we can see SG is a global, SF is a function, and L is a line. Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? Ah! Huh? <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, so now uh, what we need to do is, um, and this is, Parser for uh, debug, uh, uh, for for di debug info files. These uh, we specifically just parse the cough uh, data from them to get uh, globals, functions, and line numbers. Okay. Clippy, that's gonna complain about a bunch of shit. Prints, uh, these should be println's. Um, all right, so now we have a tool that we can use on our host, and we can use this to symbolize things uh, pretty well. Um, so let's go 369, fields never used, num. Okay, uh, let's go and start filling these things in. Let's pick up where we left off writing good code. So there are a couple things that we wrote that were pretty good code, and then we started to write some shittier code as we uh, ran. So this is going to be uh, parse the debug file. Publish the cargo, they'll love it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if anyone gives a shit about this. Uh, okay. Image section header. Read each section uh, thing here. And then I think what we might do is we might make a thing just for parsing cough. Um, so that we're not nested a billion times. Um, and then debug file, we're going to have uh, adder to line, btree map, uh, u32 to string. Um, so that's going to be a file name and a, a file... A, um, RVA to uh, mapping from RVA to file name comma line number, right? Mapping from RVA to uh, function name. Um, so functions, B tree map, uh, U32, a string, and then uh, mapping from, could it be cow instead? Yeah, it could be. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because we're we're reading we're reading the file as we read it, uh, so cow wouldn't actually get us anything here because the the file data is not doesn't live anywhere. Um, but yes, uh, to a uh, global name, uh, globals b tree map u thirty two to string. There we go. Okay, so now uh, we'll pull in b tree map uh, use standard. Collections, B tree map, okay. Adder to line functions and globals, okay. Um, all right, and, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, self parse cough, um, reader, okay. Uh, parse cough debug information. Okay, and then we'll do fn parse cough. Um, this will return a result. Um, okay. Uh, parse uh, cough information used internally. Um, Okay, and this is, let's see. Uh, reader is buff reader on a file, and offset is i32, or u64. Um, and then that's gonna be the pointer to the raw data. Think, and then we can tab this in twice. That's a big improvement. 
And then offset is going to be this. So this will be dd.pointer raw data as u64. Now this is offset. Um, okay, there we go. So save the current file location, seek to the cough data header. So this is, we go through, um, we read the exported names. Um, I don't know if we need exported names, to be honest. Uh, and these don't have addresses either, do they? So exported names don't have those. Um, so we're just gonna read exact that and just discard it. Um, uh, I guess we'll just seek current. Because, yeah, we don't care about these. We don't have the addresses. If we don't have addresses for them, we're not going to use that information. So, uh, skip over the exported names. And the exported names is the, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, exported name size. Okay. So, we're going to skip over exported name size. And the way that we'll do this is reader.seek. Um... Uh, seek from current this as i64, I think. Uh, dot map error error seek. Um, uh, skip exported names and that. Bam. Okay. And then this will be, uh, blah, blah. Skip exported names. Uh, failed to skip over exported names. Okay, skip exported names. All right, so that looks good. Um, wow, getting pretty close, actually. Um, so then this is going to return... Uh, 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 adder to line. Um, adder to line functions and globals is equal to this. Okay. Um, returns a tuple of uh, adder to line, uh, RVA to function, and RVA to global. Right? Okay. And then these we'll just put down here. And this is going to be a tuple B tree map of these things, and this is going to be a little gross and a little, a little, a little, a little, a little gross. It's just, it's just a little bit gross. Um. Uh, hmm. Uh, debug file. Okay, we're just going to do this actually. Oops. Um, parse cough. Um, updates, updates the, um, uh, self, uh, in place with the newly parsed information. Okay, parse cough, mute self. Um, okay, uh, and this is cough file offsets. Bam. Um, hmm. Yeah, we could just say uh, cough file offset is u64 uh, offset in the file where, uh, hmm, well, there can be multiple sections. Uh, there can be multiple cough sections, so we don't want to do that. Skip over exported names, read this shit. Um, uh, currently, we only handle cough, so if it's cough, then parse cough, and then we'll do this, and self, uh, self.parse cough. Or this is uh, ret.parsecough. This is OK ret. And then we'll do uh, uh, create return uh, self. So we'll do uh, let mute ret is self default. OK, so we do that. We do that on ret. We give it that address, which there can be multiple sections. So it will accumulate all of that information. We did need to parse this such that we could get the raw data. Um, that should be good. Then we get ret. We return that out. And this, okay. All right. Uh, 339. Uh, this is going to be cough file offset. Eh, we'll just say cough offset. 
All right, uh, 334. So at the end here, we just don't return okay. That's fine. And now we want this latched file name. Um, uh, string table. Do we use the string table for anything? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, get the string table. Uh, uh, get string table size. Read the string table and add four to leave room for the four byte string table size. Um, okay. Then we have symbols here, all those sorts of things. Okay, this code's starting to look passable. Um, self dot functions dot insert symbol dot value and name dot clone. Um, uh, self dot globals. And name dot to string. To string. Okay. Um, all right. And then we could actually reduce some of these allocations a bit by using like RCs. Um, but I think we're just not going to give a fuck. Um, Meet reader. Okay. Right, that explains the one billion errors. Meet reader. Bam. All right, 48. <sighs> Map temp here, 261, uh, 323 here, this. Uh, mutable reference to a reader. All right. 438. Um, this expression is immediately dereferenced. Okay, so this. Uh, adder deline not used. 3D5 is not used. Uh, 4D8 is not used. Um, 48 is that. So latch the file name. Um, the File name from aux data, uh, aux data um, uh, split at the null terminator. Um, and then next up, unwrap that can't fail, and then this UTF-8 that can fail, but we'll 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 come back to that in a minute. Um, and then save the current file name, uh, and then else return error error um, unknown. Uh, symbol class. Okay. And that will be symbol class. That way we can return an error unknown symbol class. Um, and this will be uh, U32, I think. I uh, got a symbol class that was unknown. Uh, and this is actually a U8, I think. Unknown symbol class. There we go. Uh, add our line. So print. So we have this print. That's the line number information. So here we'll do self dot adder to line dot insert line dot adder uh, and then we have a curve file as ref dot unwrap dot clone and then we have a line dot line. Okay, save the line information. I <sighs> can't infer curve file. Okay, we'll just say curve file is, we'll strongly type this. This is an option string. Uh, storage for the most recently observed uh, file class. <sighs> 487, found U16. Yep, we'll just say it as U32. I think U32 makes a bit more sense. All right, so uh, 388, that's num. Okay, so these are, uh, this is a symbol. Okay. Um, wow, and we use everything except for num. Sick. Okay, so this is a, um, uh, to do. Sick. I love copying and pasting from PDFs. Um, how long do I have to use Vim before I feel like I'm not completely hindering myself? Really not that long. I wouldn't even say I'm a Vim power user, but it didn't really take me too long to get to the state, I feel. I feel like I was able to do this pretty much right away. 
Um. Okay. All right, um, and this is a um, cough symbol uh, table entry. Okay. Parse the symbol, read the auxiliary data. Um, uh, there are 18 bytes, one uh, symbol worth uh, for each uh, aux specified. Um, this keeps the file always, uh, symbol aligned and actually makes parsing fairly easy. Okay, so, um, read the aux data, so we allocate that, um, here we can just do this. Symbol aux is use size, read exact, here we can say this is a consume issue, um, Map, error, error, consume. Uh, this is going to be an X. Uh, and then I think it's field first. So this is uh, aux data, uh, symbol aux data. Okay, good. Nice. And then a question mark on that. All right, so what we really want to do is we want to make sure we don't have any panics or unimplemented or any of those. We want to minimize unwraps. Um, and we want to minimize uh, expects, and I don't think we have any expects. We have a couple unwraps still. So the way that we're going to fix that is this one. Um, unwrap is fine. Unwrap is fine uh, because the uh, the size is constant. Okay, so we know that that's fine. We know that this is fine. Um, inside unwrap is fine. There's um, uh, splits always returns at least one iterated value. Okay, so then we can go here, and this one is not okay. Map error, error, um, uh, symbol name UTF. Okay, so bam, same thing here, symbol name UTF. Okay, and this is uh, UTF-8 error, symbol name UTF. Uh, symbol name had invalid UTF-8 character. Eh, encoding character. Okay, symbol, symbol name UTF-8. Okay, so that's going to convert it. Once again, unwrap is fine. Uh, once again, next will always return at least one. So we're still looking good. Uh, 43. Uh, to string, uh, don't want semis on that. Okay, in fact, we can just, uh, put a question mark on the outside here. And there we go, done. Okay, and now unwrap, we have another one here. Uh, unwrap is okay due to constant aux size. Um, uh, due to, uh, checked aux size, and then here we can say it, uh, symbol class is three and aux len is greater than uh, four, right? Or greater than or equal to four. <laughs> Semis in chat. <laughs> uh, okay, if the section length, so get the section length, get the start and the end, do a binary search to get that. Um, search through all these. Once again, save the line information. Uh, Okay, and this is if sum, uh, oh, here, we can just do this. Um, uh, and, uh, bup, 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 bup. Um, if so, we'll look at the section boundaries and try to find matching uh, source lines. Okay. 
Um, if the symbol class is three and the aux length is greater than or equal to four and the uh, curve file is sum. Okay. Um, uh, unwrap is fine since curve file uh, was checked to be a uh, sum. I could use an if let, but whatever. Uh, then unwraps here once again. Uh, this is going to be a map error. Um, error file name utf8. Okay. So, um, unwrap is fine due to, uh, next always having, uh, at least one, uh, return on splits. Okay. Um, think, and then we have a file name UTF-8, uh, file name U file, <laughs> file name UTF-8, uh, file name UTF-8, um, a source file name had an invalid UTF-8 character. Okay, so now that looks good. Cargo Clippy. Everything looks pretty good now. Um, how are we doing on allocations? So we do a shit ton here. Um, okay. Um, curve file. We do a decent amount there. Uh, two string. Do a couple there. Uh, a couple vectors here. Um, we need this line table. Uh, we need that symbol table. Uh, symbols. Do we have to do that in two passes? Yeah. Well, not necessarily, but this is cheaper than seeking around the file. So this is uh, now that we've parsed everything. Uh, um, uh, now that we've parsed, uh, read everything from the file from the file, uh, parse the uh, structures. Okay, so check if it's a pointer. If it's a pointer, then get that. Otherwise, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, so nice. All right, so unwraps. We have an unwrap there, that's fine. And unwrap here, that's fine. Unwrap here, that's fine. Here, it's fine. Here, it's verified that curve file is sum. And then here, um, that's also fine. There's no expects. There's nothing else. This looks pretty fucking good now. Um, how many places do we do derefs? Um, so that's another place where things can fail. Um, name. Uh, so that's fine. That's fine. Uh, those are guaranteed to be in bounds. This can be out of bounds. This string table. Um, because that's, that came from user input. Um, has the RFC that lets you do iflet instead of a normal if landed? Iflet chains? No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, so this we could do dot get. Um, I mean, we could just let that panic. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I really give too many shits. Uh, it's only one spot. Is it literally only one spot where we trust that? Okay, so we have to do this then. If it's only one place, uh, dot map x, and then this is x dot splits blah. Um. Okay. Um. Dot. Okay. Or error. Uh, symbol name oob. Bam. Uh, give me four. Okay. Uh, this. Nice. Nice. Symbol name oob. Um, uh, cough, uh, debug referenced out of bounds a string for a symbol name. Woo! Okay, so now we shouldn't have any panics either. Um, Gregor run release. Okay, this should run pretty fucking fast now. Uh, time, how long did it take? Uh, 100 millis to parse a 
uh, one meg file. That's fine. Uh, we could definitely cut that down with decreasing the number of times that we dupe those strings, but whatever. Okay, so parse the debug file, and then we'll just say, uh, uh, let args is equal to vec, uh, 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 standard env args dot collect into a vector. Uh, get arguments, and then, um, uh, if args dot len is, uh, is less than two, uh, print usage, um, debug parse, uh, symbol one, symbol two, dot, 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 uh, or debug file, file one dot debug, uh, dot, dot, dot. Um, okay, and this is, uh, return, okay, and this is, uh, print ln, all right, so now this should fail, okay, and then we'll say, uh, for file in args one dot dot, parse it, and dump the information about it, okay, done, okay, so this is gonna be file. Okay, debug parse ntdll and ntos kernel. Sweet. Sweet, so that's parsing both of those now, bofa. Uh, and now what we can do is for, um, uh, for rva uh, name in functions in debug functions, uh, debug.functions.err. Uh, print, uh, ln 08x, uh, yeah, uh, here we'll say this is a, uh, function. Okay, so rva and name, and then we'll have globals. Uh, that's g, and then for rva, uh, source line in... Uh, source, adder, adder to line. Um, then this will be source, line, line. Okay, oops. Um, and then this is a source. Uh, okay, print functions, print globals, and print source lines. Okay, and then what we can do is, uh, we could do this for each file, maybe. Um, uh, print, hmm, how do I want to do this? How do I, how do I want to handle this by the file? Um, the input file, I mean, if, if I can specify multiple files, then I kind of want a way to be able to tell that there's multiple files here. Um, hmm. Hmm. Dots. Hey, where do you see malware analysis and general reverse engineering in the future? Govrick as a reverse engineer is kind of boring, and I'm not sure if this field has a bright future as software engineering in general. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of uh, <laughs> that's kind of all reverse engineering. I'd say government reverse engineering is probably a lot more interesting than private reverse engineering. So, um, if that's your concern, um, that might make it pretty tough. <laughs> um, all right. So then we have those and yeah, um, find star dot debug, uh, Zarg's cargo run release. Nice. Okay. So, hmm. Trying to think how I want to do this. Um. Uh, I could just not print them to the screen, maybe. Um.
I could just create a text file or something for the symbols for that file. Eh? Maybe? Technically? Te technically I could? Um... Ari is very hard to find work outside of contractors. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to do find uh, home pleb nt uh, symbols. Uh, no, nt iso free uh, support debug. Uh, type f. Ooh. Yeah, since some of them are cabbed, ah, fuck it. We'll just, we'll just, yeah, we'll just do our thing. We'll just do our thing. Okay, um, all right. So this will print out the shit. All right, and then, uh, then we're good. Honestly, I might not even support multiple orgs then. We'll just do this. If, uh, if it's not equal to two, uh, file.debug, okay, and then, boop. Um, wait a minute. Uh, hmm. Ah, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Um, uh, mount, uh, up, 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 NT, ISOs, free, support, debug, uh, MIPS, no, symbols, debug, symbols, uh, MIPS, symbols, ah, uh, there we go, exe, uh, I don't know, ras man dot db under. Nice, not debug info, fantastic. Um, cab, file open cab, um, cabinet new cab file, um, Cabinet new. Okay, let's try this. Uh, debug file, open it, and then we're just gonna we're gonna try this temporarily. Okay. Mm, e cargo toml cab equals zero point three. Long stream today. Yes. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, now we have dependencies. Fucking rip. Um, cab cabinet. Cab file. Uh, this will just be FD. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll, we'll just open it again. We'll just open it again. Here we go. Here we go. Shh. Okay, rasman.debug. Um... So, I think what we'll do is, uh, this. Okay. Um. Open the file. Okay. Then, uh, attempt to parse as a cabinet file. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, 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 that. Uh, path. Uh, file. File. Open the file. Uh, path. New to path buff. Boop. Okay, then cabinet. Temp to parse as a cabinet file. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So if we do this, and then we give it ntdll.debug. 
Uh, that fails on the cabinet. Okay, so we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna say if let okay cabinet is equal to cabinet this, then uh, that. Okay, uh, go through uh, all files and folders. For folder and folder entries for file uh, files and folders. Okay, blop. All right, so if it's a cabinet file, then do that. Otherwise, that's just going to print that through. And then um, this one is going to... Um, otherwise... Uh, uh, we'll do this, okay? Um, hmm. Uh, okay. FN dump info P asref path yeah path impl as ref path um this 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 um dump information about path um to standard out okay results this okay bam all right now Otherwise, uh, didn't seem to be a cab uh, attempt to parse as a DI. Okay, and then we'll do dump info on path, and then this is gonna be uh, file this. Okay, so nice. File. Hmm. 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 F a file name. Uh, I thought file was fine, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh. Okay, I'm just stupid. Um, dump info. Oh, up there. Ah, 559. Yeah, here. Uh, path as ref. Okay. So obviously that doesn't even try to dump it, and then this does. Okay. So, um... Uh, or file one dot cab. Okay, so now we have rasman dot debug. Um, and let's see what our API is then. Uh, so we did cabinet, we did file entries. Um, file entries. This is an iterator over, uh, uh, what? Um, file entry. Um, uh, can I not read that? Interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. Read file, cabinet.read file. Um, uh, returns a reader over the decompressed data with a given name. Okay. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. I, I wish I could just uh, get file entry for a file name. Kind of wish that from a folder entry, uh, well, of a file entry, that I would be able to get... It'd be kind of cool if I could just go directly into the reader, but uh, I guess not. Um, yeah. Eh. Eh. Okay, so then we'll do, um, we'll load up, uh, file entry dot, file dot name, and this will be on cabinet dot read file, um, and then file dot name. Okay, and reader is equal to this. Ah. Huh? Uh, mute. 
Um, okay. Well, that's fucking annoying. That's really fucking annoying. Um, read file, file name. Well, that's just fucking dumb. Um, mm. 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 Fuck it. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, go, um, read. Uh, this is, uh, extract the files. And parse them. Woo! Woo! Okay, nice. Now, dump info file. Uh, impulse, impulse read. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Reader. Reader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Impulse. Ooh. Uh, buff reader. Bucket. Okay. Impulse read. And seek. And this is a reader. Mute. Reader. Okay, and then down here, same thing. Mutable reference to something that implements uh, read and seek. Okay, 603. Uh, buff reader new. File open this. Bup, bup. Dot map error x error uh, open um, file dot to path buff um, uh, path new dot to path buff x this there we go okay oh shit are we making progress or not um. Uh, we got a buff reader that we're making. We're wrapping that around a file. Uh, okay. Something like that. Um, 337. Uh, read and seek, yeah. Woo! Um, 551. Pull read and seek. I guess that's only when you have refs. All right, 554 um, on this. 599. Uh... Oh my God, if this doesn't implement seek, I'm fucked. Um, 599. Uh, map, error. Error extract cab. Bink. Okay. Extract cab U8. Uh, failed to extract a file from the cab. 
Okay. Oh, this is just standard IO. Error. Woo! Yes! We can just give it a fucking cab file now. Hell yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. fuck yeah, fuck yeah, that's pretty good. Um, but you're using a depth so unsub. Oh fuck you. <laughs> Go sip. <laughs> I like that sippy mode. That's really cute. Um, okay. So now this takes a reader, impl read and seek, and. Yeah, and then we create that reader here. And everything checked. Cargo Clippy. Cargo Clippy, are you happy? Are you happy, Clippy? Yeah, Clippy's happy. All right. Isn't that fucking cool? Isn't that fucking cool? Okay, so now I can say, uh, find this, type F, um, can you do extension? Bash extension. There's like a way of doing it, like find. I forget, I forget how you do it. Normally I just grep for it, but I know that there's better ways than just grepping for it. Um, okay, we're just gonna grep for it. Uh grep uh hmm. Is that right? Find filtered by multiple extensions. Uh, okay, so we can do this. Oh, this is this is very nice. Type F, s this, name, star, dot, debug. <laughs> or name, star, dot, db, under. Okay, and then this is for, this should be for everything. This should be, f yeah, this has PPC, this has MIPS, this has everything. Zargs, cargo run release. No! I'm really curious what this string is actually. Um, that failed. It's kind of crazy. If it's that fucking long. So we know the error is these two. So I could do string from that. Um, where do I push this? Name is equal. Oh, I can just do this. Uh, we'll do string from UTF UTF eight lossy. Okay. Um Okay. Um, we're just gonna relax that a little bit. 459. I uh, can't use that. That's fine. Okay. Um, we're just gonna comment these out so it goes fast. Um,. Holy shit. That parse everything? Every single one? No errors? Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck.
Fuck yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Let's fucking go. Wait, wait. The first one gave errors, I think. Shit. Um... Um, uh, let's do, let's do, um, Zargs, target, release, uh, debug, we're gonna do dash I, this. Well, debug type 7. Seven. Okay, well that's easy. I mean we don't parse that, so it doesn't matter. Um uh this. It's a this. Okay. Um seven. So six is a fix up. This is OMAP to source. Uh eight is a uh OMAP from source. Hmm. OMAP to source is seven. Uh, OMAP from a source. OMAP from source is an eight. Okay, cargo build release. Probably should build it. This time for sure. Come on, you bitch. It's gonna parse everything. Oh, so fucking easy. Look at that. Parse every goddamn file. <laughs> Fuck yeah. What about a checked build? This is so fucking cool! Oh, yeah. Oh! Oh, okay. Make sense. Get add cargo dot uh, star source get ignore rm star dot debug get yes. Get status get commits am initial commits. Uh, okay. GitHub. Again, making another fucking project. Uh, adder to line, or I guess that, yeah, I want like cough nm, uh, nm and adder to line, but for uh, cough files for uh, cough di uh, debug info cough files. Okay, mm, there you go. Think. Uh, boop, boop, boop. All right. Now this exists. Um, sp cargo dot uh, or e read me dot mb uh, uh, summary. Uh, this is a very simple tool that prints out uh, function global and uh, source file information and source line uh, information from uh, dot dbg uh, di uh, cough debug file okay um uh, example um cargo run release uh, uh, foo dot debug or foo dot uh, foo dot foo dot foo dot uh, uh, db um, okay, this can handle both, uh, di, uh, magic files, um, and, uh, cab, uh, cabinet files with, uh, di files inside of them. Okay, this, uh, this, this, okay, let's just do this on... Uh, cargo run, release, unplug this, check, support, debug, 
MIPS, uh, symbols, exe, and I don't know, pinball dot debug. Uh, I kind of want to do one that is uh, compressed. Oh, interesting. Are checked builds all uh, all not compressed? That would maybe make sense. MIPS. Um, ISO. Uh, support. Debug. MIPS. Uh, symbols. Exe. Pinball. Dot DB. Okay, that's a pretty big one. Um, LSL. What's a what's a tiny one? Write write dot db. X clip. Um. Really? Uh, second. Secondary. What? 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 Uh... What? Uh... Hello? Uh... Oh, selection... Ah, there we go. So there's primary. Okay, it's not that one. And there's secondary. Oh, it's not that one either, is it? No, what the fuck is the clipboard? Uh, selection. Clipboard? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. <sighs> um, format. This outputs uh, a format. Um, S adder uh, or F adder uh, function. Okay. Uh, G adder, uh, global and L, uh, S adder source colon line. Uh, get status, get add readme, get commit am readme, get push. There you go. All right. <laughs> there you go, chat. So now you got uh, now you got one of those. So now you can see what that's like. <sighs> it's fucking sweet. That's so fucking cool. That's so fucking cool, chat. <sighs> nice. Nice. Okay, uh, well, Desu put us on a long tangent. That was 600 lines of code? Holy fuck, dude. Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, cargo install path. All right, so now we can go and use this to our advantage. Um... <laughs> Okay, uh, let's open, uh, all right, what, what, do, what do people want to see? I guess not downloads, we want uh, NT, we want ISOs. Uh, what, what file do you want to open? What file do you want to open? Get it right, 200 lines of code, 400 lines of comments. Um... <laughs> All right, um, uh, oh, I'm gonna send this to someone quick too. Um, hmm, let's 
go find this. Uh, Pinball.debug. Yeah, we can do some pinball. We can do some pinball. Um, <sighs> okay, all right. Um pinball. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Yeah, we do have pinball.debug, don't we? Okay, so let's go open pinball then. Open uh pinball 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 mt pin uh asos pinball pinball okay now what i want to be able to do is uh mm, snippet editor okay wow that was bad um okay so now what we're going to do is import Sub process. <laughs> Woo! Uh, how do I make a file dialog? Is there a way to do that in, in Binjo? Like make a file di dialog really easily? Sub process p open. Um, uh, debug parse. And then uh, args. Uh, that, that. Uh, uh, SP is, oh, there's just, I can just do check output, right? Uh, print, uh, output. It's been a hot minute, okay? Uh, it's been a fucking long time. Relax, chat. Okay, debug parse, nice. Okay, that's in my path. Um, so we should be able to do, like, something like this, maybe. Um, moose. Uh, returned error, uh, and run, R run, uh, do you have to do this? Are the args separate? No, no, it's just that, okay. Uh, it's probably just failing because it's just actually failing, but it's just not giving me the output. Um, okay. All right, 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 all right. So then we should be able to give this home pleb nt iso pinball dot isos dot debug. Okay, uh, okay, cool. That's just bottlenecking on printing. Okay, and then this console's not very happy. Oh boy. I think we're gonna have to clear this. I think we're gonna have to clear this window. Come on, let me clear it. I think it's redrawing all the text every every frame or something. Ah, uh, yeah, we're just gonna kill it. <laughs> oh god, my whole system is fucked. Oh no. Okay. Uh, are we good now? We good? Hello? H top? We're fine? We don't have like a million megs of RAM? All right, cool. Uh... <sighs> Where is it? There it is. Pinball! Analyze. Boop, 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 Okay. Snippets, editor. Okay. Now this is, oh, what does check output give me? Um, I hate how whenever you search for Python things, you don't actually get the fucking docs first. Um, dot standard out. Can I do that? Let's just print len for now. Let's just be really nice and do this. Run. Bytes object. Ah, yes, the classic. Uh, 
decode 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 encode decode is it decode is it encode is it encode is encode is it decode is it this is it is it encode is it uh is it this dot decode as a decode UTF-8. I think it defaults to UTF-8. There we go. All right. Uh, let's try it. Okay. All right. Since they're separate lines, it seems to be okay. Clear log. There we go. Hey, we did it. Okay. All right. 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 For line in... Uh, Output dot la lines, 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 print line, something like that. Is that, is that how, uh, is that how Python works? No, no, it's iter lines, iter, uh, front lines. Mm. Can't see half the code panel? Well, I can't see half of your face. Uh, what IM do you use? These are some cheap shirts, but I have some, some new ones coming. Split line. All right, good. All right, so if line starts with, eh, fuck it. Um, Rex is re dot compile. Uh, we'll do uh s. Now I gotta read my documentation. Now I gotta read my fucking documentation that I wrote. Uh, where is that at? Uh, MIPS NT4, uh, that's MIPS, um, L a cough and M, okay, cool. Um, FGS, space, 0 through 9, A through F, 8, mm-hmm, and then dot star, okay, dollar and carrot, and that, and uh, print rex.match line. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, match is equal to this. Uh, if Mitch, if not Mitch, continue, write a nice lossy parser, uh, type is Mitch dot group one. Uh, wait, can I just do this? Um, type adder name. Can I do that? Can I, can I do that? No. How do I do this? Dot groups? Dot groups? Something like that? Ah? Huh? Binge of file picker, sweet. Thank you. Um, is this is this it? Is this is groups? Come on. Uh, match groups match. Uh, why is this so hard? Yeah, I have some custom IEMs coming soon. Um, ba -ba 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 match. Uh, that gives me a group, group, okay, what's a group object, grouping, 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 mm, groups, yeah, I think it's groups, Is it not groups, did I not run it, uh, um, what? Hmm. You aren't printing anything? Well, fuck you. <laughs> Woo! Uh, elif type is equal to G. 
lf type is equal to s function global source line uh adder equals int adder 16. okay uh print name print name print name all right okay we did it. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. So this is a nice strict parsing, which is exactly what you want. Um, all right. Now we need to get binge docs. Binge docs. Okay. I can close like a million things that I have open for no reason. Uh, open file name field. Okay, how do I do that? Um, uh, binary ninja dot interaction dot this. Okay, uh, this thoughts. Uh, needs a prompt. Okay, waffle cones. Um, hmm, um, hmm, 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 um, open file name field, uh, interaction handler? Um, uh, get file, open file name input. This, this is what I want, I think. This, uh, hello. And then I have an extension dot text. Okay, let's see if this happens. That is sick. Okay. Um. And then I'm guessing this just gives me what it what it gets back, right? So if I cancel, uh, save, n yeah, none. So when I cancel, I get none. Uh, when I select pinball.exe, I hopefully get pinball.exe. Nice. Um. Okay. I don't know how to use this extension thing. Extension, uh, oh, okay, um, star.py, semi, semi, star dot, uh, star dot text, star dot dbg. Let's try db under and dbg. Let's try this. Hmm. Okay, um, uh, hmm, 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 debug file, how do I do multiple, oh, uh, this, okay, star.db under, dbg, that, boom. Okay, I don't know why that doesn't apply right away. Optional file extension. Um, like by default, it doesn't seem to be using that filter, but then it does. Okay. Um, file name, uh, debug file is equal to this, debug file. OK, 
Okay. So then I should be able to... Oop, oop, oop. All right, and that should process that. Nice, and it did. Look at that. That is a unit. Oh, that's why it's so laggy, because that, because of the log. I, okay. All right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was getting slow because of the log being pretty filled in. All right, um, clear log. Okay. So debug parse debug file. Let me go through. Um, all right. Uh, and here we can say this. Uh, uh, debug files. Uh, cough debug files. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a little bit of this action, a little bit of this action. Cough debug files. This. This. Mm-hmm. Uh, unexpected indent. Uh, do I have to do this? Fuck this language. Cough debug files. Yes, and that filtered right away. Nice. Okay, um, if debug file, um, if debug file, this, there we go. So we got dbg and db under. So now we should be able to go into like check, uh, okay, free mips, uh, isos support, debug mips symbols, yeah. Yeah, there's the DB files. Fuck yeah. The filter works. Fuck yeah. Okay. All right, so we can look at a small one. This HP scan. Bam! And there's everything. There's fucking everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's so cool. That's so fucking cool. Okay, so this is prompt for debug file input. Um, this is uh, parse, uh, parse the debug file. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to apply symbols. Uh, and unfortunately I overwrote my snippet. Uh, so I don't remember what it is. Uh, so there's a couple things that we want to do. We want to make comments. Um, uh, so source line bv.set comments at um, adder name. So this sets a comment there. Thoughts. Um, Note that these are different from function level comments, which are specific to each function. Sets a comment for the binary view at the address here. Okay. Then on binary view, I think I can do a uh, create function. Create a. Uh, hmm. Oh, create user function. Add a new user function at the given thing. Okay. So now, uh, function, we want to explicitly create one here, bv.create function at adder. Um, okay, so that will actually create a function there, which is important, because we want to do that. Um, and then further, uh, define auto symbol, define user symbol. Um, uh, Find auto symbol. Um, add auto symbol. Add symbol. Define auto symbol. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't take an address. Define imported function. Uh, define type. Um. Uh. 
Define user Hmm. I think that's actually can you use it uh Fuck, I forget what it is. Get call these code refs. Get comment at, get function at, get functions by name. Um. Fuck. Damn it, chat. Why did we do this? Move function. Um. Okay, set comment at, so we're doing that. Set comment at that. Um, hmm. Mm. Add function. Do I want to add user function or add function? Add a new user function of the given platform at virtual address that. Um, yeah, I don't think it matters too much. Anyways, what the fuck is it? Define, define, oh. Is it define user symbol? I think it's define user symbol because you create a symbol. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, BV define user symbol. Um, and then you give it a fucking symbol. That's what it is. I was, yeah, um, and then this is a function symbol, and the address is adder, okay? And then this is going to be define user symbol. I'm guessing user symbol is fine. Um, define user symbol, symbol, and then we have a data symbol. It also could be an import or something. Okay, so theoretically, let's look through this, and we should have some things that are a little fucked, or things that should be functions and aren't. So ideally, we find something that Binja did not recognize as a function for some reason, um, because we're also telling Binja, um, we're also telling Binja where functions are, um, and that's pretty big, right? So like this. Mm, that's hard to say. Um, I want to find a function that's not defined. Honestly, this is there's probably functions in here. So let's uh, let's give this a whirl. Run. Uh, we need to give it a DLL. Let's make sure this is the right one. Uh, free, and then uh, exe, and we'll say pinball .exe. Oh, it's not ready yet. Um, I need the base. Uh, what's the base? What's the base address? Um. Python console bv.base bv.start hex bv.start is that is that it is that literally it yeah uh hex uh bv.start plus this right okay run uh pinball exe so we got pinball.exe open Uh, function symbols not defined. Okay. Uh, so what is this? A symbol type? Uh, um, yeah, I guess symbol type dot. This time for sure, chat. This time for sure. Run. Pinball. Open. Fuck. Uh, required short name? What short name? Oh, probably the name of it. Um, you know, the little things. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that definitely, that definitely analyzed some more stuff. That definitely defined some new functions. Fuck yeah. Oh, look at this! 
Look at this! Ooh, that got named text. Shit. Um, I think we want to, like, deprio those. Maybe? Um, hmm. These are probably all gonna be named text, unfortunately. Um, yeah, pretty much everything got named text. Uh, yeah, so I think one of the ways that I can solve that problem is by going into here, and maybe I just won't omit these. Symbol class three. Maybe I just won't do that. Um, we'll only do, uh, honestly, just two. If it's a public symbol. Else if matches symbol dot class three. Uh, what's up? Not too much. How are you doing, Fox McCloud? Text is my favorite function. Damn it, chat. Uh, okay, then here we just check this. And then we have else matches this, else if matches symbol class 105, just ignore it. Okay, here we go. This time for sure. Uh, yeah, hopefully we didn't fucking ruin it. Uh, this pinball, go. All right, so now we should... Okay, there we go. Those are now names. Um, so, how do I demangle? Let's see if there's a way to demangle. What are you working on? We're working on a... Um, well, right now we're working on a way of uh, viewing old, uh, old Windows NT files with debug info. So we just wrote a parser for debug info, and now we're just importing it into a tool so we can look at the disassembly. Demangle. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Uh, wow. Can I seriously just do this? Um, find a view. Um, so let's try this. Um, let's try it in the Python console. Enter ninja dot demangle dot demangle ms. Um, demangle ms. Okay, so there's one required argument, which is the architecture. Um, and how do I get the current architecture? Probably just like bv dot arc. I'm guessing. Fuck yeah. Um. Uh, print bb.arc. Nice. All right. Yeah, I'm guessing that's working. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Come on. Please. Please. Yes. 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 Wow. That's extracting type information from that, too. Ooh. 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 Okay. Um... All right, so what do I do with that? Um, symbol, full name, symbol full name. Um, what do you think is the correct way to do this? Because that's the name of the thing. These are the arguments. Um, how do I apply that? Um, options, whether to simplify that, get the type, uh-huh, and, hmm, binary view, I don't know what this demangle.binary view is. Um, damn it. 
Uh, how would I do this? How would I do this? Um, shit. Forgiven raw mangled name. Get symbol by raw name. Um, I want like hmm. One of a way of setting that raw name. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know how binja. Uh, this has a type in it. No. There's a raw name. Um, try this. Um, demangle name. Okay, and then uh, this returns, I think, the mangle type and mangle name. Is equal to this, so we could say that this is mangle name, and I should hopefully make things a little bit better. Um, clear log, uh, run this. What's going on here? Uh, list has no encode, mangle name. Uh, oh, uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, return type tuple. It returns type demangled name. Um, yep. Yep. So why is that a problem? Why is that a problem? 22, this. Uh, okay, let's print mangle name. The fuck is that? What what is this that is not working? Yeah, those look like names. Nudge. Hmm. Hmm. Uh if mangle type is none, then um what we're gonna do is uh, set mangle name is equal to name. Okay, so we'll shadow that, and then this will be the mangled name or the demangled name or the original name, depending on my mood. Okay, that's just what the fuck. Run this. Create symbol. List has no attribute. Okay. Um, let's just get the zeroth name then. Maybe I don't know. If Mangle name. Uh, how do you do type of? Uh, uh, Python. If type uh, mangle name is. Uh, how do I do this? How do I compare it? How do I compare it? If it's int or if it's string, stir. Um. If it's not equal to stir, print mangle name. Here we go. Let's go. Nudge. Okay. So in that situation, I think what we want to do is if this is equal to list, uh, we'll just say mangle name is equal to mangle name zero. There we go. Bada fucking bing. There we go. Bug hut controller, nice. So we should be able to run this and we won't get any log output because this should just succeed. So now we have slightly better naming. Now uh, what we can do is try to add the raw name and see if that helps Binja do anything. Um, and I don't know if it will. So symbol, uh, so full name and raw name. I think we want raw name. Uh, raw name is name. 
this. Is this going to change anything? No. Oh, yeah, I think it's running. Is it still running? Um, hmm. Hmm. Run this. So, hmm. Um, so, I really would like to get that typing information. Um, so let's see if I can apply that. Let's see if, uh, if mangled type, uh, print mangled type mangle name, right? I really want to see what that is, what this could possibly be. Uh, render many balls. Okay, let's check out render many balls. Um. Wait, is that? Um. This isn't everything, is it? Is it getting stuck? Um. I feel like it's stuck. Um, mangle type. What? Oh, that's on mangle name. I don't, uh, wait, no. What? What? Uh, type name. Okay, mangle type name. Here we go. Um... Oh, are there just really not that many things? Uh, clear log, run, this. Uh, are there really just that few things? I thought there were a shit ton. I thought there were a shit ton of, of things. Really? Really? Okay, I'm going to temporarily uh, bypass the name mangling thing and see if we have more shit showing up than we expect. So I think most most of this stuff is C++, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's really not that much stuff. Oh, collision T flag spinner. Oh, maybe they're just scrolling off the screen. I don't know. Hmm. Um. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, there's a bug hunt controller. Let's try this T flag spinner. This. Or whatever this is. Yeah, T flag spinner. Um, yeah. It's a function that takes in a T ball, a vector type, a vector type of float in the class. Uh, we definitely want to apply that information. You're filtering statics? What? How? Where? What? What? How? Huh? Hello? Um... That's the type. Uh, okay, let's see if there's a, like a set type. Um, in Rust code, yeah, in your pro yeah, I know that. Um, like all all of these symbols are coming from that, right? That that's that's fine. Um, so if we do mangle name, right? If the name changes. I can tell you it's it's in the database. For I want to be uh, uh, filtering those because they're not actually statics. It's it's kind of complex, but um, I don't think they're actually statics. So anyways, we have those, and what we want to do is we want to set the typing of this stuff. Um, so, um. Yeah, the question is, how do I set a type? Define type? Nope, that creates one. Get data rest for type. Um, hmm. So there's the symbol type, but we don't want that. Um, what's binding? 
Hmm. Shouldn't you join the mangle name instead of uh only getting the first name? I don't I don't know if it matters. I don't think it does. Um uh da, 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 da. I think that's just like alternative names. I don't fucking know. Uh D Mangle qualified name. So I want binary view. And somehow I have to way have to have a way of typing something. So hmm. Maybe I need to get the function. So function. Um like type. Uh Let's see. Hmm. How would I set a type? How would I set a type? Get type tokens. Um. Set user type? What do you think this does? Um, so I need a way of getting the function. Uh, get function, get, okay. Um, get function at, um, type dot function. Process msvc func type dot function. Func dot function type. Did they just set function type? Well, let's do this. Get function at two two nine fc seven four. Right. Um. Bv get function at that. So we have a function there. Okay. And now what we want to do is uh function type. Okay, and then can I set this equal to something? Can I set this equal to um, this demangle uh, zero? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, uh, sweet. So then uh, what we want to do is just set the function at that address um wow okay that's fucking cool all right so let's go to here and we'll say uh create user function there uh get the function at adder set the function type equal to mangle type uh if mangle type then do this right so apply the typing from the mangling and then use the mangled name for those functions this. Did that work? Do we have parameters for these now? No. Yeah, I don't... I don't quite understand why uh, these aren't all showing up, or if it's getting stuck or what. I mean, now everything's kind of frozen. Um, hmm. I'm just going to say... If adder is not equal to uh, ox229f98c, uh, continue, right? So we're only going to be working with this one function, this one individual function, right? And what we should be able to do is print these demangling things. Print mangle type mangle name, right? And indeed, we have an int and a float, right? So we have that information. So, um, uh, so if this is not equal to none, is that the problem? Like, uh, print mangle type not equal to none. What? 
run this. Uh, true. If it's true, is it because we're applying, uh, is it because of the source line there? No, because we're only setting a comment there. Um, get function at adder, function type is equal to mangle type. Why would that not work? Am I crazy? What if I do it unconditionally? What the fuck? Uh... What? Um, print name. Okay. That's the name, pop up target, and it sh it's fucking demangling it. Are you actually getting a function? Let me see. Yes. Yes, I am. I don't know if create user function is just like returning a new thing or something. Return type none. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't get it. Get function at that. Yeah. Get function at that. Clear log. Run. This. Yep, that's the type we want to set it. Um, and then this is the function. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. Um, weird. So we can say uh, 229F98C demangle ms. And then uh, we're gonna temporarily turn off demangling just so I see those raw names. Um, save run. So this is the name. So if I take this, zero, bam. Um, oops. Oh, mm, no. Uh, oh, bv.arc. Yeah, and then this won't work. Yep, because it wants a zero. And then that sets it just fine, right? So if I say like HHH, right, we have more args, right? I can just change that. So let me see if this shit works if I just paste it in here. Um, let's try this. Let's try to just directly set the function type Okay, uh, I'm getting rid of some of the H's. HHH, this run, open, no effect. Like this exact same line has no effect. That makes no sense. Um, let's try this somewhere else. Let's try it. Uh, let's just go here and comment out the rest of the program. Save, run. Nope. So there's nothing in this program. There's no log output, run, nothing. And then if I grab this and I copy it verbatim and run it in the Python console, it'll take effect. <sighs> hmm. Um, can be set with either a string uh, or a type object. Yeah, so you can just set the type. Yeah, you can just set function type. What the fuck? Hmm. Ah. <sighs> yep. 
run. Doesn't do anything. <sighs> what the shit, man? What the shit? Why wouldn't that work? Um, is it snippets? Like, do, is it because is like snippets doing something weird? Let's print the existing type. Now we have output. Okay, and now let's print the type afterwards, directly after. Yeah, no change. Um, syntax error. Yep, that makes sense. Um, can I just say int? Yeah, it just doesn't take effect. Um, the fuck? That should just work identical. It should work identically. Uh, like, there's... <sighs> that takes effect, as I would expect. Uh, H, 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 okay. Um, run, yeah. I wonder if it's, uh, I wonder if it's the snippet stuff. Like, I wonder if snippets for some reason do that somehow. Like, somehow snippets don't have the same access. Um, so we can make a plugin. Um, uh, is that where I want it? No. Plugins. Uh, open plugin directory. I think there's an option for that. Uh, uh, where is it? Open plugin folder, right there. Okay. Uh, binge of plugins. Yeah. Mm, bim test.py. Print ASDF. Does that work? Okay, let's close this. Um, open this. Uh, is that how you make a plugin? Astiff, yeah, right there. Okay, sweet. Um, okay, so I want to add uh, add a command, I guess. So how do I do that? Using and writing plugins. Um, um, mm -hmm. um, UI elements, interaction API. I think what I want to do is add a, um, how do I add a, a thing here? How do I add a plugin there? Um, how do I do that? How do I have it show up? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Download the sample plugin as a template. Okay, okay. Oh, there's a... Oh, hmm. I see. I think I'm supposed to make a folder and have a plugin.json. 
Mm hmm Make their moose moose bim plugin dot json. Uh-huh. Okay, that looks great. Cool. Uh all right. Um it'd be nice if that was not a, a shortened version. Um it's kind of annoying. To be honest, um, I'm okay. Uh, Python mjson.tool plugin.json. Uh, plugin2.json. Move plugin2 plugin.json. Okay, sample plugin type this. All right, Python 3. Uh, that's good. Uh, sure, platforms doesn't matter. Installation instructions. Uh, I don't know. Dependencies. App packages, installers. Okay, none of these. Uh, version that. Okay, that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then init.py. Um. Okay. That. Uh huh. Do nothing. There we go. Nice. That's a good looking plugin. Okay. Um. Alright, so uh so now we should hopefully have something in here. Plugins? Useless plugin? Yeah, fuck yeah. Alright, there we go. Uh there. Boom. Okay. Um register. Uh and then this is the name of the thing. I don't even think I need that JSON to be honest. Uh register for address. This is going to be um um uh load uh, debug file, um, loads a cough debug file, uh, and then, uh, load debug file, okay, and then this is load debug file, okay, that function, I don't know what function is, so we're gonna register that, load debug file, then we're going to open snippets. Snippets. Moose. Yoink all this. Uh, okay. And then this. Uh, this, this, this. Okay. So then we register that command. All right. So now, hypothetically, if we close and reopen Binja, we hopefully have a load debug file thingy here. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So if we do this, and we go to load debug file, uh, we should get a prompt. Uh, none type. Doesn't have a uh, function type. Okay, sweet. So we're going to see what happens here. Um, so now, now that this is a function, we're going to wait for uh, analysis. Oh, we don't need to. Go. Nope, doesn't work. Wait, did that work? Did that take effect afterwards? Shit, do I have to like reanalyze it or something? Ah, maybe I do. Okay. Um. Mm, okay. Prompt for a file. Uh. If mangle type is not equal to none, then uh, then I guess we'll uh, we'll do get function at the address, and then what is it? Uh, function type. Function type is equal to mangle type. Um. Okay, got prints in here apparently. Um, clear log. All right, close, discard. All right, we have this. Um, I'm gonna reopen the snippet editor because it seemed to have bad syntax highlighting. Okay, that's just the way it's gonna be. Um, all right, 
debug parse gives you all the things. If it's a function, then do all these things. Create a function, create a symbol for it. Do that. OK, so we open pinball, and then we do run. And then we see what we get. Um. Come on. There we go. There we go. Um. I think we broke it. I think we broke it because there's like no functions anywhere. I don't know if that's right. Oh, T-ball. OK, uh, all right. So now we can do mangle name instead. Um, And then we can close this. And then I think that there's a way to open it. Uh, open with options. Now this is going to fuck up my path, isn't it? Pinball.exe, options, um, load options. I want to not process it right away. Um, I guess triage? No. I swear that there's a way that you can open it. Uh, and not have it analyze it, because I don't want it to analyze. Um. Cross-references, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Is there not a... Is there not a way to do that? Not a way to load it without analyzing it? Really? Okay. Huh. Analysis. Oh, enabling the analysis hold discards all future analysis. Ah. Um. This? Ah? Huh? Okay, what's that going to do? Open. Nice. Okay, it hasn't analyzed. Nice. Analysis hold. Perfect. Okay, now uh, we have the mangle names, the raw names. All right, run. Pinball.db. Okay, so we made a bunch of functions. Um, all right, and now if we... Guess an X drops the analysis hold? No. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, reanalyze. All right, so hopefully this will have pretty good output. Um, saving the plugin here. All right, so Arguan sound in it. Um, F close. Yeah, I think this worked. Um, See Malik. Yep, one arg. Okay, so like most of these uh, T bumper, T kickback. Oh yeah, these are uh, these are overloaded functions. So here's one with like T ball. Okay, T edge segment. Um, T collision component. There's a ball, a vector type. Nice, nice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna close this now. Uh, we'll relaunch Binja for the last time because now we turned that plugin into an actual plugin. 
And now we can go exploring. Let's go and explore. Uh... So one thing that's really cool is that checked builds, as I've talked about before, and then we had to avoid it because it was going to be too hard to, like, debug it super well. Um, debug, MIPS, symbols. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, um, what's a good binary? Let's see, um, checked, MIPS, um, okay, um, Hmm. Uh. Yeah, let's look at pinball. Dot exe, and then we're gonna um, cab extract that. Pinball dot exe. We're gonna move this back to nt, and we're gonna call this pinball check dot exe. Um. And move pinball to uh, pinball free dot exe. Okay, so we have a checked build and a free build. Oh, those are actually they look basically the same. Okay, um, hmm. those might not have been built in tree. I guess interesting. Um, star dot dll rm pinball entos. Okay, all right, free build. Let's look at mips. Uh, cab extract win 32k dot sys move this back all right win 32k dot sys all right let's see if this opens uh um there it is Okay, here's 132k. We haven't done analysis yet, which is good. And then we will uh, load. Where's my fucking plugin? Moose could not be loaded. Binary ninja is not defined. Ah, son of a bitch. Moose, uh, this is debug load. Plugin.json, uh, init. Okay, um, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I need this. Okay, there we go. This time for sure, chat. Uh, this is the last, this is the last load. Uh, okay, I don't want that to, oh, fuck, I didn't, I'm a dumbass. Uh, okay, mm. first, <sighs> uh, load, uh, debug file, uh, load, load, cough, uh, debug file uh, from disk, load cough debug file. This is going to call uh, load debug file. Okay, there we go. Now we register that. Then we make a function. Then we go down here. Then we go here. And then we say this is load debug file. There we go. This time for sure. This time for sure. This time for sure. Okay. Nice. Fuck. Damn it. Plugin command, not the fine fucking piece of shit, son of a bitch. <sighs> um this is binary ninja dot plugin command. Alright, now this time for sure. Uh okay. Yeah, so close. Oh, there we go. Uh, easy. It loaded debug load. Ha! Wow, that's so nice. What a what a cool thing. Okay, 132k. Skipping analysis, so it hasn't done analysis yet, which is good. 
We don't want it to analyze until we've told it where things are. And now we want, uh, this is free, support, debug, MIPS, symbols, sys, win32k.sys, uh, win32k.debug, open. Fuck. Uh, all right. From binary ninja import star. Um, so I guess that's just interaction then. Let's try this. Get snaked. All right, this time for sure. There's no way this could possibly fail. This is literally impossible. I didn't I didn't want to call bin export. That was a mistake. Okay, this, tools, plugins, this, this. Yeah? No warnings, no errors, no problems. Look at all these simmies. Oh, fuck. Yeah. All right. So now we can run reanalyze. Okay. Uh, now we can run reanalyze. Let's go. Let's fucking go. We told it where all the functions are. Um. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, this is so cool. Um, and then let's also do that for, uh, let's also do that, uh, git status, git commit, uh, git diff, git commit am don't, uh, report, uh, uh, static symbols, they're usually things like, things like dot text that overwrite meaningful names. Get push. Okay. Um, all right. So now, um, uh, 32K bin exports. Okay. Copy, uh, cab extract check MIPS, uh, win 32K dot sys. Well, I just overwrote it. Sick. Uh, <sighs> Free, move this, win32k, check, dots, uh, this is free, dot, sys, uh, and then check, win32, check, dot, sys. Okay, so hopefully there is a large difference in size, and there is. That is fantastic. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, analysis is already complete. Um, I'm going to close this. I'm actually going to... I'm going to reopen uh, a new fresh one. So we'll go to pleb, nt, isos. We'll do free. So we got the free build first. Uh, free. So we want free, support, debug, mips, symbols, sys, win32k. There. Okay, so that's the free one. So that's running. Okay, now we can stop the analysis hold. Now we can reanalyze. I like it this way. I like holding the analysis because we are literally telling it uh, with confidence exactly where functions are. I really don't want to like, I, I really don't like um, doing analysis blindly when you actually know exactly where functions are because this will this should result in a much better output okay so we're gonna let that run remember eight hours ago when we got a blue screen <laughs> whoa okay now we're on the next stage of analysis does it not have built-in uh cough in ida it's done via debug file yeah it doesn't have cough support to my knowledge. 
Um, if it does, uh, it it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> if it does, it doesn't. Okay. So we're letting this analysis finish up. Um, I guess we should be able to make a new tab, and we're gonna open. Uh, now we're gonna open NT. ISOs, here's the checked build. So now we're gonna do the same thing for the checked build. Um, load this and check, support, debug, MIPS, symbols, sys, go to the end, this, open. Okay, so now we've applied those. Now we can drop the analysis hold on this one and run reanalysis on this. Okay, so free is complete, uh, boom. So that's been fully analyzed, which is good. Save that database. All right. Yeah, so check this shit out. So here's like driver entry. Let's look at it. Um, so you can see all the source, right? So this is init.c. Uh, you can go through here. You can see like all of these addresses and stuff that are being used. Yep. Jump and link to here. RTL load string or error. Isn't that fucking sick? Isn't that sick? Okay, so let's go look at, uh, I don't know, what's a good function? What was the one that we had a crash in? User uh, cursor something? Set cursor icon data? I think it was this. I'm pretty sure it was literally this function. Okay, so we have NT stubs here, enter crit section, um, couple functions that aren't named. It looks like that's leave crit. Um, okay, so let's take a look at how this looks. Um, that's still analyzing. Let's see, high level IL. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, looks like some instructions might not be supported. Um, yeah, doesn't know what that instruction is. Check this Gremlin debug. Okay, um, all right. So now, uh, that's still analyzing. So what we want to do is we want to, oh, wow, that's homing. Yeah, you can see it's homing the parameters of the stack. Interesting. Um, so once this is done analyzing, we'll hopefully be able to see the difference between a checked build uh, and a release build, and they're quite a bit different. Let's find a bigger function. Uh, set cursor, NT user set cursor. Um, set cursor contents. Okay, so here's a good one that actually the whole thing um, has, it has the disassembly for the whole thing. So yeah, enter crit, uh, validate handle, um, set cursor contents, and then that does this shit, right? Uh, and I bet that we control these arguments. Um, arg3, does that really float? Destroy cursor, I don't think that's float. Arg2, arg1. Um, this is validate handle. Okay. Interesting. All right. So the checked one's done as well. So now that that's done cooking, we can go to the same, uh, we can go to the same location in both and just take a look at how much different they are. Okay. So we're going to go to NT user set cursor contents. Uh, here. There we go. All right. Um, so it might be hard to see window. Let's see, split to new window. Nice. Um, okay. Yep, so let's just squeeze that in there real squeezily. Uh, set content. So let's look at them side by side as a disassembly in a graph. Um, look at this graph. All right. So here's one, here's the other. Let's go to uh, disassembly graph. All right, so on the left side, you can see we have a checked build. And on the right side, you can see that we have a release build. So the checked build, you can see for this function, uh, that's driver entry, god damn it. Um, all right, uh, all right, for this one, you can see that the checked build, uh, what do we actually got going on here? It, mm, it's pretty similar actually. Enter crit. So we've got a couple, 
we've got more blocks here. Uh, you can see that there's like a debug message here. Yeah, this is some tracing stuff. So there's some extra tracing flags in here. Uh, yeah, user set cursor content, some ret val. So there's a way of like tracing the return value. There's a debug print here that was removed. So check builds will often have more stuff like this. Um, also for optimizations, uh, you'll typically see that they'll actually home things to the stack, but it looks like they weren't really optimizing things to use registers in even the free build, <laughs> which is pretty surprising. So I wonder why there's no file uh, file names. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. Isn't that, isn't that really interesting that we have file names for one but not the other? Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. So now we can poke around at stuff. Isn't that fucking cool? <laughs> All right. Uh, different devs. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a completely different one. Yeah, look at that. Source line info. Isn't that fucking cool? So we're in some font stuff. Yeah. And it win res data. Isn't that fucking sweet? <laughs> So we have all of the we have all of the source line stuff extracted out, uh, all of the typing stuff applied. So if we go and find what's like a good thing that's probably written in C like a little bit more C y Um let's open hmm. What do you want? Let's open a let's open an X86 one, just for funsies. Um let's go free i386. Um, oh, we'll have to extract it. Uh, cab extract. Uh, free i386. Um, just because this will have the best support. Kelk. Kelk. Okay. Let's take a look. Here we go. Kelk.exe. All right. We got Kelk. And now let's apply symbols. So load this from free uh support debug i386 symbols exe and then kelk.exe uh is this free am i in free yes uh kelk.debug here we go so nice yeah and i think these will probably have a little bit more um i don't know if this is c++ or not to be honest <laughs> And analyzed and done. Shit. There aren't nearly as many uh, symbols. Yeah, there's W param. Set radix. Yep. Double, double. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Uh, let's take a look at uh, high level IL. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fucking sweet. Set radix. Yeah, this is an old one, or it was a it was a lot simpler. Um, my a to f log a to l. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, calc was c apparently. Oh, all right. What's a what's a less c thing? Oh, I want to look at these asserts actually, right quick. Um, oops. Disassembly. Um, yeah, look at these assertions. So look at this. We have an actual string. We have a string, and this string is a uh, um, NT private Windows shell accessory. Uh, oh, I wish it would continue. Um, <laughs> But you can see we have calc input dot c, uh, and then here whatever this is, calc input dot c, right? And then it probably pushes b three. What's b three in hex, or in decimal? Um, how do you flip that? Uh, how do I change uh, display as uh, decimal one seventy nine? Yeah, that lines up. That's a hundred percent. That's what we ripped out as the the actual position of this uh, c file. Yep, and that matches up with the assertion. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, okay. I think WordPad is C++. Well, we can actually tell based on the based on the paths, which is kind of interesting. Um, dot exe. All right. 
All right, let's take a look at WordPad. Um, getting hungry, dude? Okay, okay, okay. Why are you just scoping? <sighs> okay, so support debug. Uh, oh, we made i3d6. Exe, and then let's find WordPad. There it is. Okay, and we can turn off the analysis hold, and now we can reanalyze. And based on paths, we'll be able to see if it's well. That's C. Well, that's uh, main CRT startup. Um, ooh, C WordPad app. Uh oh. Hmm, we're colliding a lot of names here. WordPad.cpp. Uh, embedded item, yeah, mmm, oh, oh, maybe this is, ah, okay, I think I know what that is, um, I bet that that is, uh, hmm, uh, plugins, debug, uh, init, I think it's these, yeah, I guess maybe I do have to join these, um, Equals, I don't know, colons.join? That? Is that correct? You think that's correct? Join join with colons? Um, that's how you do Python, right? Okay. Um, yep. There we go. Load WordPad. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, turn off the analysis hold and analyze, analyze the shit out of that. Let's go. Let's fucking go. <laughs> All right. Very interesting stuff here. Hell yeah. It's almost time to go eat food. <sighs> Craigasm. Yeah. This is pretty fucking nice. <laughs> Easy. Compare item. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. This is real nice. Pretty nice. <sighs> All right. Set sizes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, let's see, exception. Where's something fun? Yeah, create format bar. What's this? Create option sheet. Yep, and that's got type info. <laughs> Easy clap. Easy clap. Uh, high level aisle. Nice. All right, add page. <laughs> Fuck yeah, get twip size. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, that's gonna be the end of the stream. I hope everyone enjoyed that, but I gotta, I gotta eat some food. I haven't really done that yet. Um, all right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see if there's anyone good to raid. Um, do 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 Damn, there's like no one writing code right now. Uh, what's this language? What's this language that this is? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what this fucking language is. So, uh, yeah, have fun. Uh. Just gonna send y'all over to here. <laughs> All right, and see y'all later. <laughs>